Implementing authentication and authorization is really important in all of our projects. So, in this tutorial, we implement the login and the register and the other required authentication and authorization mechanism to show you how you can log in and register and how you can control all of the security aspect of your applications. So, let me show you that what you will have in this tutorial. This is a list of users of our website. So, you can see that we have different users and we have roles for example we have user we have manager we have admin and also we can have owner we have different roles and each role can has different access let me show you that for example the first role is user let me show you for example this is a user access let's use it to log into our website so i will paste the username and the password and i log in so after login we have access to the slash dashboard so you can see it if I log out and I try to go to a slash dashboard. So you can see that I don't have access to it and I will be redirected to a slash unauthorized. So that's good. It means that we don't have access to the dashboard without login. Let's try it again. So let's use login and use our username and password again and login. So when we log in, we have access to a slash dashboards and the other page. So you can see that this is a dashboard page and we must have the dashboard access to see this page. And the dashboard access can be an owner or admin or manager or user. And we have some different test page to show you how you can access to the different page based on your role. For example, let's start from here. So the first one is this user page. You can see that it is a slash dashboard, a slash user. And this is a user page and you must have access to this only if you have the user access. So I am a user. You can see that my username is user six and my user role is the user. So I have access to a slash dashboard slash user. Let's test the others. For example, the next one is manager role where we will be redirected to a slash unauthorized because we don't have access to that page. And that's good. Let's go back to dashboard and test the others. For example, the admin, we don't have access to the admin because we are a user. That's so good. Let's test the owner page. Again, we don't have access. That's good. So these four pages are for the roles and let's test the top ones. So we have my logs. Let's test it. This is a page that shows you the logs of your activities. For example, a new login or a new token or register to the website. You can see that we have the date of them and the description of logs of the logged in user which is this user 6 let me refresh the page and show you that after refreshing you can see that a new token generated a few seconds ago for user 6 when we refresh our application we will generate a new token and we use it so we will see this log here and that's it so let this is the slash dashboard slash my logs so let's test the all logs well you can see that this page is not accessible by a user and it is unauthorized that's good let's test the all message where you can see that you don't have access to the requests of the all message that's good the next one is inbox and here you can see that what message you have sent or you have received so you can see that for example for this user which is user 6 we have an output message which takes off this and the sender was user 3 and the receiver was user 6 and this is based on the token of the logged in user and we will uh, return the message of the logged in user to the front end let's test the next one so this was the slash dashboard slash inbox the next one is send message well here you can send message to other users for example let's use this is the user six and i choose user one and i say hi user one and i send the message well your message sent successfully and you can see in my inbox which is a slash dashboard in slash inbox that I have a new one a few message a few seconds ago with the type of output and the text is how user one from user six to user one and we are seeing the log of it inside of my inbox so this is it so we have access to the inbox and send message and the last page is user management and you can see that we don't have access to this user management because we are user that's it so let's log out and test another role for example, after user, we have manager. So this user 2 is a manager. Let's copy and log in with this user 2 and its password. Well, 
The login was successful. Now you can see that I'm user two with role of manager. And again, we have access to a slash dashboard and let's test everything. Do we have access to user page? Yes, because I want my manager to have access to the manager page and the user page. That's good. Let's test the manager page where we have access. Let's test admin. We don't have access. Let's test owner. We don't have access. That's so good. Then let's see my logs. Well, this is the logs. You can see that it is exactly for the logged in user, which is user two. So we can see that what is the time and what is the description of logs. For example, register, user role updated, new login, send message, new login, and send message. Well, that's it. Next, let's see can we have access to all logs? Well, we cannot. Why? Because we must be owner or admin to access this. And no, I'm a manager. So I don't have access to all logs. Let's test all message. Well, we don't have access. That's so good. This is a role-based authorization and it's based on my roles. Next thing is inbox. Yeah, everybody can access to the inbox because inbox is belongs to all users. So here you can see that this inbox is belongs to user two. So here we have some message and user two is either sender or receiver. And that's it. Let's test the send message. Well, here you can see that, for example, from user two, I can send a message to, let's search M, well, this is the uh, username, and I say, hi, Mahmoud, and I send, well, you can see that here I have this new, which is a few seconds ago, the text is, hi, Mahmoud, from user 2 to Mahmoud user, that's it, so this is the inbox and send message, and also let's test user management, well, here you can see that we don't have access to it, that's good, let's log out and test the next role, which is admin, so, this user, which is user one, has an admin role. Let's test and see what is the admin role. Let's copy and paste and login. Well, this time you can see that the username is user one and the role is admin. Well, we have access to dashboard, that's good. Let's test everything. The first thing is this user page. We have access to it, that's good. Also, we have access to manager because we're admin. Also, this time we have access to admin page. And let's test the owner page. Well, we don't have access to owner because owner is in a top level of our website and even the admin cannot access to the owner page. That's good. Next, let's test my logs. So on the my logs, this my logs uh, belongs to all users. So here you can see that all of the logs of this user, which is user one, for example, it's the date. And this is description, new login, new token generated, new login, send message, user role updated, and others. And if I refresh my page here, you can see that I have a new uh, log here a few seconds ago. I issued a new token for my user, and this is it. But this time, if I check all logs, you can see that we have access to all logs of our system. Why? Because as an admin or as an owner, we have access to all logs of our system, and this is the business logic. I want. So this is up to you to implement every access you want based on the role of your users. So here I said that the user with role of admin can have access to all logs. You can see that we can see logs of all users. For example, user one has new token generated, user one new login, user two send message, user two new login, user six send message, user six new token generated with the date and time and all logs of our system are accessible here by an admin. That's so good, let's continue. After this, let's test all message. Well, as an admin, we have access to all message of our system, and you can see that uh, this is, for example, from user two to the mamad, but we can see it. Why? Because we are admin and we can see all message of our system. That's good. Next, let's test the inbox. Well, here is the inbox of this user, which is user one. So. The user one is either a sender or a receiver in all of this message. That's good. Now let's go to send message. Here we can send message to others. Send hi, send. Yes, you can see that. Now I have the log of it. And if I go to the all message, it must be also here. That's good. Then let's go to user management. And this time you can see that we have access to user management because the owner and the admin can have access to our main page. So. What is here in user management? Here on the top, we can have some cards to show all the roles of our system. For example, we have one owner, one admin, one manager, and eight users for now. Here we can have a chart of these uh, numbers here. For example, you can see that this is 
owner and this is admin and manager and users and here we can see some latest users you can show one or two or three or five or any count of the latest user you want for example the latest user is here if we let me show you that if i log out and if i try to register for example the first name is john do junior the username is johnny and for the email we use johnny at mail.com and for password i simply copy the username and paste it three times for the address i say LA8 and this is just a test let's register after register we will be redirected automatically to the slash login now let's log in using this user and paste johnny and its password which was johnny login well now you can see that i have a new username of johnny and a role of user so the default role of user is user in this system and now you can see that if i go to the my logs you can see that a few seconds ago register to website and a few seconds ago i have a new login now let's log out and what was the admin the admin was user one so let's log in again using this to have access to the uh, user management well let's go to user management and here you can see that in the latest user in the top i have johnny with his name and his last name and the time of creation was a few seconds ago that's so good now you can see that i have nine users one manager one admin and one owner let's continue so after this we have a table to show all the users of our system and the roles and we have the operation of updating role this part is really important so um, based on the requirement of this project i want my admin to be able to change the role of the users and the manager so if the user is an admin for example you can see that i'm logged in as a user one and i am admin so i can change the users and the manager's roles for example this johnny is a user so i am able to update his role let's click on the update role and we will be here on the slash dashboard slash update role slash username which is johnny and here we can see that the username is johnny and the current role is user i want to change his role you can see that i can choose manager or user for example for no he is user let's change it to manager and update after successful redirect we will be here you can see that no i have two managers and eight users and here you can see that no johnny is a manager let's change another one for example for user 9 let's update his role to manager update well you can see that no i have three managers and seven users that's so good and here you can see it can we change them again to user well yes we can change them to user update no he is user again so this is the access of admin but an admin cannot change the other admins and the owner update uh, role you can see that the update role button here is disabled because this user is admin and this user is owner so we saw the access of admin now let's test the final role which is owner so let's see who is owner for example this username is owner let's use it and by the way here you can see that uh, i have the username I have the first name and the last name of this user, but this is just a test. So let's log out and let's log in again with the username of my owner, which is Mamad. So here you can see that this is the Mamad and he has the access of owner. So he has full access. And here he has access to dashboard. Let's test the user page. Yeah, we have access. Manager page, good. Admin page, yes and also owner page where we have access to everything so let's test my logs this is my logs which is based on the user which is mamad all logs is here available we can see all logs of our system because as an owner we have this access the next one is all message we have access the next is inbox here yeah, we can see that and also we have send message can we send a message to this user send yes we send this this text to this user too and also let's go to user management again we have access but this time you can see the this is the same dashboard but this time the access is different let me show you this time we can change the admin roles and also let me show you again for example for the johnny here i can also make him admin but admin cannot change another one to admin but because i'm an owner i can make admins 
and this is really important to manage the admins of your website so if i choose admin and i update you can see that now i have two admins two managers and seven users let's make this one an admin update and again this one an admin update you can see that now we have one owner four admins two managers and five users so this is how our system works in fact the main control will be implemented by our admins but we want a role to be able to control our admins so for that uh, a specific role which is owner we will implement it by hard coding the role of our owner in database and you will see that on the implementation of our backend project that how we can set the role of a user to owner but when we have an owner we can change the admins and we can create admins and then everything is fine so this is it and you can see that it is really a good and a really useful project so let me show you the swagger of the back end so this is the swagger of our back end project and you can see that we have auth controller logs controller message controller and test controller we use all of the auth logs and message in the front end project and this test is just for testing access to a controller of a web api by using the tokens you will see that this is really easy and you will see that how we can use it on the backend project i will show you that later but this is the backend of our project and if i click on the users you can see that this is the list of the users of our website and also if i click here on the usernames try it you can see that we are receiving the list of all usernames of our project we will use this for sending messages so this is a quick demo of our a full stack project here and we will implement it so are you ready to code let's go as always let's create a new folder and name it as whatever you want for example users management full stack and this is it so inside of this folder i want to create my new project so let's do it first let's open our visual studio 2022 and from here file new project so here from this part i choose c sharp and from here i choose web api so i will see this asp.net core web api let's choose it and go to the next step so here we need to go to drive f and choose this folder and select it and for the project name i simply use backend dotnet server that's it and let's go to the next step so for the framework i use dotnet 7 and for the authentication type i use none configure for https yes enable docker no yes yes and no this is it so let's create our project and start using it well this is our new project first let's start it to see what we have in the initial stage so this is it you can see that we have just a weather forecast controller and here if i try it you can see that i'm receiving this list that's good now let's close it and start using this uh, project so here we have a weather forecast.cs i delete this i don't need it yeah and also in the controllers we have a weather forecast controller so let's delete this okay that's it now our project is fresh the first thing is we need to have some package for our project so let's install them let me show you that what package do we need so this is the repository of me and here i have another uh, repository which belongs to my previous tutorial of asp.net jwt authentication and here you can see that we need to install this four package microsoft.asp.net core.authentication.jwtbrl and also microsoft.asp.net core.identity.entityframework core and microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sql server and also microsoft.entityframeworkcore.tools so let's install them one by one 
let's right click on the dependencies and manage to get packages uh, let's go to the browse section and here we can search for them for example the first one is microsoft let me copy paste it from my github so microsoft.aspnetcore.authentication.jwtbrr and be sure that the version matches your dotnet for example my dotnet is 7 and the version of this must be 7 that's good so let's install it okay i accept that's good so it's installed the next one is Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.Identity.Entity Framework Core. We use this package for the identity. And that's it. Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.Identity.Entity Framework Core version 7. That's good. Let's install it. It's really a useful package. Okay. I accept. Good. So, the next one is the Microsoft.entity framework core SQL server. Let's use it. So Microsoft.entity framework core SQL server version 7. That's it. And okay. I accept. That's good. So the last one is Microsoft.NFMRCore.Tools. We need these to have the migrations. Let's search for it. So Microsoft.NFMRCore.Tools version 7. Let's install it. And this is the final one. Okay. And I accept. Well, done. That's good. So let's close this. Let's check them. So in install, we can see that we have installed Microsoft.SPNetCore.Authentication.JWTBRR and also identity.NT Framework Core. And uh, this was the open API. It was installed already. And also we have NT Framework Core.SQL Server and NT Framework Core.Tools. And also this swatch package.SPNet Core is here and it is installed previously by the ASP.NET itself for using Swagger. So this is, this is all the package we want. And if we go to the Solution Explorer and if we double click on our project, you must see all of them in here. So you can see all of them, that's good. Now let's start and configure our project. So the first thing is into the, let's, we need to go to the program.cs and we need to have some configurations for our database. But before that, let's create our application DB context and use them here. So inside of my project, I will create a new folder named code. And this is it. So let's close these. Inside of this code, I want to create everything I want. So let's add a new folder for our constants. This is it. And also add a new folder for our DB context. That's good. Also, let's add another one for our DTOs. We need to have some DTOs in this tutorial. And also, after DTOs, let's have some entities. I assume that you are familiar with the difference of DTOs and entities. And if you are not sure, let me know in the comments. We can talk about them later. So after entities, I want to create an interfaces folder and also a services folder because we are going to use dependency injection in this uh, tutorial and it is really important. So you will see that and we use these services in our controllers. The first thing is we need to have some entities so inside these entities we need to create uh, some uh, new classes for our entities the first thing is we need to add a new class for our users so we use the application 
use a class here and here we can use them so the first thing is we can inherit from identity user so if i press control dot i can see that we can use microsoft.asp.net core.identity so this is how we can uh, configure the identity user and use some custom fields for it that's it so we know that in identity user we have a lot of uh, props like the email and username and password and, and a lot of them so i want to add some of them so let's create a new prop and the type would be a string and it would be first name that's good let's copy paste this and let's use the last name for it so we have first name and also we have last name also i want to have another one so let's copy paste it quickly and use address so we have a field of address that's good and also let's have another one with the time type and also the name would be created at and we use a default value of date time dot now for it so it would be initialized automatically using this date time dot no that's good and also let's have another one so i uh, use a not map i will show you that later why we are using this not map and i will create a role so i want to have a public or you know what let's use a prop again it's better so i want to have an i list with type of a string and the name would be roles so we want to keep the roles of this user in this roles and we are using not mapped because we don't want this to be mapped and that's it so uh, i think it's good so we created our application user we used first name and last name and address and created at and roles and for this role we are using not map uh, why because we are uh, trying to avoid the circular uh, dependencies and you will see that later so i think application user is good for now let's create another one and i want to create a new class here and i will use the name of base entity this is a good idea to use some base entity and inherit from that so what is the plan of this base entity this base entity needs to be a generic one first let me show you that we want to create let's say that we have a long of uh, id and also let's create a prop of date time with name of created at which has the default value of date time but now and let's copy paste it and here i want to have updated at again this is the date time dot no and after that let's have a boolean with name of is active and its default value is true and also let's have another prop of boolean with name of is deleted with default value of false so what is this this is a base entity you can inherit from this base entity to have your uh, common and in shared properties but uh, this is not a good idea to use a uh, public long of id because sometimes we want to have a guid of id sometimes we want to have a long sometimes we want to have a string or or uh, integer so the better one is to use a generic one how we can do this it's too easy so we can create this public class of base entity to uh, tid so we will receive this tid from here and here instead of this we use tid so now it is a generic base entity and we can send this uh, the id of and here the type of the id here and we can use it as our id that's good they serve everything and create a new entity so add new class i want to have a log entity in for this project and this is it so this log entity needs to inherit from our base entity that's it and we can use a type for example we can use type of int or long that's it then what what do we need to use for this log for example we can use a prop of a string of the username and also we can have a prop of a string of 
let's say description this is it but instead of int we can use a logs because this may have a lot of logs we may have a lot of logs in our project and also i want to make this nullable so i use this question mark here so the username can be nullable that's so good so let's save it now we created this log and also let's create another entity with name of message because we want to have some message in our project and this is so message that's it and again this needs to inherit from our base entity and we can use an integer or log i can simply use a log for it and we can have some props for it for example and a string of let me copy that so we can have a public string of sender username also let's copy paste it again and instead of sender let's have the receiver username and also let's have another oops what happened let's have another prop with type of a string and text that's it so let's uh, check them one time so we created the application user and it inherits from identity user that's good and we added first name and last name and address created at and not mapped off roles we will use these roles that's good also we created a base entity which is a generic and we created an id for it and the created at and updated at is active and is deleted that's good so by using this is active is so good it helps you to activate and deactivate your uh, entities and also this is deleted will be used for uh, soft deleting the next one is this log so we created this log and we inherited from base entity of log and also we have a username and a description that's good and also we have a message with uh, inherits from base entity with type of long and also we have a sender username and a receiver username and also a text that's it so we created all of our entities after creating our entities we need to create our db context and use it so what we can do uh, let's create a new class for it so i want to create a new class name application db context this is it so what we need to do in this application db context we need to create our context and if you saw my previous tutorials you are familiar with this so we need to inherit from db context but when we are using identity package we can simply use identity db context that's it and we can make it generic and use our application user and we pass this application user to our identity that's it after that we need to have the constructor so let's press ctrl dot and generate a constructor with options it will create automatically automatically for us this is it and just here inside this db context options we make it generic and we pass the application db context to it that's good and it will call the base of options and this is all what you want that's it after this let's create some db set for our logs and our message so i will create a new prop with a type of db set this db set is a generic of our log entity and we use logs for it and also let's copy paste it and create another db set for our message with name of message this is it this is all what uh, we want so we created some entities and we used the entities here inside of our application db context but i want to override the name of my identity table so let's do this and uh, the identity db context has some default names i don't want them so i want to change them here so let's do this after this db context we can create the override of on model creating let's press tab it will create it automatically here so we have the protected override void of on model creating which receives the model builder of builder and inside of that it first calls the build base dot on model of 
creating of builder. After that, we can config anything we want. This is it. So let's create them. For example, the first thing is I want to use builder dot entity. So for the entity of application user, we want to have some configurations and we want to receive it and we create it to a table with the name we want. So we use users. That's it. So this will allow us to create the table of our users to this name instead of asp.net identity users or any name which is default. So this is it. Let's copy paste it. And after that, let's have enter. So the first one was the users. So after that, I want to change some of them and let's copy them and paste them here. So after that, I want to change the identity user claims of a string and I will change them to the table of my user claims. This is it. Let's copy paste it again. If you are not sure what is this, just come with me and then you will see them. So after the identity user claims, which we make them the user claim, we want to change the identity user logins. These are all the default uh, options of our identity package. So we want to change identity user login to user logins. So we change them to the table of user logins. That's good. So let's copy it again and paste that here. So after identity user login, we want to change the identity user token. So let's copy them from its document and paste them here. So after the identity user login, we change identity user tokens to user tokens. That's it. Also, we want to change the roles of a standard. So after that, let's change the identity role. So you know that we have identity user and identity role, which is the default user and role of identity. So we change these two roles. That's it. Let's copy paste it again. So after identity role, we need to change the identity role claims. We will work with these claims later, which is a generic of a string. And we change all of them to role claims. That's good. So let's copy paste it again. And after the, that, we have the identity user role with the generic of a string and we change them to user roles. This is it. So let's cut. And let me add some numbers to them. This is it. So what we have done in this application DB context, we created first, we, in, uh, we created our context, we inherited from identity DB context with generic type of application user. So if we wanted to create, use the identity user, we didn't want to pass this application, but we need to use this. So we will use this application user and pass it to identity DB context. Then we created its constructor. After that, we created two DB sets for our logs and our messages. Then we overrided the on model creating. Here, first we called based on model creating of builder. Then we config all of the tables we wanted. So we changed the table of application users to users. Then the second one was identity user claims of a string to user claims. Then user logins. Then user tokens and roles and role claims and user roles. So this is it. And I think our application DB context is completed. So let's close it. First, I copy the name of it. So this is the application DB context. Now we can use it in our program.cs. So let's go to the program.cs. And here we can use it. So let's go here and we delete 
these comments. We don't need these comments. Let's delete them. That's good. So after building that services that add controller, we need to add our DB. And in order to use the connection string, you saw on my previous tutorial that it is not a good idea to use the connection string here because it is hard coded and it is not good. The better way is to use it on appsetting.json. So let's do this. We need to go to the appsetting.json. So let's create a new key here with name of connection string. Connection string. And this connection string would be an object with a key and a value. So for the key, I use local and then we have a variable. So for the variable, the first thing is we need to have a server. I simply say dot because I want to use this server, uh, the local server. Then we need to have a database. Database. So for the database, you can use any name you want. For example, user management full stack DB or any name you want. And after that, in, in, uh, instead of using username and password, we can simply use trusted connection. So we say trusted connection equals to true. That's it. And also let's use trust server certificate in order to avoid some warning. So we say trust server certificate equals to true. And also let's use multiple active result sets. So we say multiple active result sets equals to true. You don't need to uh, write all of them because you can simply copy paste them from my GitHub. And that's it. So this is the connection string you want to use. So let's go back to our program.cs and use it here. So after this DB, we can use builder.services. Oops. Builder that services that add a DB context and we use application DB context. That's it. So here we need to configure its options. So let's create first, let's create a connection string. So we say where of connection string equals to builder dot configurations dot get connection string and here we need to use the name of it so let's check the name of it so what was the name the name of the connection string was local so let's copy it and use it here so this is my connection string then we can simply use it so we say options dot use sql server and the name of our connection string would be this Connection S3. That's it. So here we configure our DB. And that's it. Now I think we can uh, use our database. So let's go to the view, uh, other windows, and we need to open our package manager console from here. And let's add a new migration and test everything. So you can see that I type. Let me show you add migration and I press tab. It would be Completed automatically because we installed tools. So I say init. Let's press enter and see the result. Do we have any error or not? So build was successful. And that's it. So you can see that it created. Let me show you that here. It created the uh, migration files we needed so creating the tables for us that's good now again let's open it package manager console now let's use update database again i press tab and it would be completed automatically so let's use update database and see the result so yeah it seems that the connection string property has not been initialized so let's check it. What is the problem? So builder dot configurations that get connection string of local. That's okay. Let's go to the app setting. It is local. So the server is dot. That's okay. And the database is this. Trusted connection is okay. 
and trust driver certificate is true and multiple active result set is true connection stream I think we don't have any error here but this must be a stream yes this is the problem so let's test it again so view other tools package manager console let's use update database again yeah it seems that it is migrating that's so good done well it's done now let's open our microsoft sql server management studio and check the database on our sql server so connect in my databases we created user management full stack db tables and that's it so you can see that we have logs message role claims roles user claims user logins user roles users and user tokens so they are exactly the names that we used inside of our application db context let me show you that so here you can use any name you want for your tables i simply used these names that's good so our database is created and now we can use it let's go to the program.cs and have some configurations here so because i want to create some uh, enums and use them i will create some uh, configuration here so builder the services that add controllers and uh, let me add after this add controller let's press enter to the next line and after this add controller we will add a json options because we want to use it because we want to work with these options and here we use options dot json serializer options dot converters dot add and here we need to use a new json string enum converter because we want to use enums in this tutorial and we need to have this configuration and let's press a semicolon here and that's it so after this we want to have some dependency injection let me write the comment for it and we'll use it later and also we need to add identity in this project so i will add my identities here and after adding the identities we need to add configuration of our identity here and also we need to have some authentication schema and gwt bearer so let's add a comment for them we will compile them later let's start by creating our details and delete this we don't need this space and that's good so let's create our uh, details let's go to the dto and create our details and start so in details let's add a new folder with name of art and also let's add a new folder with name of general general also let's add a new folder named log and also we have message so let's add a new folder for message and that's it so inside of art first let's create a new class we need to have login and register so it would be login dto and that's it so inside this dto we want to have a prop with a string of username and also a password passwords and that's it so we can have some validation names for them for example we can use a required attribute here with some error message of let me copy them to be more quickly 
So the username is required and also for the password again you can use this. let me copy from here would be faster so again we use required with error message of password is required so this is my login DTO after that let's create a new DTO in art so we will add a new class with name of login service response DTO it's a good idea to use some DTOs in our project so let's create an, a string with name of new token so we'll use it and also let's have a new prop so i want to have a new prop for my uh, let me have some comment here i want to create a new property to return the data of the user to my front end so let's create it first in art let's create a new class with name of user info result let's add it so what we need to uh, have in this user info result what we need to return to our front end so let's create an, a string with name of id so we need to return the id then we need to return the first name and also we need to return the last name and also let's return the username After username, we want to return the email. And after email, we want to return a date time of created at. And after that, let's have a new one with type of I in our rebel with type of string and the name would be rows so we want to return these to our front end so let's use this user info result and inside of our response here we use this type of user info result and use that name and that's it and i think user info result is not a good name so let's use user info that's it so let's create another one add a new class i want to have a dto for one of my roads which name is me so i want to send a token to my server so i simply can create a new prop with type of a string and name of token and that's it we just need to send a token to our server after that let's create a new one add a new class with name of register DTO and add it. So what do we need in our register DTO? Let's uh, go to the login and copy. The first one, because we need it. So the first thing is we need to have a first name. And then we have a last name and then we have a user. So for the username, let's it to be here, just I copy this and then the first thing is I use my first name, that's it. Let's copy paste and use last name. So we have first name, then we have last name, then we have a username with a message for the required and after that, let's have public string of email so we need to receive this email from our user and then let's copy paste this because for the password we need to have this required message so let's use password and we say password is required and that's it after that let's control c control d and also we can receive the address from our user so this is it now we are receiving a lot of things from our user for register for example the first name the last name and the username and the email the password and the address so this is our register let's close all of them after that let's create a new one at class so i want to have an update role so i have update role dto here so here what we need to have we need to have some username so for the updating we receive a string of 
username and here we need to have some validation so let's send the required attribute to it and we say your error message will be username is required that's it and after that i want to receive a role from my user but i want this role to be an enum so let's create it first and it is the public class of update role dto after this uh, closing curly brace of it let's create a public enum we create it public so we can use it anywhere we want of role type and here we can have for example admin and manager and user so we have four roles in this project owner admin manager and user but in role type we don't use owner because this owner cannot be changed from the front end or from the api roles we must change the owner uh, uh, manually on the database what we can change admin manager and user from our api roles so this is it. so i use this role type so here i have the username and after this username let's create a new prop for the type we use oops what happened prop of role type of new role that's it so let's check our authentication dto's i think it is completed let's check them one by one so for the login dto we have username and password for the login service response dto we have a new token and the user info for the me dto we just received the token for register dto we received first name last name username email password address for the update role we use oops what is this for the update role we use the username and an enum of new role which can be an admin or manager or user and for the user info result which is the final type of the uh, the user data we, we we send to the front end it is id first name last name username email created at and roles so this is the authentication after that we, can, we have the general so let's create a new class add new class to it so i create a general service response dto this is just a simple dto and it will help us to manage our service responses better so in my services generally i want to have a prop with type of boolean and the name of is succeed is succeed so the first one is public boolean of is succeed after that let's create another one with int of the status code so after that let's have another string with name of message so this is it i want to use a general uh, service response dto in my services because we are using two layers services and controllers and we use this so we will have a boolean of is succeed an integer of status code and a string of message that's it so far so good so let's close all of them and again uh, we have odd we have general so we have log for it let's add a new class so in log i just want to create a get log dto and that's it so let's add it and what do we need here so for the get log we can use a prop of date time with name of created add and its default value would be date time dot no that's it and also let's create another one with a string of username and we use this question mark to show that this can be nullable and it is not a problem for us because some logs need the username and some logs don't need it and after that let's create a new prop with a string of description so we save the description of what happened so we create a string of description for each log that's it and i think it's okay so we 
created at a username and a description that's it so let's close it and go to the next one which is message so let's add a new class with name of create message DTO so we create a um, DTO for creating our message so let's have a prop with a string of receiver username and also let's have another prop with a string of text that's it so for creating our message we will use this DTO we will receive the receiver username and also the text of our message and after that we need to have a get message so let's create it so let's add a new class of get message DTO and here for the getting the message and use this DTO for, so you can have a prop of long of ID and after that we need to have two uh, strings control C control V so we have a sender receiver name and also a receiver user so in this uh, get message DTO we have an, a string for our sender and a string for receiver so we will know that who is the sender of this message and who is the receiver of this message that's so good so after that let's create a new string for the text of our message and also let again have a date time of created at and we use a default of datetime.no it is not required but we simply use it to be sure that we don't have any error that's good so this is it we use the id we use the send the username we use the receiver username the text and the created app so i think all of our dtos are created let's close this db context and this entities let's check dto so we created a login dto a login service response dto me dto register dto update row dto user info result for the generals we created general service response dto for the logs we created get log dto for the message we created create message dto and get message dto that's it so let's close all of them now we created our dto's and that's it after that we can work on our interfaces and our services but before that let's create some constant so let's add a new class and i will show you that what is this so I create a new class named static user roles in my constant and because I want to avoid typing and some typing errors I let me add some comment here so inside of this class we will, this class will be used to avoid typing errors that's it so what we need to, need to use in this class the first thing is I want to create a public constant of a string of owner and its value would be owner this is the first one after that i want to create another public const a string of admin which equals to this admin and after that i create another public const a string of manager with the value of manager string and after that i create a public const a string of user which equals to user this is it so we can create these uh, classes and we can use them but in order to using them we need to change this class to a static we will make it a static class and after that let's add some helpers one so let's create another public const string of owner admin which equals to owner and admin we use these to use the authorization in our controllers you will see them later but this will help us a lot to avoid some typing errors and after this owner admin i want to have another one of public const string of owner admin manager which equals to owner and admin and manager and after that let's have the uh, public const string of owner admin manager user which equals to all of them so you can see that how easy it is uh, and instead of typing them in some different places we, we can simply use this class the only change we need is to be need to change this class to an static so let's use public static class of static user roles and this is it now we can use these roles everywhere we want so we created our constants and that's good now let's go back to our program.cs 
And here, now you can see that why we are using this JSON stream enum converter because we are using enums and we want to use that enum. So we will use this add JSON options to our add controllers, and that's it. So after that, let's go to the identity section and work on it. So we need to add our identity here. So we use the builder dot services dot. I go to the next line to be cleaner. So I use dot add identity. That's it. Inside this add identity, we must say that what is the type of our user and our role. So normally you will use identity user and identity role. This is it. You must use this identity user and identity role by default. But because we are using application, let me show you again. We create an entity of application user and we inherit it from this identity user. So we simply use this application user. So let's use the application user here instead of our identity user. That's it. And after this add identity with application user and identity role, we need to add some store. So we use that add entity framework stores. And for the storing them, we use application db context. That's it. And after that, we can also add some default token providers which is provided by the by default with the identity package and that's so good so this is for the adding identity to our services and after that we need to config our identity so let's add some configurations for example builder dot services dot configure and for this configuration, we can say that it is a generic of identity options and we receive some options and we can have a lot of configurations in. Let's type it again. Okay. So what we can have, for example, we can have options that you can see that we have a store sign in, claims, password, logout user and anything you want for example i want to say that for the options that password dot required required digit required length you can see for example for the required length we can use eight let's copy paste it and after that i say that for the options that password dot required digit is false and also let's copy paste and after required digit, we can say that for the require lowercase is again false and also require uppercase is false. So this is it. I'm just showing you that you can use any configuration you want. So after digit, we have lowercase and uppercase and after the uppercase, we can use require non alphanumeric is false. So we are uh, saying that all of them can be false that's good and also after them let's work on the sign-in so options dot sign in that require confirm we can confirm your uh, we can confirm the phone number and the account the email so for the account use a false and let's copy paste and also let's say for the Require confirm email is again false. Let's copy paste. And also for the phone number, we say it is false, but you can use them. So this is it. You can see that we can have some configurations for our identity. I'm showing you that. You can use any of them that you want, and that's so good. So let's cut some of these. And after that, we want to add authentication schema and JWT bearer. So here we need to have some configurations and we need some, uh, some strings. But instead of using them here, it is better idea to use them in application setting that JSON like what we have done for our connection string. So we can change them later on the server. So first, let's create them on our app setting.json. Let's go to the app setting.json and here 
we can create them so let's create another key with name of jw t and this jwt can be an object and inside of that we can use a valid issuer which can be any issuer you want and also a valid audience which can be anything and also we can have a secret so this is what we want we will compare it later so let's go back to our program.cs and use them so we need to add something to our services so we say builder dot at service dot services dot add authentication so we need to add some authentication and also we need to add jwt bearer to it this is the structure of it so for the authentication what can we have we can have some options and for this option we can use options that default schema would be jwt bearer defaults dot authentication schema that's it let's copy paste it and after that for the default authentication schema we again use jwt bearer defaults that authentication schema let's copy paste it and also for the default challenge default challenge schema we use it. so this is the authentication uh, configurations we needed and after that let's work on at jwt bearer this is so important so let's create it so we can receive some options and for this options we can say that options dot save token equals to true it has a lot of configurations for uh, masking all of them you need to go to the documents and read the, all of the documents of it but we, uh, we will use the vital ones here in this project so after that let's use options that require https metadata equals to false we don't need it and also let's have some options that token validation parameters and would be the token validation parameters which is Microsoft .anity model .token .token validation parameters and here we can have some validations for example we say validate issuer equals to true it will be checked and also validate the audience Oops. audience would be true and also we can use a valid issuer and we can say that what is a valid issuer so valid issuer so we want to use a builder dot configuration of we created this so instead of using a simple string here we can use it on the app setting and we can change it on the server later so we say that for the jwt and your name is going to be the jwt valid issuer so let's use this name to be sure that we don't have any error so this is the valid issuer and after that we can have a valid audience so the valid audience would be the builder dot configuration of jwt oops builder dot configurations of jwt and valid audience and let's copy this name here to be sure that we don't have any error so good so we use this valid audience and for the issuer signing key which is really important we create a new symmetric security key of encoding dot utf Eight dot get bytes of let's copy this builder that configuration because you want to use it and here we use the secret so we use the secret name that's it here let's add semicolon and here let's have another semicolon and add, and I think it's completed so for the builder that service that add authentication we use these 
and for the JWTBR we are using this uh, configurations now let's create this valid issuer and valid audience and the secret for our project so well, let's run our project to see it again can we see it or we have error cannot create a much other model that can the symmetry key key length okay no problem let's go to the app setting and here create them so for the valid issuer you can use any name you want for example https equals to the name of your server i simply use a local host let's check its ip name later and for the valid audience i want to use an https equals to slash slash local host port 3000 which is the react standard port for the secrets you can use any name you want i simply copy paste and a string here and it is a powerful uh, secret for our front end that's it let's go to the uh, properties launch setting and here let's check https so here it seems that we have 7237 let's copy this ip because this is the default uh, ip for our local host on https so let's go to the app setting and use this port here so we say that this is what we want to be our valid issuer for valid audience would be local host port of 3000 that's good for the secret it's it so let's close it and close line setting and this so in the program that CS we created this now let's start it to see do we have any error or not that's good we don't have any error but no operation defined in the spec because we don't have any controller but you can see that our server would be run on localhost port 7237 that's good now let's start uh, I think it's good for now and in the program that CS we added uh, authentication schema and JWT error and after that in the final part here before authorization we use app dot authentication that's it now we can use authentication and authorization in our project so we want to have a controller so let's go to the controllers and add a new controller it would be an api controller api mt and the name would be auth so auth controller that's it and also let's create another controller so let's add a new sorry not class add new controller so it would be an api controller mt so after auth controller we need to have a logs controller that's it and also let's have another one so add api controller mt good we can have a message controller so we have auth controller logs controller message controller and also let's have another test one sorry not class add controller api add. so the name would be test controller that's it let's close all of them so we are going to create an auth controller a logs controller and a message controller but in this project we want to use dependency injection so we don't use the business logics in our controllers we create some interfaces and some services and we will use them so let's create them let's go to the uh, interfaces and create a new class so here we need to choose interface and let's delete its name and the name of this would be i auth service let's add it so this is the interface for our authentication and what we need to have in this interface we need to create some functions and we will inherit 
from this IOT service in the OT service and we will implement them. So the first one would be a task and this task would return a general service response DTO. Let's use DTO.general. Yeah, that's it. So the first one would be a seed roles async because we want to have a function for seeding our database on the initial. That's it. Let's copy paste it. So the second one would return a task with general service response DTO and the name would be the register async. And what we need to receive in it, we need to have a register DTO of register DTO. That's it. Let's copy paste. So after this, we, again, we want to have a task, but for the return, we use a login service response DTO, and the name of it would be the login async, and we receive a login DTO. This is it. So this is for the after register, we implement the login functionality. And after that, let's copy paste it again. So after that, we need to have again a general service. What is the problem? General service response DTO of the next would be the update role async function. And inside of that, we need to receive a claims principal user and also a update role DTO of update role DTO. So inside of this update role async, we receive the update role DTO and the user which uh, has the type of claims principal and you will see that under the controller. So let's copy paste it again the after this uh, general service response of update role async, again, we need to receive a, a task of login service response DTO and the name would be me async. And here we just need to send me DTO of me DTO to this function. Let's copy paste it again. After that, we need to have another task for but the return time would be the enumerable of user info result and the name would be get users list async and that's it we don't need to receive anything but we just return the enumerable of user info result that's it so let's copy paste it again and after this uh, get users list async we need to have Another one, but for this type of the return, we just return one user info result. And for the name of it, we will use get user details by username. And we will just send a string of username to it. And after that, let's copy this and paste it here. So again, we have a task of enumerable of a string of get username list async so we will use this later in our front-end project so let's check them one by one we create an interface for our authentication service and we'll use this interface in our controller because of dependency injection if you are not sure why we are using this let me know in the comments and we can have another tutorial for it but our focus in this tutorial is just on security and jwt so we have a seed roles async we have a register async we have a login async, we have an update role async, we have a me async, we have a get user list async, get user details by username, and also a get username list async. That's it. So this was for our iPod service. Now let's create another interface, add a new class, and here we choose interface. So after this i Odd service, we want to have another one for log. So let's get I log service. I of log service. Let's add it. 
that's good this is another interface so let's create a new task and the task would be say new log and what we need to receive inside of it we need to receive an, a string of username and also a string of description that's it so what is the error yeah this is it so we have a task of save new log with a string of username and a string of description and after that let's have another task which returns i i in our label of get log dto and the name would be the get logs async without any input and let's copy paste it. So the next one is again a task with a enumerable of get logs DTO, but this time it is get my logs async, and we will receive a claims principal of user. That's it. So this is the interface of our iLog service. We'll implement it later. It has three functions: uh, save new log, get logs async, and get my logs async. Let's create the last interface which was for our message so let's create a new class interface and use the name of i message service so this is the next uh, interface here first let's create a new task with return of general service response dto the name would be create new message async with claims principal of user and also a create message DTO of create message DTO and after that let's create a new task with I in our label of get message dto and the name would be get message async that's it let's copy paste it and we receive again another task of i enumerable of get message dto with the name of get my message async and it will receive the claim principle of user let's copy it from here and paste it here and i think it's okay so let's create some services for them but before that let's have quick overview so we create i art service and we have some functions we will implement them so after that we have i log service and we have i message service that's it so uh, let's create services and use them let's close these So let's go to the services and add a new class. So I want to create a new class with name of log services because the log is the first one we need. So this is a class which names is log service and we need to inherit from I log service. That's it. When we inherit from this uh, interface, we need to implement its function. So if you can see that, if I press control dot, it uh, shows that you can implement interfaces. If I press enter, you can see that I have all of these. So I have these get logs async, get my logs async, and save new token. Sa uh, sorry, save new log. So I want this to be on the top of the list. So I will cut it and paste it here. That's good. In order to working with the logs, we need to have access to our context. So let's create it. It's so easy. We can create a private, read only our application the context of underlying context and we need to inject it here using dependency injection we can simply use control dot and we generate a constructor and we receive this context and work with it and in order to using this context let me show you in program.cs here we are injecting that uh, application db context to our services so in each service I can simply receive it inside of my constructor and use it here in this, as this underlying context, which is a private read only. That's so good. So let's work on it. The first thing is we have a, a public task of save new log of 
string of username and string of description because it's a task we need to change it to an async function and that's it so let's create a new log inside of it and we can simply say var of new log equals to a new log entity and what is the value so we need to receive a username this username would be this username that we are receiving and also for the description it would be description that's it so we created a new log here and we use a wait of underline context dot logs dot add new log but instead of add we can use add async it's better so it would be an async and that's much more better so we use a weight of underlying context that logs that add async of new log and after that let's save everything so we use a weight of underlying context that save change async and we don't return anything because it's just a simple task we don't want to return anything it's just a task that's it so let's continue after that i have the get logs async and get my logs async so let's work on them inside of get logs async let's delete this and here we can simply create our log so i say var logs equals to a weight of underlying context from the context we receive the logs let's go to the next line to be cleaner so this we need to select some field from them so let's use a select we say that receive the you need to receive the queue and for each one you will create a new get log dto and for each one you can have a created that which equals to q dot created at and also you can have the description which is q dot description and also you can have the username which equals to q dot username and after that let's what so it seems that we have some problem let's check them you have a selected queue new get like dto and here we created add description username okay let's continue for now and after that we can use dot order by descending so we want to order it so we use queue where queue dot created at so we are ordering by created at then we finally say go to the final version which is to list of async that's it so we uh, selected some of our fields and we created them as our new uh, result and we ordered them by the created async then we return them with this command dot to list async and after that we can simply return logs that's it so i think it's okay and let's continue to the next one so this was the get logs async let's go to the get my logs async let's delete this so for my logs you want to return all of the logs that are belongs to me so you know what let's copy all of these because it's exactly like the the get logs async so let's copy all of them and work on it. so for the logs we say that the logs is a weight of underlying -like context that logs that select the queue where queue is new uh, get log dto where created that and queue okay everything it seems that everything is okay but let's add an async here to avoid this error that's good but the only thing is we need to select all of the logs that belongs to me how we can do this it's too easy before this select let's add a where clause to it so we use a where and we say that where q goes to q dot username equals to user we are receiving the user from the controller which is a claims principle and inside of the user that identity that name we have the username of the user is logged in. So we say that logs equals to a weight of underlying context that logs where q goes to q that username equals to user that identity that name. Then we select q where goes to new and get log DTO. We created a use created a description username, order it and to list it and return it. So let's close this. I think the log service is completed. So let's close it and we'll work on it later.
just we need to inject it to our services so inside of the program that cs let's inject it we say that builder dot services dot add we can use some dependency injection methods for example we can use add scope or add singleton or add transient this is it so we use a scope that's it so we say that we want to use i log service and log service this is it so this uh, line would say to the asp.net that for the log service you need for the i log service interface you need to resolve it with this log service that's so good So let's continue. What we have done, we created our interfaces and we just created our log service. So let's create the next one and let's add a new class to it. So what is the name? After the log service, we can use the message service. Let's add it. That's good. So again, inside this message service, we need to inherit. So let's inherit from I message service. And you know that when we are inheriting, we need to use control dot and implement the interface. So we need to implement this one and this one and also this one. So as always, first let's add the DB context. So let's use a private read only of application DB context of underline context and let's use control dot and use generate constructor so in the constructor we receive this that's good and also after the context we need to access to two different services the first one let me add them one by one so let's add a private read only of i log service because we need to use the log service inside of our message service so this is the way we are using it we use the interface of this logger and we add it to our constructor. So let's press control dot and say add parameters. That's it. So you can see that how it is working. We use this iLog service inside of the constructor and we inject this. Uh, sorry, this is not it. I, yeah, it is iLog service, but the name must be log service, not log. I want to use this name. Let's press control dot again. Generate constructor what happened no we don't want to generate a new constructor we need to say add it so it seems that we have problem let's delete this constructor again and on the context let's press control dot and say the generate constructor this is it. after that we need to press control dot and say it must be added but it seems that let's cut it from here and paste it here private thread only of i log service of log service no press control dot and we must have add parameter yeah this is it add parameter to our constructor so we are receiving this log service which is the type of i log service and it would be injected into our project into our service using this that's it so this is it. after that also we need to have the user manager so let's add it we can have a private read only of the user manager which is coming from microsoft.asp.net.core.identity that we install and the type of it must be a application user and we use name of user manager for it and also we can receive it in our constructor so let's add parameter to our service now you can see that in constructor we're receiving the context and log service and user manager and all of them are injecting to our services in program.cs so let me show you that uh, in here we added this identity builder the services that add identity we added the identity and we can simply receive them in any controller or any service or any constructor that we have that's so good so we added application in the context good we added the user manager and we added the log service and we are receiving them in our constructor that's so good so after that let's work on 
our function. The, the first one is create a new message async. We are receiving the claim principle of user and the create message DTO. That's it. So let's first have some validations. So we will check that if the user dot identity dot name is equal to create message DTO dot receiver username. So this is not a good situation. So we simply return a new general service response DTO. And this is where I want to use that general response. That's good. So the first thing is for the x like said, we say it is false. We can check this on the controller and also for the status code, we can use 400 or any other status code you want. And we can have a message. For example, I want to have this message. Let me copy that. It would be faster. So for the message, we can send sender and receiver cannot be the same. And here we can use this. So what is the problem? We can, we don't need this because it's just a simple return. That's it. So if the user equal user that identity that name equals to create a message DTO that receive a username, we can simply return a new uh, general service and response DTO. We have is success equals to false and we have a status code of 400 and also we can have a message so it seems that we have error so let's use an async here and the error will be gone that's good so what it said it said this async method lacks await yes it's not a problem we'll use that await later so this was our first validation we checked that if the name of the sender equals the name of the receiver we will receive this error and it will not be processed so let's continue after that let's create a new variable name is receiver username valid so we need to validate the name of the receiver name so if the receiver name is not valid and it is not in our database we will return a new exception or a new bad situation so let's use the underlined user manager dot user here we are using that user manager dot any so we search that we receive for all of them we receive the queue and we say that if queue dot username equals to create message dto dot receiver user this is it so we will search on the database for it and after that we say that if it is false so if not of is receiver valid we return a new response let's copy this response quickly and use it so what we are going to do we are returning a new general service in these situations and you can use curly braces but when you, ju you just have one written with you don't need curly braces then you can say that your is such is false the status code is 400 and for the message you can simply return the sender and the receiver username is not valid that's it else we can continue so let's create a new message of new message we create a new message after that and we need to use the sender username the sender would be the user dot identity dot claim so by using the user dot identity dot name by using this line we will be sure that the username of the sender would be the name of the user that log into the system that's so good also after the sender we have the receiver so the receiver username would be the create message dto dot receiver username and also we have the text which would be the create say dto dot text that's it so we created a new message now we can add it to system so we use a wait of underline context dot message dot add async of this new message that's so good after that we can save to our database so 
a weight of underlying context that safe change AC. So after this, I want to have a new log to my uh, database to say that I have a new message. So this is it. Let's use a weight of underlying log service. So this is how we can use a service in another service in ASP.NET Core. So we call save new log. For the user, we send the user dot identity dot name. And also for the description, we can use send message. This is the log that we are saving in our database. So after that, we can return. So let's copy this return because everything is done successfully. And after this, we can return a new general service response DTO. If success this time would be true and the status code would be 201. And for the message, let me copy that. And we say the message saved successfully. And that's it. So let's cut the extra spaces and save everything. That's good. So we implemented this create new message async. Let's minimize it. And also let's go to the next uh, function, which is get me async. And also uh, get, sorry, get messages async. So in the messages, we need to return the messages. So let's do it. We save that off. Message equals to a weight of you see that async was added automatically because it's a task. So we use a weight of underline context dot messages. Let's go to the next line and use select. So we're selecting the field we want. So for each one, we create a new message DTO of get. So we create a new get message DTO. And for the ID, we use q.id, good. For the sender username, we use q.sender username. Then for the receiver username, we use q.receiver username. For the text, we use q.text. Also, let's return the created ad, which equals to no, not this, q.created ad. That's it. So after that, let's have an order by dot order by descending and we will order them by q dot q dot created add of descending dot to list async that's it so this is the message you want to return to our front end let's simply return this message that's it so you can see that the type of it would be in our label of get message dto and this is the get message async so i think it's good then let's have the get my message async so uh, again like the logs you saw that the uh, it was like the all of the logs so here like the logs my message is like the message so let's copy all of them from here and paste them and the only different thing is we need to have the name of our logged in user so let's see what is the user we say that var of logged in user equals to user dot identity dot name so this is the username we need to return the names which belong we return the message which belongs to this user so for the message we can use all of them but with a new ver so here let's add public async of task to avoid this error so good so we have the logged in user so when we are sending this message to the front end we need to add some filters to them so after this line let's add a where clause here we will say that you receive all of them and we should say that if the sender username equals to logged in Logged in user or q dot receiver username equals to logged in user. This is it. Then you select it. So that's it. So after this, we select all of them and we return them. Let's save all of them. That's good. And I think everything is okay. And we implemented all of what we wanted in our message services.
So let's close it. Uh, so let's close program.cs. And let's go and implement our auth. So let's go here and copy the name from here and create a new service. Let's new as entities and controllers and go to the services. So let's add a new class with name of auth service. Enter. So this is the auth service and you know that it needs to inherit from I auth service. And after inheriting from it, we need to press control dot and implement interface. So this is it. You can see that it is so easy. That's good. So we need to implement all of them one by one. But before that, we need to have some services. So let's add all of them. Okay. So the first thing is we need to have a private read only of user manager. We want to work with the user manager and for it, we need to have the application user of user manager let's press control dot and create a constructor and use this okay so you can see that we are receiving it in our constructor and this is the dependency injection phase that's so good after user manager also i want to have a role manager so let's create a private read only of role manager because here i want to work with roles it's a generic type so let's pass the identity role to it and let's use the name of role manager and press control dot so we need to add the parameter to our constructor that's it so we added the role manager and we injected it to our auth service so good after role manager i want to have log service again because i want to have some logs so i want to have logs for register login update role and another one so let's add i log service of underline log service let's press control dot and add the parameter to the constructor you can see that it is added so good so after log service again i want to have another one let me show you that private read only of this time i want to use i configuration because i want to have access to appsetting.json key and values so let's use this configuration and press control dot and add this parameter to our constructor. So you can see that I have the configuration here. That's so good. So let's minimize this and continue. So let's check IOT service. So the first one was seed rolls async. So let's implement seed rolls because here it's alphabetically sorted and it is here. So I will cut it and it would be the first one. So this is number one. Let's implement seed roles. Inside the seed roles, I want to seed my roles to the database. So let's create some booleans first. So I create a boolean variable with name of is owner role exist equals to a weight of under role manager dot role exists async. And for the name of role, instead of sending this string to it, we created an static. So let's use that a static user roles dot owner. This is it. So you can see that we are avoiding any typing errors. And this is really good. And it will help us in all of our projects. So in all of our projects, instead of typing, we're using this static user roles dot owner. And if in any situation in the future we want to change it it will be changed automatically on all of our project that's good so this was for the first one after that i want to have another boolean so let's create a boolean of is admin role equals to a weight of under role manager dot role exist async of a static user roles dot admin after that i want to have manager so let's use a boolean of is manager role exist equals to a weight of underline role manager dot role exist async of static user roles dot manager 
let's press control c control v and for the final one we can use user and here we say is user row exists so we created four variables to check all of them then we say that if the all of them are exists ah is admin sorry and is admin and is manager role and is user role exists so if all of them are exist that's good it sees that seeds are done already so we simply can create a new response so return a new general service response DTO and simply we say that this success is true and the status code would be 200 and the message would be role seeding is already done and that's it so if all of them are exist we simply return this and you know what we can avoid this curly brace because we have just a written else continue we can inject all of them so we use the weight of role manager dot create we create a new role in this way so we say new identity role of a static user roles dot owner so let's copy paste it two three four first one is owner then we add admin we add manager and we add user so we will add using this command role manager that create async we will add owner and admin and manager and user to our database that's good then we can simply return a new response so let's copy this we return the new response is success is true okay the is success this time is 201 because 201 is for the creation and we say that role seeding done successfully that's it let's delete this so this is the seeding now let's minimize the seeding and go to the next one so after seeding we have register async so let's find the register and move it to the top this is the register async i cut it and paste it after the seed rolls async so let's delete this for the register async let's create first a var of is exists user because we want to avoid a duplicate of the username so we say that var is exist user equals to await of we need to use async here because we are using await in this register async and also on login we use async so we say that we search on the user manager we say that user manager dot find by you can see that i have find by email by id by login by name so we want to search the username so we say find by names async of uh, the register detail that we are receiving dot username so we can simply check that if the username is duplicate or not so let's add some spaces here that's good so we use this var and we say that if the is exist user is not null you can see that how cool sharp and c sharp it is we simply return a new general so you can see that i'm using general service response to all of my services that was a so good idea i use it on my uh, business project so we can use is success is false that's it for the status code we can use 409 for the duplicate and we can have a message so username already exists that's good so if the username is exist in our database we can simply call this and we return this response so what is the problem not all code has return a value yes that's good no problem because we just have this if let's continue so after this if we, we know that this username is not exist on our database so we create it and 
we save it on our database. So let's do this. Let's create an application user of new user equals to new application user. Let's have a first name. The first name equals to register user DTO dot not this dot first name. And then let's have the last name is register DTO dot last name. Let's add the email which equals to register user DTO dot email. Good. Let's add the username which equals to register user DTO dot username. And also the address we receive it from register user DTO. And let's add a security stamp. The security stamp would be a new GUI. So let's add GUID dot new GUID dot to string. That's it. So we created what is F? <laughs> so we created a new user. No, we can add this new user to our database. So let's uh, use var of create user result because we can check the result of it which is the weight of underlying user manager here we create the user we use this create new user async the first input would be the new user and the second one would be the password why we are using this let's use this password because the password would be hashed and it would be a hashed password that's saved in our database so this is really good because identity package is so powerful so after this create user result you will check it if not of create user result that succeed so if it was not successful let's create some error string and return it to the front and so we use var of row string equals to user creation fail because this is the standard error string after that we use a for each no not for low we need to use for each and we say that for var of error in the create user result that errors because we are receiving some errors and it succeeds from this a way of user manager that create async we can check all of them so we say that for each var of errors var of error in create uh, user result that errors we need to add them to this error string so we say that error string plus equals to a sharp to separate them one by one and error dot description so you can see that how easy it is this is it so after this uh, loop we need to return a uh, message to front end so let's copy this return quickly and we return a new general so it succeeds false the status code this time is 400 for the bad request and the message would be this error string control s that's it so this is for the validating of our front end, our uh, creation so if it was not successful we will receive the uh, error strings and we return it to the set, to the front end after that let's continue so let me add a comment so i want to add a default user role to all of new users let's do it so let's use a weight of user manager dot add to role async and the first one is the user so for the new user i want to add a static user roles dot user so this is it automatically this user will be automatically added to any new user this this is the string of user and it would be our new role that's so good and also after that i want to have a lock so let's await a lock service dot say new log that's it so the first one is new user dot username so this is the username of our log and for it for the description we can use registered to website 
and that if we just use await, we don't need any return of it. And after that, it seems that everything is working correctly. So let's return a new response. Let's copy this response from here. And here, this time we say it succeeds this true, so good. For the status code, we use 201. And for the message, let me copy that. So the user created successfully and let's delete these extra spaces and that's it. So we created it and this is our uh, register async. Let's minimize it and go to the next one. What is the next one? Let's go to the IR service. So after register async, we have this login async. So let's go to the service and find the login. This is it. Let's cut it. And after register async, we implement the login async. The first thing is let's add an uh, async because it's an async. Good. In first step, we need to find the user with the username that we are sending to this login async. So let's do this. The first thing is we use var user equals to await of user manager. We find this user by using find by name async of the login DTO dot username that's it and if the user is exist we continue but if the user is null we need to return 401 oops not in if user is null we simply return we must return a null to our controller but uh, what is this this is null but it seems that we need to receive a login service response so this is not good, so let's make it nullable. And also, let's go to the for the login async. Let's go to the IOT service and make it a nullable. It's better if we receive a null. It means that we need to receive 401. That's so good. So let's continue. So the first thing is we search for the user in database. If the user is null, we simply return null to controller. Else we continue. So let's continue. So we need to add this authorization of check password of the user so let's check it varov is password correct equals to await of underline user manager dot check password async the user is this user and the password is login dto dot password we are using this because the password is saved as a hashed password in our database and that's so good so here we check it and Again, we check that if it, uh, the not of is password correct, so if it is false, we simply return null again. So if the user is not exist or its password is wrong, we simply return null and we say to the front end that this username and password or this ingredient, these uh, credentials are invalid. That's so good. Now let's continue. So if the user is valid and the password is valid, we return token and user info to our front end. Let's do this. So we need to create a new token. That token can be something like this. And also we need to have the uh, user info. We need to send the user info to our front end. So let's create it. But before that, for example, we want to have a user info equals to an object of user result. But let's create uh, two helper functions for them because we want to use them on another functions so let's create them the first one is we want to have a new uh, function so let's create a new function named generate wwt token async we will pass this user to it and we want to create this generate wwt token async that receives a user and it would return the new token for us so let's copy its name and create it so the name must be generate jwt token async Let's go in the final part of our art service. So this must be it. Let's comment it. So let's create it. We need to create a new function. And I want to create a private function because this doesn't need to be accessed from the outside of art service. So let's create a private async with the return type of task. And this is a generic task of a string. So the name would be this generate uh, the generate JWT token async. It would receive an application 
user of user that's it so let's work on it. the first thing is we need to have the roles so let's use var of user roles equals to await of user manager dot get roles async of this user so this is the all roles that this user has it can be owner admin or anything yes then let's create an odd claims of new list of claims so we can have a you can have any claim you want so i want to have a claim types dot name and user dot username so this is one claim i want to have in my token let's copy it and after that we can have for example name identifier which is the id and we can use the user.id let's copy paste it again and also we can have a custom claim for example i can receive the you can use anything you want i use first name would be the user dot first name control c control v and also i want to return the last name this is not required but i'm showing you because this is a tutorial and you can see that in the feature you can return any custom claim you want to this is front end so that's it so we have some roles and we are using this odd claims then we need to add a new role for each of our roles to our claim so let's add a for each so for var for each var of user role in user roles the odd claims dot add so we add a new claim let's copy it quickly from here because it's exactly like it so we use claim types dot role and we use this user role this will add all of the roles to the odd claims that's it so we added all of the roles to our claims let's continue after that we want to work with the secrets and credentials in our token object what let's create them first so var of out secret but our code would be cleaner so new symmetric security key again let's you know what let's go to the program.cs and show you that this is exactly like this let me copy all of this because the issuer signing key would be this so let's copy this and in odd service for the odd secret let me show you that it would be a new symmetric security key of encoding.utf.get bytes of the secret which is coming from let me show you again in app setting is coming from this secret in program.cs by using builder.configuration we have access to app setting.json but in our services we don't access to it by this builder how we can do this we let me show you we have access to it by i configuration of underlying configuration and we injected it here in our uh, constructor let's use it so let's copy this configuration name quickly and here instead of this builder that configuration let's use underlying configuration of jwt secret that's it so we created our odd secret after that let's create a credential so let's have var of signing credentials a new signing credentials and we use the odd secret it was the this let me show you this is the secret that we are creating it here and we want to encode it using a security algorithm dot h mac of sha 256 that's it we're using this algorithm you can check it on the jwt.io and i will show you that later so this is the signing credentials after that we can have a new token so let's create it so the var of token object equals to here we create our jwt security token and inside of that we can have an issuer or issuer would be let's 
copy all of them from the program.cs. So the valid, like the valid issuer, it would be this. Let's go to the art service. Okay. It would be this part we use underline configuration. That's it. And after that, we can have the audience like top underline configuration. Good. Let's copy it. But here for the valid for the audience, we use this key. Valid issue valid audience. Sorry, it's it. So we use for the issuer we use that issuer for the audience we use valid audience not before would be the time of the stamp the security time stamp of creation time so for the not before we can simply use the time dot no that's it and after that we can say that when this expires so the expires would be the time dot no dot at hours of for example one two three five four anything you want i use three so this would be valid for three next hours that's so good and also we need to add claims this claim is too important so we use this odd claims that we created on the top that's so good and also we can use the signing credentials so this is one of the most important type of our jwt and that's it so i think it's completed so we created this token object with a new JWT security token. We have issuer, audience, and not before, expires, claims, signing credentials. That's good. After that, we can give the string of token from it. So let's create a token, JWT security token handler dot write token of this token object. And we can simply return this token. This is it. So it seems that we created our generate JWT token async. Let's minimize it. That's good. No, it must work. Let's go back to our login async. No, you can see that it is created and this must be a task of a stream. We can use await because no, this is async. So we created our new token. After that, I want to have a user info. So for that, I will create a new helper function because I want to use it on another uh, function and it would be reusable using this function it's better but before that let's use our role so I say var of roles equals to await of underline user manager dot get roles async of this user and in this new function I want to use the user and roles so I will pass this user and this role to this function so uh, let's copy the name of it from here and create it on the end let's comment it so again this can be a private because we just need it in our art service so we create a private let's copy the name again so we create a function of private generate user info object and what is the type of it so it would not return a task it simply returns a user info result we created that info result for here so what it would be received it received an application user of user and an i in our label oops user and i in our label with generate type of stream of roles that's it so we just simply need to return a new user info result and for the id we use user.id that's good for the first name we use the user.first name for the last name we use user that last name it's suggesting me so good for the username we can use user dot username then we can have the email which equals to user dot email and also let's have a created at which equals to 
user.created app and also let's have the rows which equals to the rows that we are receiving in our function that's it so i think it's okay let's check it so we have a private user info result of generate user info object we receive application user of user and i number of rows we return a new user info result and we create anything we want so it's easy you can use automapper but in this project i didn't want to use automapper so i added this function let me add a comment for it quickly we are returning this let's minimize it and go back to our login AC. so it was here so we are using this user info result after creating this user info result also i want to have a new log so let's instead of that let's use just simply await all. and also you can ignore await if you don't want but i'm just showing you that you can use this await because this is a task and if you ignore the await the program would be continued and you would not be stopped for result of this log but i use await of underline log service dot save new log for this login that's good so for the first one would be the user dot username the first input and new login so we are saving a new log and then everything is okay we can return the data to our controller so let's return a new login service response dto because the type let me show you again the type of this login async would be a task of login service response dto and here we can return a new token which equals to new tokens and also the user info would be what is the name of it the user info that's it uh, let's close this so we created our login and you can see that it is too easy we first we check for the username then we check for the password and if username and password is correct we create a new JWT token for it then we create the user info with the roles of this user like this and then we save a new log to our database then we return this response to our controller and this response would be sent to our front end let's minimize this login async that's good so let's go back to the interface i close the interface no problem let's open our interface again so i add service so after login async we have update role async let's work on it let's go to the auth service and update role you do here update role let's cut it from here after login i want to work on this update role async so let's close this and make it an async task that's good so in the update role async we're receiving the user and update role dto so first let's check the user you know what let's check the login yeah <laughs> we exactly need to copy this because it's like it and paste it here so we say that while user equals weight of user manager dot find by name async of the update role dto dot username so we check it and if the user is null we can simply return let's copy quickly from here okay we can return a new general service response dto with a success of false and a status code of 404 which means not found and for the message we use invalid user that's it so this is the first validation we have and let's have some space here that's good so after it we know that the user is exist if we are passing this if that's good so let's have the user role so we say where of user roles equals to await of underline user manager dot get roles async of the user we need this user roles so just the owner and the admin can update roles we check it so first we say that if user is in role by using this user that is in role you can check the role of your user so 
Here we need to check that if it's admin, so let's use a static user role starts admin. So we will we check that if the user is admin, then we check that if the update role DTO dot new role equals to role type user. So we created this role type and we can simply use it. So if it's the role type the user or updated role DTO dot new role equals to role type dot manager. So if it's it, let me add a new comment. So if the new uh, role is user or manager, the admin can work on it because the admins can change the role of everyone except for owners and admins. So if it is owner or admin, it would not be uh, it would not be performed. So this is if the new user uh, role is user or manager, we can simply continue. How we can make sure that the user that we are going to update is not an admin or an owner. It's too easy. We can simply check it because we have the user here and we have the user roles here in user roles. So we can check it that if the user roles dot any q where q equals to a static user roles dot owner or Q dot equals to a static user role dot admin. So you have error. It says that if Q equals to this, okay, it's here. Or Q dot equals to a static user role dot admin. So if the user role is owner admin, we don't access to it. So let's return a new response here. And we return a false with response of 403, which is a forbidden. Let's have a new message here. With message of you are not allowed to change role of this user because this user is either admin or owner. So this is for this if. And after that, we can say that else we can use a weight of user manager dot remove from roles async of the user and user roles. That's it. We first we delete all of the roles from the user, then we use a weight of underline user manager dot add to role async of the user and updated user role dot new role dot to string that's it and after that we can have a lot so let's have an underline log service dot say a new log the username would be user dot username and also the message would be role updated or we can use user role updated or we can use user roles updated you can use any log you want that's it and after that we can return a new message so let's copy this message from here and paste it so after that we return a new General service response DTO there is success would be true. The status would be 200 and the message would be role updated successfully and that's it. So after this and here, so we check everything for this user. Here we check that if the user is in this uh, owner or admin, we return a new general service response DTO, else we change the user roles and we delete the previous roles, we add the new roles, we add a new log, and also we return a new response here. So after that, use an else. So let me show you that 
if the updated role is not a user or a manager we can simply return again let's copy this we can return a new general service response DTO with is success of false and 403 for the message we say you are not allowed to change role of this user why because in this situation the new user is admin or owner and we don't want to access to it that's it so this was for the first one that was this situation if user is in role of a static roles dot admin let's go to the next step and after that we use an else if the user uh, is not in role of admin we know that the user is in role of owner and we will make sure this by using the authorization uh, in our controller so here we say that the user is owner and let's continue this time it's easier in the previous example we used this so let's copy this uh, checking here and if the user is owner we can have any change for example the owner the, the sorry the admin the user and the, the manager so let's copy it but this time we just need to use the owner so we check that if user rows that any of q where q, q equals to user static dot owner we simply return a new so if the user is owner we don't want the, it to change the other owner so let's return a new let's say let's copy from here we return a new general service response with false 403 and you are not allowed to change role of this user that's it and after this if which would be i think here we can use an else again let's copy this because we want to perform it again so we use await of underline user manager that's removed from roles async of user and user roles then we use await of user manager dot add to roles async of user and updated user role dot new role and also we use await of log service dot save new log of user dot username and user roles updated that's good then we can simply return it successful message let's copy this message from here copy pasting is a good idea in your project that's it so we return a new message of uh, true with 200 and role updated successfully that's so good so let's close this delete this extra white spaces that's it so i think it's okay let's minimize the update role async and go to the next one so what is the next one in IR service the next one is me async let's find it me this is here let's cut it after update role i will paste it here uh, and let's delete this and because it's async i think you can use async here that's good for the me async, we are receiving a me DTO. Let's check me DTO. What was it? We are receiving a JWT token. We need to decode it and receive the data of it and work on it. Let's start. So the first thing is we need to create a handler for handling our token. Let's create it. So let's create a claims principle of handler which is a new JWT security token handler we used it previously on let me show you again in our token you can see that we use that here JWT token handler for writing now we use it for validating let's work on it so here we using new JWT security token handler we need to validate the token so what is its token? The token is me DTO dot token, which is an string. And then we need to add a token validation parameters. So here we need to have some validation. So we can use validate 
issuer equals to true and let me show you that from program.cs validate issuer, validate audience, validate issuer, valid issuer, valid audience and issuer signing key let's copy all of these because we exactly validate them but why by, but why we are validating here inside of this token validation parameter? So let's copy all of them from program.cs and paste them here and work on them. So validate issuer is true. Validate audience must be true. The valid issuer is the configuration. So let's delete this and use underline configuration that you saw. We worked on it. For the valid audience, we use underline. Configurations of JWT bearer valid audience. That's good. For the issuer signing key, we use new symmetry key of encoding dot UTFA dot get bytes of. For the builder that configuration, we use underline configuration. That's it. And also, after this parameters, we can have an output of security token of security token. That's it. Let's have some spaces. So after that, let's have the coded username, which equals to this handler that we created dot claims dot first, where Q goes to Q dot type equals to claim types dot name, and we need its value. So what is this? This is, you can see that we are creating this and it would be a, this handler. In this handler, it is a claims principle like our user. So inside of the user claims, we search that. What is the claim of name? And we receive the value of it. And first we validate it by using if the code username is null. So what, what we must return if it's not, we must return null so because of this let's make it optional so inside of me async let's make this optional and also in iot service let's make it optional so we can receive the null that's good so if the decoded username is null it means that it was wrong and it was not a valid username so we return null after that, let's find our user. So, where of user equals to await of underline user manager dot find by name async of our decoded username. Again, if this, let's copy this. Again, let's have another validation. If the user is null, we return null. That's it. After that, let's create our token. So, we know we are sure that our user is exists on our database. That's so good. So let's create our new token equals to await of generate JWT token async of this user. This is exactly the reason we use the generate JWT token and generate user info object in login. Let me show you again. In login, we use this and also this because we wanted to use it on me async so we are not repeating our code so you know what let's copy all of these from here and go to the and minimize the login so we are going to create a new token which is a way to generate jwt token async of user and we receive the roles which is underline user manager that gets roles async. Then we say user info is generate user info object of user and role. You saw them when we were when we was working with login. And here in this login service, log service that say new log for this username, we don't say new login. We say new token generated because this is not a login. And in this method, we just received the uh, token. I will show you that. What is this? functionality it's so useful in your project so this is it now we can return a new login service response detail like our login so we need to have a new token which equals to token and also let's return the user info which equals to user info that's it and let's delete these extra spaces we don't need them that's good
So I think me async is created successfully. Let's minimize it and go to the next one. Let's go to the IAT service. After me async, we have get users list async. Let's work on it. Get users details, get usernames, get users list. Yes, cut, paste it, and delete this. So this must be an async because it's an async operation. Well, let's create our user. So var of users equals to await of underline user manager dot users dot to list async. That's it. So we need to change them. So let's create a new list of user info result of user info result equals to a new list of user info result because we don't want to uh, to return all of the fields of our user to the front end we just need to send the user info result object that's it so let's create a for each for each var of user in users we say var of roles equals to a weight of underline user manager dot get roles async of the user don't forget to use the await keyword here it's too important because this is an async task then var of user info equals to generate user info object with user and uh, the roles we again using that function so you can see that this is the uh, definition of don't uh, repeat yourself or try that's so good we are not repeating all of the codes in different situations and locations so where of we created where of roles we created where of user info and then we say user info results dot add this user info that's good and after this for each we simply return user info result that's it so i think it's completed get users list it's async that's good let's minimize it and go back to our interface so after get users we have get user details but user name and you know what let's uh, because it's a task let's make its name to async Let's change the name of it. It's here. That's good. So uh, let's delete this and make it an async. So here we need to get a user detail by its username. So let's do this var of user equals to. Now you are familiar with it. We can use a weight of underline user manager dot find. You can find by ID or email or name. Yeah, we simply we have the username so we use find by name async and we pass the username to it and if the user is null we can simply return null because of this let's make this nullable and also on the iart service i make it nullable good so if the user is null we simply return null that's it else we say where of roles let's receive the roles is a weight of underline user manager dot get roles of this user that's it again we are using that generate user info object so let's say that where of user info equals to generate user info object with the user and the roles so you can see that that function was very useful and that's it so generate info of user and roles and we can return this user info this is it so i think it's completed and let's check it okay we check the user if user is null we return null else we return the user info with this user and these roles or her roles let's minimize it and it seems that we are on the final one, which is get username list async. 
Let's check it on the IAT service interface. Yeah, it's final one. Task of I enumerable of a string of get user names list async. So let's work on it. Let's delete this. And because this is a task, we need to use async for it. Let's use var of users equals to await of user manager dot users. So this is a list of all of our users, but we just need the username, which is an a string. So let's use the select or you know what? Let's go to the next line and use dot select. We say that get cube where cube dot username and that's it dot to list async and we can go to the next line use a semicolon here and we return this or instead of users let's use user names i think it's a better name let's return this user name so i think it's completed let's minimize it and delete the extra spaces we don't need these that's good no let's save everything close this art service and i art service that's it so we created all of the let's check them again so we created all of the interfaces and the services and now we just need to in inject them to our services and use them in our controllers let's do this let's go to the program.cs and here on the top in the dependency injection we need to inject all of them so let's use builder.services.addscoped let's copy this okay so we have I log, so again I want to have I message service and I want to inject message service to it. Then I want to have I add service with add service. That's good. So now we have access to all of the services in our controllers. Let's start working on controllers so first let's work on the test controller so this is one of my controllers which wrote up a slash api a slash name of controller which would be the test before that let's start to see what do we have until now we have four controllers for now okay you can see that we cannot see anything because we don't have any functions or any http roads yet let's work on them so inside of the test controller, the first thing is I want to have a new road. So let's create an HTTP GET. I assume that you are familiar with GET POST and the others. And for the road, I want to use GET PUBLIC. So this would be a public HTTP road. So let's create a public of I action. Result of GET, let's say public data. It's just a simple name. And we return and OK. We say that public data. This is just a test. Yeah, public data. OK, this is the first one. Let's copy this and create a get user row. So for this, we need to have access of the row. We need to use a new annotation of authorize. So we use the authorization here and we say that your roles equals to role of user. How we can access it? We created this static user roles for here. A static user roles dot. So for this, we want to have the user. So we say that only the user can access to this. That's so good. And here we can say that get user data. And here we say that user role data let's change this to data so this is the first one let's copy it and work for the next one which is manager so we say that the route of it, it is get manager role and here we say that the authorization role is manager and here we say get manager data and here we use manager role data that's it Let's copy it again. So after manager, we have admin. 
So let's use admin and here use admin. The name would be get admin data and here would be admin role data would be returned as our response. Also let's copy it. And for the final one here, we can use get owner role with name of owner. And here we say the name of it would be owner data and owner. So I'm showing you that how you can authorize one your role on any HTTP role you want. It can be get, post, put, delete with any role. Here in the authorize, you can use roles of Anything you want, we are using this static user roles to avoid any typo or typing error. So this is owner, this is admin, this is manager, and this is user. So let's start again to check it. Okay, now you can see that I have this test, which is my controller. And I have five function or HTTP roles and the first one is slash API slash test slash get public. Let's try it. Okay, you can see that we are receiving 200 and public data. That's good. Let's check the next one. Try. Okay, you can see that we are receiving 401 which is unauthorized. So we don't have access to it. So good. And here test it. 401 admin role execute 401 so good and on a roll try it secure 401 that's so good it means that we don't have access to this so this is the first uh, controller we wanted to show you that how you can uh, use a single role to authorize your http role so uh, you can see that the first one which is this http get is not protected it is public but this one is protected and only the users with the role of user can access to it for the next one only the user with role of the manager can have access the next one would be admin just the admin can access and the next one is owner and just the owner can access so this was the first controller and you saw that let's close the test controller and go for the next one So the next one would be the logs controller. Here we want to work with the log service. So let's receive it like what we have done in our services. So we use private thread only of i log service of log service and let's press control dot and generate a constructor to receive it and inject it into our controller. So, so let's create an HTTP get and we use authorize. And we, for the roles, we want to use static user roles dot. Here I use owner admin. Let me use it and show you what is this. So you can have multiple authorization. For example, for this role, I want to have access by roles of owner or admin. In order to doing this, let's go here and copy from here. In, in order to doing this, you need to use this. So let's create it to show you that pop. I think this is a task with an action result of I enumerable of get log DTO and the name would be get logs. We don't have any input because we just need to receive the logs. We say that var of logs equals to underline log service dot get logs async. And we return an OK with logs. So this is it. In order to have the access of owner and admin to this HTTP role, you need to do this. But instead of this, uh, instead of hard coding them here, I'm using a static user roles dot owner admin. What is this? Let's go and check it again. This is exactly that string, but by using this static class. We are avoiding any typing errors and in the future if we want to change these we can simply change them from here and all of them will be updated automatically. This is so good and so useful. So this is it. This was the first uh, service I wanted to use, get logs. And here you can see that I'm calling 
the log service, but because it's uh, async, let's use await here. And because this is await, we must have async task here. That's so good. So let's copy this and have another one. That's it. So HTTP get will authorize uh, for the next one. Use HTTP get and let's have a root for it. Let's say, for example, mine. And here for the authorization, uh, let me show you a new thing. So here we delete this. I just use authorize here. What this means, it means that anybody that is logged in into our website can use this. So you need to have a username and password and login to access to this. There is no difference between your roles. Anybody with any roles can have access to this method. But if you want to have one, for example, one access like owner, you can use the roles and you can pass your roles here like this. That's so good. So let's just use authorize and this mine would be authorized. So just the logged in users can have access to this. So this is a public async task of action result of I enumerable of get log DTO again, but this time it is get my logs. And here, what was the difference? Let's again say that logs equals to uh, underline log service dot get my logs async. And here we need to pass the user to it. This user is accessible in the HTTP context of the controllers. That's so good. So we have access to this user, which is type of, you can see that system.security.claims.claims principle of control, controller based that user. We pass this user to the log service dot, get my logs, and we receive the logs and we return the OK of logs. Let's test them. And I think we don't have the log of any user, but let's check them. So API logs, let's try it, execute. Well, we receive 401, yeah, because we don't log in yet. And also for the mine, we receive 401. That's good, because these are all protected. So this is it. This was the logs controller. Let's go to the next controller, which is message. And let's work on it. First one is private. Read only, we need to have access to I of message service of underline message service. And let's press control dot with generate constructor. So after this constructor, let's have some spaces. Well, the first thing is we need to have a road for create a new message to send to another user. So let's make it. The method must be HTTP post for creating a new resource. We use this. And also, let's have a root name for it. For example, I want to use create. And also, let's use just authorize. So anybody that has logged in can use this HTTP method. That's it. So let's create it public async task of I action result of create new message. So inside of this, we from the body, we receive a create message DTO of create message DTO. That's it. And we say var of result equals to await of message service dot create new message async. And we pass the user. And also we pass the create message DTO to it. That's it. So you can see that my controller is so clean. And all of the business logic is on service layer. So we simply can check the result and say that if result that is succeed, we simply return OK, which is 200 with result that message. And we send this message directly to our client or our front end. Else, we simply we know that we have some error. So we return new status code of result that the status code because we are saying what is the status code in our services and also we send the result dot message that's it so i think it is completed that's so good so we created this create new message let's minimize it and go to the next one we have another road for getting all messages for the current user either as a sender or as a receiver let's create it so this time because we are receiving the message from the server and we are sending to the client, we use HTTP GET 
and we can use a road for it for example mine that's it and this is the authorized so we just need authorized so the login users can have access to it and let's use a public async task of action result and this is a list of messages so it must be an I enumerable of get message DTO the name would be get my messages we don't receive anything from the user because we just need the user to log in and then we have access to the user so we say that var of message equals to a weight of unders dot get my messages async with this user that's it we send this user to the message service and we will return it to the front end so good so i think get my message with this and good i think it's okay let's minimize it and go to the next one so after this we need to have a new road for getting all messages but with owner access and admin access so uh, the owner and the admin can see all messages but any user just can see its message let's implement it so this is again http get we don't use any road so it would be a slash api a slash message that's good and for the authorized section we can use some roles of static user roles dot again owner admin this is really important so just the owner and the admin can access to this http method this is so important in our real world project so let's create it public async of let's copy it from this quickly it's better public async of task of action result of i enumerable of get my message dto of get message and let's copy this so we say var of message equals to await of underline message service dot get this time we use get message async that's it and we return okay with this message so let's delete the extra spaces because they're done let's minimize it and this and that's it so we implemented the message controller also the test controller and the lux controller and now let's work on the most important controller which is art controller so in this auth controller we need the service as always so let's create a private root only of i auth service of auth service let's press control dot to generate the constructor of it so good so after creating our constructor let's have a new road for seeding our roles to the database so let's have an http post i'm using this http post to show that this is a create but you can use http get or any type of http methods you want and we say that the road is seed road this is it you can use a public async task of by action result of seed roads that's it so instead of that we say that var of seed result equals to a weight of underline auth service dot seed roads async that's good and after that we return uh, a status code of the seed result dot a status code and seed result dot message this is it so we return all of the codes and the message to the front end then we need a road for the register so let's create a new http post with the road of register you can use any name you want so i use public async task of by action result of register this is it so what we need to receive from the user so we say from body you need to receive the register dto of register dto that's it then var of register result equals to a weight of underline at service we can simply call register async with this register dto and then we simply return directly the status code of this service to the front end so we can simply we can see that it uh, is suggested automatically so 
we return status code of register result dot status code and register result dot message. That's it. Let's minimize the seed rows and minimize the register. We need to have a road for our log. Let's be quicker. So let's copy all of this and work on it. So let's copy this again. So the road for the login would be an HTTP post with road of login and it will be a public async task of action result again. But this time, because we are sending a token to the front end, instead of action result, we need to use an action result, which is a login service response DTO and the name would be login and from the body we are receiving the login dto of login dto and we say that var of login result equals to await of underline at service dot login async of this login dto that's it and we check that because we may receive the null which saw that under at service dot login async so we can check that we say if login result is null what we need to do we can simply return an unauthorized return any message you want for example we can return your credentials are invalid please contact to an admin or any other message you want and if it is not null we can simply return an okay with login result that's it so i think the login is completed so let's Minimize this and minimize this. Let's go to the next row. We want to have a row to update our user role. And we know that an owner can change everything. And an admin can change just the user to manager or reverse. And the manager and the user role don't have access to this row. So we'll implement this by using authorized annotation. So let's implement it. We use an HTTP post again. That's it. So we need to define the road for it and we say that your road is update role and we must use authorize with some roles so again for the role we can use a static user roles dot owner admin that's it so by using this we sure that only the owner and admin have access to this so let's create it public async a task of by action result of update role. this is it and inside of that we from the body we must receive the update role dto of update role dto and inside of this update role dto first we say var of update role result equals to await of underline at service dot update role async and we need to pass the user to it as well as updated role DTO. So this is the first step. We pass the user and the updated role DTO to this service and we await for it. After that, we check that if the update role dot is succeed. So if it was successful, we simply return OK with the message of update role result dot message semicolon else we can simply return the status code of our update role result dot status code and update code result dot message that's it so let's delete this extra white spaces and i think it's completed so let's minimize it and go to the next uh, http route the next row would be for getting data of a user from its JWT or JSON web token. So let's create an HTTP post for it with the root of me. That's it. And then let's create public uh, async a task, which is an action result of login service response DTO because we want to receive a token from this HTTP method. And we from body we receive a new DTO of token. That's it. So we receive this token from body. Then here we need to use a try catch because we might have the, some exceptions. Try. Yeah, that's it. So we use try catch. In try we say var of me 
equals to awake of Andela at service dot me async and we send this token to it. Oh, this is the first step. Then we check that if me is not null. So if the me is not null, we return an OK with the me. Else we simply return an unauthorized with invalid token. That's it. And also we have a case. So in catch, we can have any uh, type of error. So I simply return and again this unauthorized. So let's copy this. We return unauthorized uh, with name of invalid uh, token. So this would be the message. Let's delete extra spaces. We don't have any extra spaces. That's good. So let's minimize this me. And I think it's completed. Now let's go to the next one. The next route would be a route for getting the list of all users with details. So let's create it. HTTP get with the route of users. And let's create public async task which has type of action result of i in our label of user info object of result. That's it. And let's use name of get users list. That's it. So we use var of users list equals to a weight of underline. At service dot get users list async that's good and let's return OK with this users list and I think it's OK so we have a task of action result of by in our label of user info result of get users async and get users list sorry we receive this uh, out of at service dot get users list async and we return it to the front end that's so good let's minimize it and go to the next HTTP road. The next road would be for getting a user by its user. So let's use an HTTP get and let's have a new road for it. For example, users slash this time I want to receive a username, but this username must be a parameter. So use a curly brace here to show that this is a parameter. That's it. So let's create a public async task of action result of user info result and we say this is the get user details by username and this time we receive this from the route so from route we receive the string of username that's it and here first we check that bar of users equals to a weight of on the at service dot get user details by username async and we pass the username to it and if the user is not null we can simply return an ok with the user else we can simply return a not found which would be a 404 status and we say username not found that's it so we receive the username from the road which would be a slash users a slash the username and we check that if the username is exists. So if the username is not null, we return the OK with this user. Else we return a not found with username not found. That's it. So let's minimize it and go to the next HTTP route. The next route and our I think our final route would be the get list of all username for sending message. So this would be an HTTP get and we use route of usernames for it let's create a public async task of this time it is an action result of i in our label of so we're returning a list of a string of usernames to our front end with the name of get usernames list we don't need to receive anything from the body or from the road we simply say var of usernames equals to a wait of underline at service dot get usernames this async that's it and we simply return ok with user so let's delete this extra line and I think we implemented a lot of functionalities let's check it let's, again so let's mm, go here so we injected i at service here using the constructor 
Then we created a road for seeding our rows to our database. Then we created a register, then a login and an update. After that, we create an update role DTO. Here we are receiving update role DTO in this update role. Then we have a me. And then we have the list of the users, which get users list. The next one is get user details, but usernames and get usernames list. So I think everything is good. Let's uh, start our project and see the result. And see what do we have until now. Okay, let's minimize them. No, and let's minimize these schemas. Okay, you can see that we have odd, logs, messages, and tests. We have four different controllers. So let's check them. In the message, I have message, mine, and create. In logs, I have API logs, logs, mine, and I have odd. So let's test them. The first thing is, let's open our database again and you know what, let's connect our database again and check it. So in the databases, in user management, tables, let's check roles. Okay, select top 1000. Okay, roles are empty. And if you check the users, users is empty. Then let's check the message. Empty. Let's check the logs. Yeah, yeah, it's empty. Let's check the user roles. Well, everything is empty. That's good. Let's continue. So let's go back to our controller. So this is the odd controller. First, let's check the seed roles. Try it. Execute. Okay. 201 role seeding done successfully. That's so good. And if I check my database again and I go to the roles and select it again, you can see that I have four roles in my database. Admin, manager, user, owner. That's so good. And if I again go here and try it again, you can see that I'm receiving role seeding is already done because we have done it already. And if I execute it again, you can see that I don't have any duplicate role. That's so good. So let's minimize this and continue. The seeding is done. The next uh, API road is register. So let's register a new user. The first user would be me. So I say, let me zoom it a little. So Muhammad, for the last name, I will pass Tahiri. Good. For the username, I use Muhammad. And for the email, I use Muhammad at let's say tmail.com for the password i simply paste it three times to be easy for the address i for example let's say london second event it's not important it's just a test so let's execute and see the result well 201 user created successfully that's so good so let's go and check our database to see so if i go to the users you can see that Muhammad Tahiri is created with this data. That's so good. And also, if we go to the user roles, you can see that this user ID has this role ID. This is a many-to-many -many table because the relation of the users and the roles are a many-to-many -many relation. So the user ID and the role ID would be saved in the user roles. This is it. Let's check the logs. Select top 1000. Okay, so you can see that we have a log for Mamad. Description is registered to website, and this is the time, and this is the created time, update time, and is active is true, one, is deleted is false, or zero. So for the owner, you just need to manually change the role. Let's do this. So for now, let's check the user roles again. Select top 1000. So you can see that this user ID, which is me, has the role ID, which starts with D93 and ends with 78. 
let's go to the rows you know what let's close everything okay again roles and user roles okay so the role start with d ends with seven eight okay d d d it's it d seven eight it is user so by the default every reg new register user has the user role i want to change this uh, owner manually so and only the owner would be manually changed in the database and this is what is performed in the real world project but the other roles can be changed in the software so let's do this so you can see that the id of the user is this and the id of owner is this so let's copy the id of this owner here and go to the user roles and edit it so in the user roles let's edit top 200 roles and here, this is the user ID and this is the role ID. So I delete this and I will uh, paste it here and I press enter. So it must be changed. Let's close it. And again, let's execute. Okay, this time you can see that for this user, I have the role of F and it ends with 69. Let's check F69. So you can see that it is owner. So it means that no, I am owner because in the user roles table i have the access of this owner id that's it but in the logs let's check it we don't have a log of it because we change it manually here now let's go to the front end and check it so i must be able to log in and before that let's check it again so can can i register with this username of mamad let's execute no 409 username already exists so this is good it means that we don't have a duplicate username in this system. So let's check the login. So I say the username is Mamad and the password is this Mam. Uh, let's, you know what, let's check this M for the password and execute and see the result. 401, your credentials are invalid. That's good. It says that your username or your password is invalid. So let's test the real. Username and real password and execute where you see that it is 200 and we receive a token and also we receive the user info, my ID, my first name, last name, username, email, created at and roles. That's so good. And we can decode this token. Let me show you that. We have a website. So this is jwt.io, you can copy your JWT token, so let's copy it from here. And if I paste the, here, you can see that the algorithm of it and the type of it. And here is your payload. So you can see that my claims name is Mamad, my claims name identifier or my ID is this, my first name is Mohammed, last name is Tahiri, and my claims role is owner, and I have this, expired time and the creation time valid issuer and valid audience so i have everything in my token that's so good so you can see that my role is owner this is so good let's close it so we can log in with this in order to have access to the protected resources we need to send this Token in our request headers. In uh, a standard way, you cannot send these headers. You can see that we cannot send any headers here. So you need to use Postman or you need to have a way to send the headers in this uh, swagger. In my previous authentication tutorial, I used Postman and I showed you that, how you can send your headers with Postman. But in this tutorial, I want to show you that, how you can send your uh, headers using swagger. It is a good way to test it. So let's close this and go back to Visual Studio. Let's go to the program.cs. So here you can do that. Let's go here and here we have builder.services.endpointsapiexplorer. Then we have builder.services.addswaggergenerator and here we can do that. So let's Go here and we receive the option. That's it. So for the options, we can pass at some security. 
definition to it. So the name would be bearer and we pass a new open API security schema to it. And for this schema, we can have some different configuration. For example, for the name, we can use authorization. We can have in parameter location dot header. That's it. And also let's create a description for it. Let me paste it here. Please enter your token with this format. Bearer space your token. That's it. And after this, let's have a type for it. The type would be security schema type dot API key. And the bearer format would be JWT. And also the schema would be bearer. After this, let's have another configuration. So for the options, you can add security requirement. So we have a definition and a requirement. So for the requirement, let's add a new open API security requirement and we need to open object and also in this object, let's open another object with new open API security schema and instead of that, we can use the name bearer in parameter location dot header reference open API reference and let's open another object so id bearer and for the type we use reference type dot security schema that's it and also after the second curly brace let's add a new list of a string that's it so here we have a parenthesis so we need to close it and that's it you don't need to memorize this. You can simply copy paste this from the document and that's it. So I think it's completed. And also let's add the course policy handler. So after this app and after this is development, we have the app that use HTTPS redirection. So after this or before this, let's use App dot use course to avoid the course policies and we use the options and we say that options dot allow any header dot allow any method dot allow any origin that's it so this will help us to avoid course policy errors So I think everything is good. Let's test it again. See, can we send the token or no? Well, this time you can see that we have this authorization and we have this uh, key here, this uh, lock here. It says that you can send token to this uh, HTTP rows or from here you can uh, have the general token in your request. So let's log in again. So try it. I say, Mamad. One, two, three, execute. Okay, I received this token. Let's copy this token and go to this authorize. And here we need to send this in our request. So this is the format I'm showing you that you need to use bearer space your token. So let's type bearer space and control V to paste it, authorize. Now we are sending them. Let's close. No, let's check one of them. For example, uh, let's check the logs of me, try it, execute. Well, this time you can see that I have access to it. Let me show you that what happened. So if I right click and inspect, let's go to the networks. Let's send a request again. Let me zoom to show you that. Okay, I say, let's say API logs mine. So I will execute. So you can see that I have a new request. Let's click on this. You can see that. In the headers, I say that my request URL is localhost port 7237 slash API slash log slash mine. And in the request headers, I'm sending this authorization, which is a bearer space and this token. And now you can see that my 
uh, request is successful and I have access to this. So let's close this and now let's minimize art and logs and message. Let's test here. So for the public, you know that everyone have access to it. So okay, let's test the user role. For this, you need to have the user access. You can see that it is 403. If I log out, let me show you that. If I use this logout, I don't have any uh, token in my request header. So let's minimize this and use get user role. So if I execute, you can see that it says 401. It means that you need to log into the server to have access. Also, this would be happen to the manager role because they are all protected. But uh, if I use my token, the error space token and authorize and close. Now you can see that. If I go here to the get user role, the request and the response, the status code will be 403. It means that I don't have access to this role. So let's test manager role. Again, 403. Let's test admin role. Again, 403. But we know that we have the owner access. Okay, 200 owner role data. It seems that our functionality is working correctly. That's so good. So let's go to the message and see the message of me. Execute. Well, an empty array. I don't have any message. Let's see all messages. You know that as an owner, we have access. We don't have any message. Good. So let's again go back to the logs. This time, let's check the log of me. Well. You can see that the username, this is the slash mine. You can see that I am the man at this username. So I have registered to website and new login and new login. So this is it. But let me show you that if I, let's go to the art and login and again, copy my token. If I use this slash art slash me and if I try it and I send my token here and execute, well, you can see I have a new token and new data. This time, let's check my logs. Execute. Well, you can see that I have a new log which says new token generated. So it seems that our tokens and uh, our authorization system works correctly. Now, let's log out. Okay. Let's create some users. Let's first, let's refresh. Okay. So in the register, let's try it. So the first name is one. And this is just a test. And one username is user one. Email is user one at user one.com. Password is this. Address is user one. Address. So execute. Well. User created successfully. Let's create two. Execute. Well, created. Good. Let's create three. Execute. Okay, user created. So we created some users. Let's go to the art users and let's check what users do we have. So we have a user two with access of user, user one with access of user, Mamad with the role of owner. And user 3 with user. That's good. Now we can work on our functionalities. But before that, let me stop the video and create uh, some different users to show you. So I created some more users. So let's execute. And you know what? Let's copy the URL and go to a new tab. It's better to see them here. Okay, so you can see that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 users. That's good. So let's work on them. I have user 6, user 2, and user 1, user 5, Mamad, user 3, user 9, 7, 8, and 4. This is good. No, let's. Okay, we are not logged in. So let's log into the website using one of them. For example, user 1. Control C, Control Execute, and we receive the token. Good. Let's copy this and use the error space and this token. Authorize, close. 
No, we logged into the server using a user role. Let's check. So let's go to the logs. And first thing is, let's see, can we have access to logs? No, we receive 403 because we are not owner or admin. But if I say logs mine, we can say that for my user, I have the register to website and also a new login. That's so good. And also, let's check here. So, you know that we have access to the public. Okay. This time I have the user access. Let's test it. Okay. User or data, we have access. But for the manager, let's test it. 403, we don't have access. Good. Let's test admin. We don't have access. 403. Let's test owner. 403, we don't have access. So good. So it seems that the user role is working correctly that's good no let's log out and let's log in with my username of owner so login mamad copy one two three execute okay let's use my token you know that i am owner you can see my role the error space this authorize close okay no can i have access to the logs you can say it was for three for that user but no yes i have access because i have the owner access i can see all logs of the system that's good so let's change the role of user one so he can go to the update role and try it. for the new username i say for the user one, I want to change its role to admin. Can we do this? Let's execute 200. Role updated successfully. Let's refresh in and check the user one. So user one. Now you can see that the role of user one is admin. Good. Let's change the user two to a manager. Execute. Role updated successfully. Let's check. This is user two. If I refresh, now you can see that this is user two. So no user one is admin and user 2 is manager so good let's check them one by one log out okay so let's log in with user 1 you know that user 1 is an admin so let's receive the token and send it here a space token authorize close okay now i have admin access let's test my logs Okay, you can see that I have the register to website and new login and user role updated and new login. That's so good. Can we have access to logs? Yes, we have because we are admin now. And that's good. So let's check this. So no, I don't have any access to this user because I own, I'm the admin and the manager. I don't have access for the admin. I have access. So good. And for the owner, we don't have access. Execute 403. So good. And that's it. So you saw that we can work on everything. And also, let's check that. Can an admin change the role of an owner? For example, I know that I'm an admin. So if I go to the update roles and if I reset, so for the username of Mamad, we know that Mamad is owner. Let's see, can we change this Mamad to an user? Let's execute 403. You are not allowed to change role of this user. That's so good. It seems that our business logic is working correctly. So uh, let's test the manager. So log out. So who is the manager? The manager is user 2. Let's test the user 2 and log in. Reset. So user 2. Let's execute and receive this token. Authorize. Bearer space authorize close okay no let's check the logs of this user too so you can see that registered to website role updated new login that's good do we have access to the logs as a manager no we don't have access let's test the roles of the test controller so public everyone have access for the user role we don't have access because we are manager. For the manager, do we have access? Yes, that's good. For the admin role, we don't have access. For the owner, we don't have access. That's so good. So 
we check the user and the manager and the admin and the owner accesses. No, and also we check the test controller, the logs controller, and the auth controller. And also let's check the all of the usernames. Execute. Well, you can see list of all of them. No, finally let's check the message. So who am I? I logged in with the user two. So let's go to the message and we can we see our message. Oh, it's 200 but it's empty. Let's create a new message. So I want to send a message. Who is the receiver? I, I set something random to test it. The text is hello. Okay. Hello. Let's send and see the result. Well, we receive 400. It says receiver username is not valid. That's so good. So let's use a valid username. For example, Mamad and execute. So message saved successfully. That's good. Close it and check our message. Well, this time you can see that I have a new message. I have ID, sender is user2, receiver is mama, text is hello, and case that is the time of creation. That's it. So, let's create a new one. For example, to user1, hello, user1. Execute. So, message saved. That's good. Now, if you go to the mine says mine you can see that we have two messages so this is the sender which is me and this is the receiver which is user one that's so good so let's close them and log out and let's log in with user one to see the result so user one execute login we receive the token let's use the error space this token authorize close now let's check the message of me. okay mine well you can see that i have a new message so sender is user 2 and the receiver is me user 1 and this is the text and this is the time that's so good now let's see do we have access to the all message let's try it execute 200 yes it seems that we have access to all message let's check that what was the authorization of this message so let's go to the controller and message controller and here we have access of owner admin but i think yeah we have user one i think we change user one yeah user one is admin we have access of course because the user one is admin we have access to it because we change the role of our user so if you go to the logs of mine you can see that the role of this user is updated and now let's check the login result again you can see that the role is admin so the admin has access to all messages that's good so let's test one regular user for example user 3 let's log in with user 3 and before that let's send a message to mama so let's Reset so the username of receiver is Mamad. I say hello Mamad and execute. Well, 200 message saved. That's so good. Let's log out. Let's log in again. Reset. Okay, log in with user 3 that we know is a regular user. Execute. Receive the token. Control C. Authorize. The error space, this, and authorize. Close. Okay. No, we are a user. And again, you know what? Let's reset. And let's see the message of mine. Okay. My message is empty. Nobody has sent message to me or I sent any message. So let's check access to message for OTD. Because we are a simple user. We don't have access to it. Let's create a new message. For example, I want to send a message to user. Let's say user 6. And hello user six execute well message saved successfully. Now if I go to the message of mine, I have this message from user three to user six. That's good. Let's log out and for the 
I think for the final test, let's use the Mamad. You know that this username has owner role. Execute. Okay. You can see that this is owner. Let's authorize using here space and authorize and close. Okay. No. Let's go to the message and check all messages. You can see that we are, as an owner, we have access to all messages. For example, from user 3 to user 6, from user 1 to Mahmoud, from user 2 to user 1, from user 2 to Mahmoud. Good. And what is my message? My message would be on my username. So I'm a receiver here. Also here I'm a receiver. And if I send a message to, for example, user 8, and I say hello user 8, execute, message saved, that's good. And if I execute my users, my user message, you can see that I have this message that I'm a sender, but here I'm a receiver and here I'm a receiver. That's so good. And also let's check that can be access all messages. Yes. So let's refresh and close this. So we checked API auth seed roles, we checked the register, login, we saw update role, we saw me, and again, let's see, do we, can we have, I check this token, yes, you can see that for me, it says that this is your new token, so when we pass a token to it, it will receive a new, it will send a new token to us, that's so good, with our users, we will use this data in our front end project. That's good. We checked this user's load, so let's try it. I'm not protecting this because this is a tutorial, but you can simply protect it. How? You can simply go to the controller, which is art controller, and here for the, let's find it, users. Here you can simply use an annotation like this and protect that. So good. So this is the user. It's working. The users with username. Let's try it. For example, user4. Execute 100. Okay, you can see that we are receiving uh, data of a user by its username. Also, we can receive just the username. We will use the use this list for sending new messages in our front end project. That's good. We check the log, so we have all logs. You can see that I uh, I am receiving 401, and because I am not authenticated, let's okay. Let's use Login. Check that for the final time. Mamad. One, two, three. Execute. Okay, I am receiving a new token. Authorize. The other space. This token. Authorize. Close. Okay. Now let's check the logs. Okay, you can see all logs of our system. That's good. And also I can see my logs because I'm a user. I can see my logs, which is filtered by my username. Good. I can see message of all users of system as an owner. You can see all of the messages. And also I can see the message that is sent by me or received. Here I'm the sender and here I'm receiver and here I'm receiver. That's good. And also we checked all of these tests. So this was the backend project and we implemented anything we wanted. Let's refresh. So in the next section of this uh, tutorial, we will implement all of these functionalities in uh, React project and we will test them with more details. Now let's work on the front-end project. In order to create a new React project, you can use Create React App Package, but Wit is a better approach and it's a better tool for creating your new React project. So let's use Wit. Here you can see that I'm on Wit.js.dev. Let's go to the Get Started. And here you can see that in order to create a new project using NPM, we can use NPM Create Wit at latest. So let's do this. And let's open our folder and in drive F you saw that I created user management full stack and inside of that I created this backend.net 7 project. Here I want to create a new project. So let's open a new terminal or a new command here. I simply open a git patch here. That's it. Let's zoom a little. 
and let's install it. So the command is npm create with at latest. So let's install it. In first step, we need to select a name. So I type frontend react ts. That's it. This is for my name. Then we need to select a framework. I choose react. You can see that we have some options. So I use react with TypeScript, the first option. That's it. And you can see that the scaffolding is done. That's it. So let's close this. And you can see that the folder of front and React TS is created. Let's right click on it and open with VS Code. So this is our new project. And in this project, we don't have the node modules yet. So let's install them. Let's open a new terminal here. You can see that I'm on the slash frontend react TS. So here we need to say npm i and we need to wait for it to be installed. And you can see that node module is here and our, our packages are installed. That's good. Let's open the package.json to see it. So you can see that this is a new project and here in the dependencies, we have React and React DOM. And also, here you can see that we have TypeScript and Width and ESLint and other dependencies. That's good. So let's have a little configurations here. So in the scripts and in the dev, after Width, I want to have a space and then I use dash dash port. And here you can use any port you want. For example, I, would, I want to use 3000. So this is it. And uh, after this, let's clear here, clear. I want to install some npm package in our project. So let's install them. I will use npm i. The first package would be at sign hook form slash resolvers. And let's have a space and then install axios and also chart.js. And also let's use moment. And after this, I want to use react-chart.js-2. And also, let's install the React hook form. So this is React hook form. Then let's have the React hot toast. And after that, let's have the React icons. And after that, let's install React router DOM. And also, yeah. So let's check them one by one. So we need to install at sign hook form slash resolvers, then axios, then chart.js, moment. React chart JS2, React hook form, React hot toast, then React icons and React browser down and yeah. So let's press enter to install them. We need all of them in our project. And they are installed. Let's open our package.json again. So you can see that in the dependencies, they are all installed and you can see them. So in order to use them, first we install them here using npm i and the name of the package and they are installed. After this, I want to install the Tailwind CSS and config it in my project. Tailwind CSS is a good uh, package that helps you a lot. So let's do this. Let's go to the Tailwind.css and here go to the get started. And here you can see that there are some different options and here we want to use the framework guide. So this is it, the framework guide. Let's move this a little, okay. So in the frameworks guide, but let's go to the width and here it says that first you need to install a new project using npm create width and this and then cd. Okay, then you need to run this uh, command npm install dash d tailing css post css auto prefixer. Let's copy this and go to the terminal and paste it. Let's press enter. So npm install dash d telling CSS, post CSS and auto prefixer. Let's wait for it to be installed. Okay, they are installed. So we use npm install dash d these three packages. Dash D means that we need to install them as dev dependencies. So let's open package.json again and go to the dev dependencies. And here you must see the post CSS and auto prefixer and tailwind. So tailwind, post CSS, and also we need to have auto prefixer. So they are installed. That's good. 
let's go back to the tailing CSS document and here it says that after this you need to use npx tailing CSS init dash p so let's copy this and go back to our terminal let's say clear and then paste it npx tailing CSS init dash p and this command will create two files for us tailwind.config.js and postcss.config.js and you can see them postcss.config and also tailwind.config so let's go back to the uh, document again and see the next step so in next step it says that you need to use this content inside of tailwind.config.js so let's copy this array from here I copy this and go to the tailwind.config and paste it here okay let's use format document that's good let's go back to document again so after this step it says that you need to copy these three directives into one of your global CSS files for example index.css so I will copy these three lines and I will go here let's close tailing css and post css config okay let's go to the src and here the first step is we delete after css we don't need it anymore and also let's go to the after ts6 and delete everything and go to the index.css and delete everything and paste these three lines tailwind base tailwind component and tailwind utilities that's good now we have them and uh, the next step is let's go back to the document and see it the next thing is we can run our project and we can now use the tailwind css classes like text large and the other classes so let's go back here and uh, we created them inside of index.css that's good let's go to the app.ts6 here i want to create a new component and use it so i installed some extensions let me show you that so if i go to the extensions and i search es7 plus i have this extension and this allows me to create some component using rafc and other commands so this is it you can use it also i'm using prettier let me show you that and i'm using this prettier code formatter and by using that you can see that i can simply use this format document and my document will be formatted automatically so let's go to the app.ts6 we deleted everything now i want to create a new component let's use rafce and i created a new component here so this is just an app and let's use some tailwind css class names for example bg red and padding of eight and uh, i want to show you that i have another useful extensions of tailwind this is it tailwind css intellisense this uh, extension allows you to have some code snippets and you can see that it suggests me for example if i press m it suggests me m0 m1 and the others this is it so this is my app and i'm using bg red of let's say 500 and if i use format document you can see that my document will be formatted automatically so now let's run our project using npm run dev to check the tailwind css config and here you can see that my project is running on port localhost 3000 because in the uh, package.json here we say that if I use npm run dev you need to run with, with this port so my project is on this port let's open it well you can see that I have padding and I have this bg red so this says that my tailwind classes is working correctly that's good let's go back to our project and minimize this terminal so let's close package.json and also app.ts6 so here we are on the index.css and we install the uh, required uh, package and the required configurations for using tailwind css after this i want to have some reusable classes here to show you so let's have some spaces between these we can use some custom classes here inside of this index.css using at sign apply and also at sign layer so let's use it i assume that you are familiar with tailing but if you are not it's not a problem you can simply just copy paste these codes from my github so we can use at sign layer of base and we say that for the layer of base for the body tag 
I want to have some classes and in order to use the tail in CSS classes here we can simply use at sign apply so I say that the minimum height of a screen must be used for the body in the base layer and also I want to use a simple PG gray of 100 for my body this is it so I want to use this class for my body now if I press format document you can see that it formatted automatically and let's cut this space so in the tailwind components layer we want to have some other classes so let's use at sign layer of components inside of this I want to have some different classes and selectors so the first thing is I want to have a selector of input and I want to have some classes for it after that I want to have some classes for example for the page template one and also page template two and also page template three so I want to have some reusable classes and use them inside of my project this is a good solution to do it inside of the main layer of your CSS but you can simply copy paste this from my github let's close this and implement them so the first thing is this uh, input and for this input I want to have some general classes for example I can use at sign apply to use the tailwind classes then I can use a width of full and also an outline of known and I use border and border gray of 200 and also I use padding x of 2 and padding y of 1 and also I use rounded off lg so these classes would be used in all inputs of my project by default this is it so after this I want to have the some classes for my page uh, template so let's have at sign apply then we can have width of full and also for the lg size we use width of 4 divided by 5 so this is the 80 percent let's put however the most on it you can say this is a width of 8 80 percent then we use minimum height of calculate of 100 view height minus 48 pixels so this 48 pixel would be used for our site header this is it and after this minimum height we can use flex and also we can use justify of center and align items of center with padding of 4 and margin x of auto again we don't want to type all of these you can simply copy paste them from my github and that's it so after that I have the page template of 2 and here let's have some different classes and we use the at sign apply with padding of 4 and also width of full and again that minimum height because we want to use 48 pixel for our header and then we use flex and we use flex column and gap of 4 then we didn't want to have another page template so let's use this at sign apply copy pasting is a good idea in your project it's not a problem then let's use width of full and also height of full and padding of four and flex and also flex of column and justify of start and align items of center and also we use gap of two with bg of white and border of two and rounded off lg so this is it we created some different classes and we can use them in all of our projects so let's format the document and i think it's okay and it's done so let's close index.css and see what we can do in the next step so we created uh, the configurations of our tailwind css and after that you can create our folders and our files and implement our functionalities so let's start by creating our folder structure always you need to have good folder structure for your project it's really important to keep your project clean and maintainable so let's do this we have src and inside of this src i want to have some different folders so let's create them for example the first thing is inside of this src i want to have an asset but the assets is created by you can see that the assets is created by default with uh, with but if you are using cra package you need to you need to create these assets for yourself but because this assets is created by default with width i don't create it again so after this asset inside of src we need to create a new folder for our auth 
we implement the add functionality inside of this folder. Let's close the asset folder then. Inside of src, let's create another folder. After add, we need to have components. This is it. And inside of these components, we need to have some different components. Let's have some uh, folders for them. For example, let's have a dashboard. Inside of the component, we created this dashboard. Again, inside of the component, let's have a general folder for our general components. And then I'm clicking on this component to create the folder inside of it. Also, you can right click on the component and here you can create new file or new folder. So again, I'm using the new folder with this right click. After this, I want to have a layout folder. So inside of components, I created dashboard general layout. Let's close this component and go back to SRC. And here inside of this SRC, we created components. Then we want to have the hooks. And after that, let's click again on SRC. So after the hooks, we want to have some pages. This is a good solution to uh, have separate folders for your page and your components. You will see that later on the next uh, sections that why this is important to have separate folder for your page. So we created page. Inside of page, I want to have two different type of page. So let's have a dashboard folder inside of page. And also, let's create a new folder inside of page and use a public. So we will have two different type of page, some public pages and some protected pages. So we created this folder for now, then we will work with them. So inside of the pages, we created dashboard and also public. So let's minimize this and click on the SRC again. So after the pages, I want to have a routes folder for configurations of my React Router DOM and my routes. This is good. So let's click on SRC again. After the routes, I want to have another folder for the types because I'm using TypeScript. It's a good idea to have some types and we will create a folder of types and we will keep all of the types inside of this folder. That's good. So after the types, let's create another folder. So after types, I want to have a utils and we will keep our utility functions here inside of this folder. So let's have a quick overview of what we have done in the folder structure creation phase. So we have the assets. It is created by default with width, but if you are using CRA, you need to create this for your assets, like fonts and images and the others. So after that, I have the art, and then I have a components folder inside of the components. We have dashboard and general and layout. Then we have these hooks. Then we have pages. And inside of the pages, I have dashboard and I have public. Then I have the roads folder. Then the types folder. And also then utils folder. So this is the folder structure. We want to use it. And if we need another folder, we will create them and use them later. So let's minimize everything and continue. In next step, I want to create the page and I want to show you that what is the page we are going to use in this project. So we will create all of them first to see the overall uh, view of our project. So let's go to the SRC and here let's go to the pages. Inside of pages, I have dashboard and public. So let's create some files inside of them. For example, inside of the dashboard, I want to create a new file named adminpage.tsx. This is it. And here, let's use RAFCE. And this is the page of admin. Let's delete this React. We don't need it for now. And close this. So this was the first one. And then let's right click and create a new file. And we use all message page.tse. So this is the next page. Let's use RAFCE. And let's delete this React. We don't need it for now. Let's close it. So this is it. Now we have the admin page and all message page. Let's create another one. The next one is dashboard page.tsx. And let's use RAFCE. Good. Let's delete this React. And let's close it. Then let's create a new file with name of inbox page.tsx. 
and again let's use our AFCE and let's delete this and also close this page and after that let's go back to the dashboard and right click and create a new file and this time we want to create a manager page.tsx and let's use our AFCE delete this react and close the manager page after that let's create a new file inside of dashboard and paste the name of it mylogspage.tsx you can simply copy paste this name this name from my github repo the link of it would be on the video description so let's press enter and let's use rfc by the way the focus of me in this tutorial is on the security aspect of it so you can copy a lot of codes from the repository and come with me to see how i'm using them so let's delete this and we created my logs page let's create the next one so right click on the dashboard new file with name of owner page.tsx and rafce let's delete this react and close this page and then let's go to the dashboard right click new file and then we create send message page .tsx and let's create the component using rafc and delete this react and close it then let's go to the dashboard and create a new file with name of system logs page .tsx and use rafce then let's delete this react we don't need it and also let's close this file then let's right click and create the update role page .tsx and use rafce and let's delete this react and let's close it then let's create a new page so new file with name of user page .tsx and let's use rafce and let's delete this react and also let's close it then let's go here and create a new file with name of users management page tsx and let's use rafce so let's what was this let's delete this react and also close it so we created some different files inside of the dashboard and this would be our page so after this let's close this dashboard for now and then let's work on this public so let's right click on it and create a new file with name of home page tsx and inside of that i use rafce again and i delete this react and let's close it then i want to create a new file here and i want to create a login page tsx and let's use rafce and delete react and let's close it and continue then let's have a new file inside of public with name of not found page tsx so you can see that i'm creating all of my pages in the initial stage of our tutorial to show you that this is the structure that you want to use so let's delete that react and close this file for now and now let's right click on the public and create a new file with name of register page tsx and rafce and delete this react and close it let's create the next one which is on authorized page tsx so let's create the component of it using rafc and delete this react and close it so let's minimize everything and check it so inside of src and pages we have dashboard and also we have public so let's show it better so we created all of these admin page that tsx all messages page dashboard page inbox page manager page my logs page owner page send message page system logs page update role page user page user management page and inside of the public we created home page login page not found page register page and authorized page so we created all the pages we want and we will use them later in our project so let's minimize this uh, dashboard and public and let's close these pages for now and let's go to the next section for the next step i want to create a new file inside of this routes and i will use the name of paths dot 
TS. So I want to have some path inside of my project. Let's minimize this again. So let's create some path inside of our file and then we can use them in all of our projects. So let's create it. So we create an export const of the path of public, which equals an object. And inside this object, we can have a home path, which can be the slash road. So this is the road of public for our home. Then we can have a public path for the register, which can be a slash register. And now we can see the idea. So the next one is the login. And for the login, you want to have a slash login path or a slash login road. And after that, for the unauthorized, I want to have a slash unauthorized. And also after that, let's have a not found, which can be a slash 404. So this is the path of public. And you can see that this is a simple object. And we can use this object in all of our projects. So let's use format document. So this is the path of public. Let's uh, copy. Or you know what? Let's minimize it and then continue. So after this, I want to create an export const of path dashboard, which again equals an object. So here I want to have a, a dashboard path which equals to a slash dashboard. Then I want to have a users management path which equals to a slash dashboard a slash users management and we'll use it. After that I want to have an update role path which uh, can be a slash dashboard a slash update role a slash colon username and you know that when we are using drag browser down this can be a parameter when we're using a colon which says that after this colon we are using a parameter which is username after this i want to have another path which is send message and its value can be a slash dashboard a slash send message so everywhere you use path dashboard dot send message it would be a slash dashboard a slash send message let's continue and after this send message you want to have an inbox which equals to a slash dashboard a slash inbox after that i want to have all messages which is a slash dashboard a slash all messages and also let's have a system logs which equals to a slash dashboard a slash system logs and then i want to have a my logs which is a slash dashboard a slash my logs then let's have an owner which is a slash dashboard a slash owner and also admin again a slash dashboard a slash admin and a manager which is a slash dashboard a slash manager and also let's have a user which is a slash dashboard a slash user so this is it let's format our document now you can see that this is a good idea so i created some path inside of this path.ts and i will use them in all of my project everywhere i want to use some path of my project i can simply use this for example path dashboard dot dashboard or path dashboard dot inbox or for example path public dot login or path public dot register and I think this is a good idea to use this. So this is it. Now let's close it and go to the next step. Let's minimize everything. In next step, let's go to the SRC and inside of this util, I want to create a new file with name of globalconfig.ts. We want to have some configurations for our project, you can use .env file or you can use this globalconfig.ts and you can use anything you want. So because this is just a simple tutorial, I use globalconfig.ts and here I want to have some configurations for my project. So in first step, let's import path of dashboard and path of public from roads slash path. We created them and we use them here and in all of our projects. So here I want to have some URLs for my project. For the first one, let's have an export const of host API key, which equals to HTTPS localhost port 7237 slash API. So this is the host API key of our backend. You can use any name for it, or you can use this in the end file. I will put all of them here, but you can use it in end file. So after this, let's have another one. For example, the name can be the register underline URL, which can be slash auth slash register. So we can use, if you want to register someone on the backend, you can use, see that you can use host API key plus register URL and we will use it. You can see that on the next part. So let's create the next ones. So after the register on the line URL, I want to have an export const of login URL, which equals to a slash auth slash login. And also I want to have export const of 
me url which equals to slash art slash me so you saw these on the backend project you can see that we are using all of them here and you want to send some requests to them so we create the url of them here and we use this on the pages and the other functions so after this let's have another export const of users list url which equals to slash art slash users and after this let's have some export const of update role url which equals to slash art slash update role after that i want to have another export const of usernames list url which equals to slash art slash usernames and also let's have export const of all messages url which equals to slash messages after this let's have another one for the create message url which equals to slash message slash create and also let's have another one for the my message url which equals to slash message slash mine and then i want to have a, a logs url with the value of slash log so this is the route of uh, logs url and after that let's have another one for the my logs url which equals to slash logs slash my so this is some urls and you can use them inside of your project after this let's have another one for the auth route and here I want to have an export const of path after register which equals to path underline public dot login and also I want to have another one with path after login which equals to path of dashboard dot dashboard and also let's have another one with the export const of path after logout which equals to path of public dot home so let's have a format document and close this and uh, see what we have so this is the urls you can see that this is the urls of our back end but this is the global configuration so here we config the routes of our auth so we say that after the register this is the route we want to use this is path of public dot login and you can see that this is coming from this path of public so if you go here so path of public dot login is a slash login so by using this in all of our project when we use path after register it would be this path of public dot login and if you want to change it in all of our project instead of uh, changing them one by one in all of our project files and folders we can simply change it here and it would be updated in all of our project also we have path after login which is path of dashboard dot dashboard and path after logout which is path public dot home so here you can say that what is your path after the register and login and logout and we will use them so i think it's completed let's close this global config and pass the ts and go to the next step in this step i want to create a new file for our axios instance so let's go to the utils and here i want to create a new file for the name of it i use axios instance again you can simply copy paste this file from my github repo so let's create it and here let's create a const of axios instance which equals to axios let's press ctrl space it is not importing let's press ctrl dot again it's not working so let's import it so import axios from axios that's it no axios is imported so let's use axios dot create and we can simply export default this axios this is it. so why we are using this because here we can use a base url and some interceptor so let's create it inside this axios that create we can pass an object to it and here if i press ctrl space you can see that i have a lot of configurations i want to use a base url for it base url and this base url can be the host api key so this host api key is from global config let's check it again this is host api key so if i use axios instance in my project its base url would be this host api key which is this that's so good and you can use it in all of our project after this we can use interceptors and interceptors would be run inside of our uh, request and responses and it will affect on all of our requests and responses and we have control over it so let's use it so I say axios instance dot the interceptors response I want to use this and what is this inside of this the first thing is we can have a response and we say that 
if you have the response you can simply return this response and you don't want to change it on the success situations but if you have an error this is important for us so if you have an error we can simply return a promise that reject that's it so inside of this promise i want to check that if the error that response exists so we use this uh, response error that response and error that response else we can simply return a single string like general axios error happened so what is this this is a promise that reject and we want to use the error that response because when we are using axios we have a big object but we want to use its uh, response directly inside of our catch block so this is it and you will see this when we are working with the uh, axios instance so let's use a format document and let's close this explorer so this is it so what we have done in this step we created uh, axios instance which requires to axios.create with base url of host api key and also we export defaulted it but before that we use this axios instance that interceptors that response that used and we use the response and in the case of a successful response we simply return the response we don't want to change it but if we have an error we can simply return a promise that reject and inside of this we will reject this so we check that if error that response exists we return the error that response else we return general axios error happen that's it so let's find the document and i think it's okay for this section so let's close it and go to the next step before continuing to the next step let's go back to our file of axios instance here we have a problem so here we must export default this axios instance not the axios so let's copy this axios instance and paste it here no it is true so we create an axios instance and we will export default it no let's use format document and close it and no let's go to the next step so let's close everything and continue in next step let's create some types and some interfaces for our project so let's go to the src and we created this types folder here so here we need to create some files let's right click on it and add a new file here the first file would be message.type.ts and here we can create some types and some interfaces and use them so i will export the, in, an interface with name of i send message dto and it would be an object and inside of i send message dto I want to have a receiver username with type of a string and also I want to have a text of a type of a string for I send message DTO. So let's format the document and we will use this in our project. So let's go to the uh, next line and here I can export an interface with name of I message DTO and this one I want to use this I send message DTO so I can simply use extends I send message DTO to inherit this receiver username and text and let's create an object for it and inside of this i message dto i want to have an id with type of number and also i want to have a sender username with type of a string and also a created at with type of a string so let's format our document again so this is the message that types the ts file and we created the required interfaces for our application first we have i send message dto with these two fields then we have this i message d2 and we extend from this i send message so we will have receiver username and text and id and send a username and also create that so let's close this uh, message of types and go to the next one for the next one let's right click on the types and create a new file with name of log.types.ts and this is for the log so we can export an interface with name of I log DTO and this interface is an object as you know inside of that we can have a created at which is a string and also we can have a username with type of a string and also let's have a description with type of a string so let's format the document and this is the log the type the TS here I simply use this I log DTO interface that's it so let's uh, close this and create a new one so let's right click and create a new file with name of 
art.types.ts and here we can create some interfaces the first one would be export of interface of i register dto which is an object and inside of this register dto i want to have some different fields like first name which can be type of a string and also a last name with type of a string and also a username with type of a string and an email with type of a string and also a password with type of a string and also an address with type of a string so this is i register dto and we will use it in all of our application let's format document and minimize it and go to the next one after that we will export an interface with name of i login dto which can be an object and for this i login dto we just need to use the username with type of a string and also a password with type of a string that's it for login it is uh, i think it is enough so let's format the document and minimize it and go to the next one the next one would be an export of interface of i update role dto which is an object and for updating our role we need the dto with username with type of stream and also we need a new role with type of stream that's it this is enough for the updating our role let's format my document and minimize this and go to the next one the next one would be an export of interface of i art user which is an object so what we need for the art user we need some different fields like id with type of string and also a first name of a string and also a last name of a string and also a username again with type of a string and after username we can have an email with type of a string and also when created add we will receive it as a string and also we want to have some roles and for this we will use an array of a string so this is for the i art user and let's format my document and minimize it and go to the next one the next one would be an export of interface of this time we want to have a dto for our response of the login so i want to have a i login response dto again this is an object and inside of this object we want to have a new token with the type of a string and also we want to have a user info but for this user info i want to use this I art user interface that we created here. So you can see that we are reusing this I art user, and this is a good idea. So let's format the document and minimize it and go to the next one. The next interface would be an export interface of I art context state because we want to use some states in our context. And this is an object, and inside of that, we can have an uh, is authenticated with type of Boolean. And also we can have is art loading with type of boolean and after that we can have a user which is an optional you can see that this is optional with type of i art user so this is for i art context state let's format my document and minimize it and go to the next one after that i want to have an enum so let's create an export of enum with name of i art context action types and it is a good idea to use enums in your system so let's do it and it is an object and inside of this enum we can have some different keys and values for example i want to have an initial with value of initial and also i want to have a login with value of login and also a logout with value of logout so this is an i art context action types enum and we'll use it in our context and it will make our uh, application much better and simpler to maintain and also we can uh, avoid some different typing errors so let's format the document again and minimize it and go to the next one after these types we can use an export interface of i art context action and we will use this action in our context and it is an object and inside of this object we can have a type which is an i art context action type and also we can have a payload which is an optional uh, type and it, this payload can be type of i art user so this is for i art context action let's format my document and minimize it and go to the next one the next one is really important for us so let's create it and export interface of i art context so this is the interface for our context and it is really important let's create it so it is an object and inside this object we can have some different uh, fields for example i can have an is authenticated with type of boolean 
And after that, I can have an is outloading with type of boolean, and also I can have an optional user with type of I out user. After that, I want to have a login, but this login is a function, and for this function, we can have a username with type of a string, and also we can have a password with type of a string, so we will receive username and password. And what is the return type of this login? The return type is a promise with type of void. This is it. So this is a login method. We will receive a username and a password, and we will return a promise. That's it. Let's continue. After this login method, we can have a register, and this register also is a function. And for this function, we can receive some different fields like the first name with type of string, and also last name with type of string, and a username with type of string, and also an email with type of string, and a password with type of string, and also an address with type of a string. And what will be returned by this register? Will this register will return a promise with type of void? That's it. And also after this register, we can have a logout, and this logout is a simple function that doesn't have any input and it just simply return a void. That's it. So let's uh, format uh, this document and we will use this i out context in our out context. So uh, I think it's okay. Let's minimize it and go to the next one. After i out context, I want to have an export enum for my row. So I will create this enum. With name of rows enum, you know that it is an object and we can have key and value. So for the uh, first one, I will use an owner equals to this value of owner. And after that, I want to have an admin with its value and also a manager with its string value and also a user with user value. So let's format the document. This is an enum of rows enum. We will use it in our project and it is a good idea to create it here and use it in everywhere we want in our project so let's minimize it and let's have a quick overview of what we have done in this section so we created message.types.ts with these interfaces and also we created log.types with ilogdto and then we created auth.types.ts and we created these interfaces we will use them in our project so i think it's good let's close all of them and minimize and go to the next step After creating our types, we want to work on our art. So let's create some useful files and use them in our project. The first thing is I want to create an auth.utils.ts file. So we created this art folder and inside of this art, I will create a new file with name of art.utils.ts. This is it. First, let's import the Axios instance that we created in our utils Axios instance. Then I want to create a function. So let's export a new const of set session function, which is an arrow function. And I want to use local story. So let's work on it. And inside this set session, I will receive an access token, which is the type of a string or not. So it can be null or it can be an a string. And then we want to have an if else a structure to check in this access token. And we check that if the access token exists, you want to do some operations. In the first step, we want to use local storage dot set item, and for the access token key in our local storage, we want to use this access token. And after that, I want to use this access instance that we created dot defaults dot headers dot common dot authorization, which equals to a bearer, and then an space. And after that, I'm using backtick to use JavaScript, and then. We can use the inside of the dollar sign and curly braces. We can use this access token. So the authorization uh, headers would be bearer space this token. And you saw this on our backend project and we use that in Swagger. So this is how we will set this uh, authorization header in our Axios instance. So this is it. And if the access token exists, we will do this. We will set the token and then we will set it on our uh, headers. But if the access token is not exist, what we can do? Well, we can use local storage that remove item of access token. So we delete the token from our local storage, and also we will delete the access instance that defaults that headers that command that authorization. This is it. Let's format the document. So this is the set session function. We will use it to 
handle the uh, functionality of our access token. So we will save this access token in the local storage and we will send this access token in all requests of our uh, website and we will set it in the headers of uh, authorization. This is it. So I think set session is okay. Let's minimize it and go to the next one. After set session, I want to have another function to get that session. So let's create it. I will export a const of get session which is an arrow function and instead of that it's a simple function we can simply return the local storage dot get item with the key of access to it. so you can see that we can simply set this item and also remove this item on the set session and we can get this item from this function of get session this is it let's format the document and we will use it then in our context so let's minimize these two functions and these two functions are our utilities and go to the next line after these functions let's have some helper arrays to help us managing our roles i will implement them first and then talk about them so let's uh, minimize this explorer and then we create an export const of all access roles which equals one array so here i want to have some roles to have uh, the all access role here so let's uh, use roles you know it will be imported automatically here that's good so the first thing is dot owner and after the owner i want to have the roles enum dot admin and also roles enum dot manager and also role enum dot user so you can see that we are simply using this roles enum and we can say that for the all access roles uh, we have this array and this is the array that says that if you want to access to all access roles we need to have one of these roles you must be owner or admin or manager or user let's implement the next ones and it would be easier to understand for next array let's have an export const of manager access roles which is an array and for manager access you want to have all of them except for users so let's create role enum.owner and also use role enum.admin and roles enum.manager so we use all of them except user so this that's it let's go for the next one we can export a const of admin access role which equals an array and we can use role enum.owner and roles enum.admin and after that let's export const of owner access roles which equals an array and we can simply use roles enum.owner so let's format the document and let's have a quick look on of them so you can see that we are using some different arrays and in these arrays we can say that who has access to this so for the admin access role we can say that the login user must be owner or admin for the manager access the login user must be owner or admin or manager and for example for the owner access just the owner can have access to this so this is it and you can see that the, this is a part of my business logic no, we need to specify which roles can be updated by the login user. So this is really important for us. Let's create its function. So we create an export const of a load roles for update array function. And this is an arrow function. So what is the input we want to have the login user as our optional input with type of IOT user. And then we say that the return type of it is an a string of array. And then we can simply return a new uh, values of a string of array. So we want to check that if the logged in user uh, exists and this login user dot roles dot includes roles enum dot owner. So uh, we will check that and on the both uh, true and false situation we will be, uh, return some different arrays. So if it's true, we can simply return the roles enum dot admin and roles enum dot manager and roles in dot user else we can return roles in dot manager and roles in dot user so this is it let's press ctrl space to import this i art user and it is imported that's good now let's format the document so what is this function this function helps us to update the role of another user so if the login user is owner we say that the owner can change the admin and manager and the user roles else if it is not owner he is an admin and we will say that 
the admin can change the manager and the user exactly like what we have done in our backend. This is it. So let's minimize this and go and create a comment for our new uh, function. So we need to control the owner cannot change the owner role and also the admin cannot change the owner role and the admin role. And we need to implement this functionality here. So let's create a function for it. So let's create an export const of is authorized for update role which is an arrow function and for this arrow function you want to receive the logged in user role with type of a string and also you want to receive the selected user role with type of a string and instead of that first let's create a new result variable with the value of true and then we check that if the logged in user role equals to rows enough that owner and also the selected user role equals to owner so we say that the result is false so the owner cannot change the owner. That is simple and easy. Else, we will check that if the login user role equals to rows enum.admin and also the selected user role equals to rows enum.owner or the selected user role equals to rows enum.admin, we can simply say that the result is false and then we can simply return this result. So let's format the document and talk about it. So here we first say that the result is true and in these two situations we can check that if it, uh, it is not authorized we return false so the first thing is we check that if the owner want to update an owner we say that you cannot and the result is false so he is not authorized and then if the login user role is admin and the selected user role is owner or admin again he cannot change it that's it so uh, i think it's okay so we will use uh, if you are asking what is the difference between this is authorized and allowed role for update array, you can see that the return here is a boolean. So we will check that he, the login user is authorized or not. But in the top one, we are returning an string array. And here we return an array that we will use it for the input of select for updating the role. You will see that on the next section. So uh, I think let's format the document to be sure about it and let's minimize this allowed rows for update array and also this is authorized for update role and close this file so uh, we let's go to the art we created this art at utils and inside that we created these utilities for our project so let's close it and go to the next step In next step, I want to create the context, so let's do it and let's open our explorer, go to the src and art, and here we want to create a new file. Let's create a new file with name of art.context.tss, that's it. In first step, let's import some of the files that we need, for example, from the React, we can import React node, and also we need to create context, and use reducer, and use callback. And also we need use effect. So after this, we need to import some things from the types slash art type. So what types and interfaces do we need? We need I art context, and also we need I art context action and I art context action types, and also we need I art context state and I login response DTO from this type slash art types. So after this. Let's import get session and set session from the art.util that we created in the previous uh, section. After that, let's import the Axios instance that we created in utils slash Axios instance. And after that, let's import toast from React Hot Toast. We imported this toast from this library that we created in the initial step of our project creation. After that, let's import use navigate from React Roaster DOM. And after that, we need to import some configs from this slash util slash global config. For example, we need the login URL and also we need new URL and path after login and also path after logout and path after register and also register URL. So this is all we need to use in uh, this uh, context file. Let's use format document. Good. And now let's go to the next step so here first let me add some comments here to show you we need a reducer function for this reducer hook so let's create it first 
So we will create a function with name of const auth reducer, which equals to an arrow function. And what is the input of this arrow function? The first one is an state with type of I auth context state that you can see that we imported it from slash type slash auth types. After that, we need to receive the action, which is type of I auth context actions. And you can see that we created them previously in our types. That's it. So let's go to the body of this auth reducer. And here we will have an if condition and we we'll check that if the action type equals to i auth context action types dot login what we need to do we need to return an object and inside of this object first we will return the previous state using this spreading if and after that we say that is authenticated is true and is auth loading is false and then user is action dot fail that's it so in type of the login we will return this object then let's go and have another condition and in this condition we check that if the type of the action is logout which is coming from i auth context action types dot logout let me show you that quickly so we created this inside of auth dot types dot ts this is an enum you can see that we have initial and login and logout i'm just using this login and logout but i created this initial and we can use them if you want so let's continue so if the type equals to logout we need to return another object with the previous state and we will change the is authenticated to false and also is outloading to false and the user would be undefined. So in case of logout, we will say that is authenticated is false and the user is undefined. That's good. And in the type of the other action types, we will simply return this state. So let's format the document. And this is our auth reducer. We will use it. So let's minimize it and go to the next line. And after this reducer, we need to have an initial state object for our use reducer hook so let's create it and here i will define an initial auth state with type of i auth action state and it would be an object and inside of this object i want to have is authenticated with the initial value of false and also is auth loading with initial value of true and a user with initial value of undefined this is it so let's format the document so this is an initial state object let me add this object here for the use reducer hook and that's it so let's minimize it and go to the next line and after this we need to create our context here and export it so let's create it here so let's export const of auth context this is our auth context and we export it and it requires to create context with the type of i auth context or null and for the initial value of it, we will use not. So this is our main context and you can see that we are exporting it. So we can use it on other files and the module. So let's format the document and go to the next line. After this, I want to create an interface for our context prop. So let's create it. I simply create an interface of I props and you know that the interface is an object and inside this object of my prop, I just want to have the children with type of React node. So let's format the document and minimize it. So this is the props that we are going to use for our context component. Now let's create a component to manage all of our functionalities and we export it and use it in all of our projects. So let's do this. So I create a const of our context provider, which equals to an arrow function. And instead of this arrow function, we are going to receive the Prop, but we destructure the props to the children and we say that the type of this children is i prop. So this is it. You can see that I'm using this interface for my component and it will return an object. Inside of this odd context provider, I want to create a const of a state and this patch equals to a use reducer. And for this use reducer, we will receive this odd reducer that we created on the top of this file and also the initial odd state. So this is it, we created the reducer that we want to use it and using the state and the dispatch we can receive its values and change its values. After this, let's create a navigate which equals to use navigate and we'll use this hook inside of our file. And then let's have an initialization method. So we need to have a method to initialize our reducer when we are starting our program. So let's implement it. So let's create it and we say that const of initialize context equals to a use callback. We use this use callback hook 
to avoid the unnecessary renders and inside this with callback we can create an ASIC function and then for the dependency array we use just this empty array and inside this function let's create a try catch block because it's really important to work with try catch and in the uh, catch we will see the error and work with it so inside of this try the first thing is I want to have the token and I receive this token from get session that we created in our auth utils before and I will check that if the token is exists I will do something else I will do something else so if the token exists I want to validate access token by calling our backend because this token must be validated and if uh, somebody change it in the local storage we want to validate it to be sure that it is true and valid so let's do it and i say that const of response equal to await of access instance dot post so we need to have a post method and with the return type of i login response dto and what is the url the url is me url that we created you can see that it is uh, a slash out slash me and we created it and we use it here and also we need to send some data so the data is an object and inside this object we send the token so you know that the token uh, the key and the value is token so we simply return just this token to the backend and after this uh, in the response we receive the generated token and the user data and you saw this previously on the backend section so we are, uh, we are receiving the token and the user data and we want to destructure it so we destructure the new token and the user info from response.data and then we will set the session to new token so we will send this new token to the set session method and it will be saved on the local storage that's it let's continue after this set session uh, we call dispatch so we want to dispatch and inside of this dispatch we send the type of i out context action types dot login and we send the payload of user info so this will call the dispatch method and it will save the user info to the context and also it change the type of the is authenticated to true we saw that on the top and else we want to set the session to null so if the token is not exist we can we simply say that the ses set session of null and also dispatch with type of i out context action types that log out and that's it and if in this uh, process we catch any error we will simply go to this catch section and here we can again say that set session to null please and also we again dispatch with type of i out context action types dot log out so you can see that in case of invalid token we can simply set the session to null and dispatch with the log out that's it so i think it's okay let's format the document that's good and minimize this initial and go to the next step then we need to check that in the start of application we must call the initialize out context to be sure about the authentication status so let's create a use effect for it so i will create a use effect and inside of that i create a function with an empty array form the dependency array and inside this use effect the first thing is i want to have a log of out context initialization start and after this i want to call the initialize out context and after this you know that we can have the dot then dot catch because it's returning a promise and instead of then i will say that console.log the initialize out context was successful and in case of any error that we are going to the catch i receive the error and i simply console.log this error that's it so let's format the document and minimize it so we created this initial auth context method and we use it inside this use effect so always we are sure about our authentication let's minimize them and go to the next line so the next thing is we need to have a register method for registering our user to the website so we create this here i create a const of register which equals to again a use callback we again use the use callback here and inside of this i want to have an async method and after this async method i want to have an empty array for my dependency array so what we are going to receive inside this async function we want to receive the first name with type of a string and also a last name with type of a string and again a username and an email and also the password and the address so we are receiving the first name last name username email password and address inside of this function and what we are going to do with this data so we will have a, a backend call so we say cost of response equals to await of axios instance.post 
and we send this uh, request to the register URL. You can see that it is slash out slash register. And we need to send some data because this is a post method. And we send an object. And inside this object, we want to send the first name and also the last name and the username and email and password and the address. So this is it. This is our request to the backend and we have the result inside of this response. So after this, I simply log the, mes the message of register result equals to this response. And after that, I want to send a notification. So I simply use toast.success with message of register was successful, please log in. And after that, I simply use this navigate, which is coming from, let me show you this navigate equals to this use navigate for. And inside this use navigate, I will use the path after register. That's it. So let's format the document. Now this is it. Now you can see that we are using this path after register. So what is this? This is inside of global config that we created it. So from here, we can manage all of them. So I say that path after register equals to login. So we will use it here inside of this register method. And we say that after the successful register, navigate our uh, user automatically to path after register that's it so you can see that how useful it is so let's minimize this register and go to the next functionality of our context and after register i want to have the login method so let's create it and i will have the const of login which equals to again a use callback and inside this use callback i want to have an async function and after this function, I want to have this empty array, which is for my dependencies. So this is it. Let's uh, implement the use callback of the login. So what we are going to receive, we are going to receive the username with type of a string. And also we receive the password. We use this username and password to the login. So inside of this body, let's create the response, which equals to await of access instance dot post method so this time we are using the post method and for the return type we are using i login response bto because we want this response and then this is the url of us the login url which is a slash out a slash login and because this is a post method we need to send the username and password to the server so let's create an object after this url and inside of this object i want to send the username and also the password to the backend so this is it and after this response we will wait for it and after this we send this toast.success notification and we say that the login was successful this is it and after this in the response we receive the JWT token and the user data so let's destructure them we say that const of new token and user info equals to response.data and then we set session this new token so you saw that we created this session and we send this new token to it, it will handle everything for us and it, it will send this token uh, to the request headers and also we save it inside of the local storage. After this session, I want to dispatch. So what is the type of our dispatch? We want to dispatch I auth context action types that log in and also for the payload, we send this user info to dispatch so it will be saved inside of our auth context and after this dispatch, we can simply navigate our user automatically to path after login. So what is this path after login? Let's click on it. You can see that path after login equals to path dashboard dot dashboard. So you can change it to anything you want. And all of them would be configured here inside of global config dot TS. That's it. So I think everything is good. Let's format the document. That's it. And minimize it and go to the next method after the login we want to have a logout method so let's create it this logout is really a simple method which is again a use callback and inside this use callback we can create a simple arrow function with an empty dependency array this time we don't use async because this is not an asynchronous method and instead of this we can simply use set session of null and after that we can dispatch our state and we say that your type is I out context action types that log out and after this we can navigate our user automatically to path after log out. So let's check it. What is the path after log out? It is public dot home. That's it. So you can change it to anything you want from here from the global config. So this is it. 
you can see that this was easy so let's format the document and this is it so we created the logout method and let's minimize it and continue we want to return the provider but for the values let's create its values here so we create an object for the value of our contact provider here and i think this will keep our code more readable so let's create it here this object would be a const of values object equals to an object and inside that what we need to return to the context consumers well the first one is is authenticated key with the value of a state dot is authenticated and after that i want to return is outloading and its value would be a state dot is outloading and after that i want to return the user which equals to a state dot user and after that i simply return this register method and login method and logout method so you can see that we are returning these six uh, functions and states and let's format the document so this is my values object let's minimize it and finally let's create our provider so let's return the auth context that provider and for this provider instead of it we can simply use the value and for the value we can use this values object that we created here with these so these values would be returned to this auth context and we can access them in all of our project and inside of this auth context provider we can simply return this children so let's format my document and I think everything is okay. And after this object, we want to export it. So let's export default of our context provider. And let's format the document and have a quick overview of this context again. So we created a reducer function for our use reducer hook. And after that, we created an initial object of a state for our use reducer hook. And after that, we created our main context here and we exported it so we can use it everywhere we want. And then we created an interface of iProf for our provider. Then we created our auth context provider and we'll use it inside of our project. So this is it. And we will receive these children. And inside this auth context provider, we created a, a use reducer and it returns the state and dispatch and it will receive the auth reducer and initial auth state. And then we created this navigate. Then we have this initialized method and we call this method in a use effect in the start of our application. Then we have this register method. And after this, we have this login method. And after it, we have this logout method. And after logout method, we created this object and we use this object inside of our auth provider. And that's it. Now we can use this auth context provider inside of our main component. Let's do this. Let's go to the main.ts6 and here we are using react.strict mode. So let's delete this. We need to import this odd context. Let's copy this from here. And I say that we need to receive this odd context provider and we wrap it around this app. That's it. So let's format the document. And we need to delete this. Again, let's use format document. That's it. Now you can see that we don't need this react here. Let's cut it and format the document again. Well, our auth context provider is created successfully. Now we are using it inside of the main.ts6 and the app is inside of it. So we have access to this context in all of our project. Let's close it. And also let's close this auth context provider and minimize everything. After context, let's create a custom hook for it. So let's go to the SRC and inside the hooks, let's create a new file with name of useart.hook.ts. That's it. Let's minimize it for now. And inside of this uh, hook, I first import the use context from the React and also I import art context that we created previously inside of a slash art a slash art context. Then I will create my use art which equals to an arrow function and I can simply export the file with use art and inside of this I will create the const of context which equals to use context of art context so this is my context and then I will check that if this context is not exist I can simply throw a new error with the, the message of use art context context is not inside of art provided tag this is not important but you will check that and if it is not 
ready we throw a new error else we simply return this context that's it let's format this document so this is it and we can use this uh, hook inside of all of our function and we don't need to import the context and also the our context separately so i think it's okay and let's close it and go to the next step in this step we want to create a guard for the protection of our components but we need to handle the situation of loading when we are working with our authentication and authorization so let's create a new beautiful component for it and then we create our guard component so let's go to the components and inside of the components inside of the general i want to create a new component with name of autospinner.psx you can ignore this but i think this is really a good idea so let's use our afce to create a new component inside of here i don't need react here instead i will import this uh, icon of p detective from react icons slash pr that's it so let's go here and inside this art spinner let's delete this and here we have a division and again inside of that let's have another division and after that let's have an h1 and inside this h1 i want to use this p detective and instead of this i want to have some class names like width of 40 and also height of 40 and text of purple of 700 so let's format the document but i want to have some other class names so let's create them so i want to have width of 80 and also height of 80 and margin x of auto and also i use flex with justify of center and align items of center and also a position of relative that's it then for this division let's have some class name like absolute and then width of full and height of full and also inset of zero and border of eight and border purple of 300 and also border top of purple of uh, 700 and rounded of full and also animate of a spin this is it so for this division i use this and i think everything is okay so let's format the document and I think it's okay. So we are exporting this auto spinner. Now we can use it everywhere we want. So let's close this auto spinner and minimize everything and go to the next step. And for the next step, let's again go to the art. And here I want to create a guard component. So let's right click and create a new file with name of artguard.psx. So let's close this explorer and work on it. First, let's do our import. So I want to use the navigate and all the outlet and they are importing from React Rotterdam. And then I want to import this use art. We want to use it here. Also, I need this art spinner that I just created it. And also I need to use path of public from roads slash path. That's it. And here we need to have an interface for the props of this art card. And this is really important. So Let's take a look at it carefully. So what do we need? We need to receive a rows array and we will decide the next step based on this array. So let's create it. We simply say that interface of iProps is an object and inside this object we want to receive the rows which is type of an array of strings. That's it. So let's format the document and go to the next step and create our component. So let's create our component which is const of art guard which equals to an arrow function and we simply return this uh, arrow function as export default of art guard that's it so what we are going to receive as a props we are receiving an object with the uh, rows and this is a type of this interface which is i prop so we are receiving this rows and then we want to destructure the is authenticated and also the user and the is art loading from our use art and then let's check that do we have access to the requested page and if yes the page will be rendered inside of this outlet that we created soon so let's test it we create a new variable with name of has access and we say that if is authenticated is true and we check that if the user dot roles dot find and inside of this find we want to find that if for each one of them we create this arrow function and we say that for each item that is q you need to check that if the rows dot includes this queue. 
So if each of them is exists inside of this role, this has access would be true, else it would be false. And after that, we check that if the is auth loading is true, we want to say uh, the user that you need to wait. So we simply return this auth spinner that we just created. That is so. Now you can see that why I'm using that auth spinner. So in case of any loading, we simply return this auth spinner. Else we can simply return that if the has access is true, we can simply return this outlet that this outlet is coming from the React router now and it allows the other routes to be rendered inside of this auth bar. Else, we can simply return this navigate and we say that please navigate to the path of public dot unauthorized path. Let's check it. What is this? So you can see that this is a slash unauthorized. So this is it and after it, this is the final return of us and then we have this export default of auth guard. So let's format the document and have a quick overview of it. So what we have done inside of this auth guard, this is one of the most important components of our website that allows us to implement the role-based authorization. So we are using this auth guard. We're sending this role to the auth guard and then we check that if the logged in user has one of these roles, so we simply return this outlet. This outlet allows the React router to render the other children roles inside of this. And we simply navigate our user automatically to path of public dot unauthorized. That's it. So I think it's okay. Let's close it and also close everything and go to the next step. Now we created the art guard and we can implement our roads. But before that, we need to have the layout for our website. And for the layout, we need to have some components. So let's create them. The first component is a button. So let's create it. Let's open the explorer and go to src components. And in the general folder, we have autospinner.ts6. Let's add a new file with name of button.ts6. That's it. First, let's create an interface for it. So I want to have an interface with name of iProps. And for this interface, I want to receive the variant which can be type of primary or secondary or danger or like. And after variant, let's have a type prop with the values of submit or button. So the type of the variant can be one of these string and the type can be one of these strings, this submit or button. And also let's have a label with type of a string and after that, I want to have an onclick, and the type of it would be a function that receives nothing and returns a void. After that, let's have a loading state with type of boolean and also a disabled prop with type of boolean. And the loading and the disabled are uh, optional. That's it. So let's continue. And after this, let's create our uh, component. So I will use RAFCE. And let's delete this React, we don't need it. And let's use formatted document. That's it. So here, we need to receive the props like the variant and also the type and the label and also the unclick and loading and disabled. And we define them as the I props. That's it. And the first thing is let's create a variable with name of primary classes. And for it, I want to have some tailwind CSS classes. So let's create them. The first one is text Y. But uh, here you can see that I have an S space here. I will say you why, what is this and why we are using this S space. So after text Y, let's have this VG color and also this border color. And on hover, I want to have this shadow. This is it. So this is for the primary classes. And after that, let's have the const of secondary classes again with a space and the text of white and also this pg of amber and the border of amber and also on hover i want to have this shadow so you can see that we are creating the required classes and we'll use them after that let's have the const of danger classes and again let's have an space and then text of white and pg of this color and border of this color and also on hover we want to have this color and for the next one, let's create a const of like classes, which equals to again an space and then text of this color and also the border of this color. And on hover, we want to have this shadow. This is it. So we created four different classes for the uh, 
variant of our button let's format the document and continue uh, after these classes let's create a function for creating our classes dynamically so let's get a const of class name creator and this uh, class name creator is an arrow function with the return type of a string so this class name creator will return a string for us and inside of that let's create a final class name variable with the value of flex and also justify of center and align items of center and also outline of none and duration of 300 and height of 10 and also text of large and font of semi bold and also padding x of 6 and rounded of 2x large and also border of 2 that's it so after that you can see that now we have the final class name for, for but this is it and after that let's have an if and we check that if the variant of our button is primary we will add something to the final class name which would be these primary classes that we created here and because we have these classes we are using this space for the classes would be true so this is the reason that we are using this space in front of our classes for the primary and the secondary and the others now you can see that why we are using this space so let's continue and first we'll check that if the variant is primary we will add this class is to the final class else if the variant equal to secondary we will add the uh, secondary classes to the final class name else if the variant equals to danger now we can see that we are adding the danger classes to the final class name and then let's check that if the variant equals to light we will simply add the light classes to our final class name so you can see that we are dynamically creating it and after that let's add some other classes to the final class name so after all of these and one of these we want to have some other classes and let's add them so first let's have an space again to have the true classes here and after this space let's have disabled of shadow none and also undisabled we use bg gray of 300 and also undisabled we say the border of gray of 300 must be used and after them let's simply return this final class name so this is a class name creator and it will dynamically create the class and it will be returned to us so let's minimize it and let's use format document again and continue and after this class name creator let's create another function with name of loading icon creator and we say that this is an arrow function and inside of that we simply return a division and we want to use some class names for it so we can use class names of width of 6 and also height of 6 and rounded of full and also animate of screen and a border of 2 and also border gray of 400 and for the border top we use border gray of 800 that's it let's format the document again and minimize this loading icon creator and now we can simply work on the final version so let's delete this uh, div and we want to have a button for it and inside of that we can check that if the loading is true we can use the loading icon creator else we can use label that's it so let's format the document and this is it but here for the button we can use a type with the value of receive type that's it and also after this type let's use the unclick and we are receiving this unclick in the props that's it and after that let's have some class names and for the class names we want to use the class name creator so everything would be dynamic and after that let's have a disable with the value of the receive disable which is coming from disabled and format the document so yeah here we need to have this curly brace and now let's format the document so this is it let's have a quick overview so in the first step we created these props with the variant type label on click loading and disable then in the button we receive all of them and we work with them so we create some classes to use them dynamically and here in class name creator we will create the final classes based on the input variables uh, of variant and also after that we have this loading icon creator and then we simply return this button and inside of that we have the type and also on click and the class names and also the disable and in the 
body of this button we check that if it, the, the loading is true we simply return this loading icon creator which is this division else we return the label so this is it and I think everything is okay so let's close this button and go to the next one after button let's go to the uh, component and here we have the layout and for this layout we can have a header and a sidebar so let's create them one by one i will create a new file with name of header.ts6 that's it and first let's import the use art and we created this use art hook and we'll use it here and also we need the button that we created it just right now and then let's import some uh, icons like ai outline home and also if i log and if i unlock and after that let's have the use navigate from the react router dom and after that we need to have some path for so let's add path of dashboard and also path of public from roads this is it and after that we can use our AFC to create our component but let's delete this react because we don't need it that's it so inside of the body of this component I want to import some things from the use art hook and I will destructure all of them here to use them so I want to have the is art loading and is authenticated and also the user and the logo from the use hook so we will destructure them here and also let's create the navigate which equals to use navigate hook and we'll use it here so let's format the document and continue after this let's have a helper function i will create it and i will explain it to you later so let's create it and i will create a const of user roles label creator which is an arrow function so this is an arrow function that will create the roles label for us let's create it so we will first check that if the user exists you want to show something to the user else we simply return this uh, two dash strings that's it but if the user exists what we can do first we can create a result which is an empty array in the first and after that we will uh, have the user so the user must have some roles and we will use a for each uh, loop on the user roles and for each one you know that we can use this arrow function and we will receive the role and index for each the role and we will first uh, add this role to the result and after that we will check that if this let me show you that if the index is less than the user that rolls that length minus one which means that this is not the final one we will add this string to the result that's it and after it we simply return the result and that's it so let's use the format document so what we have done we created this user roles label creator and here we check that if the user exists we return an a string with all roles of the user else we simply return this that's it so let's minimize this user roles and continue first for the division let's have class some class names like display of flex and also justify of between and align items of center and for the background i use this white color and also height of 12 and padding x of 4 this is it so inside of this division i want to have two separate divisions one for the left and also one for the right so let's use format the document that's it and continue so this is the left one let's delete this and you know that we always use tailwind classes here so let's use some class names like uh, flex and also items of center and gap of four that's it and inside of that i want to have an ai outline home icon and inside of that i want to have some class names like width of eight and height of eight and also text of purple and on how i want to have another color and also i want to have cursor of pointer and also on click i want to navigate my user to the slash row this is it let's format the document again and after this ai outline let's have another division so for this division i want to use some class names like flex and gap of one and inside of this division i want to have some h1 so 
The first one is an H1 with class names of heading X of 1 and border and border of dashed and also border paper of 300 and also rounded of LG. And inside of this H1, I want to have this uh, strings outloading and we will check that if the is outloading is true, we simply return this true, LG return this. And after this H1, let's have another H1. For the class names, let's use again padding X of 1, border, border of dashed and border paper of 300 and rounded of LG and flex and uh, items of center and also gap of 1 and inside this H1 I will uh, write this out and we will check that if the is authenticated is true we return fi unlock icon with class name of text green else we return fi lock with class name of text red of 600 and after this H1 let's have another H1 with class name of adding x of 1 and border and also border of dashed and border purple of 300 and also rounded up LG and inside this H1 I want to write the username and we will check dynamically if the user exists we will use user.username as we use this string that's it and for the final H1 let's have some class names like padding x of 1 and border border of dash and also border purple and rounded up LG and inside of that I simply use this user roles and we use the dynamic value of user roles label creator that we created it here this is it so we are using this uh, helper function inside of this h1 so this is it and let's format my document that's it so we created the first division then we have a uh, division for the left and then we have this right and inside the left one we created this uh, icon and after that we have this division with some h1 so let's minimize this division and also let's minimize the left division completely and continue on the right one so let's delete this right on the right side we want to render everything conditionally so let's open a curly brace to use the javascript and we will check that if the is authenticated is true we return something else we return something else so what we are going to return in the case of the is authenticated is true. I want to have a division and inside this division I want to have some class names like flex and items of center and also gap of two. And inside of this division I want to have a button and for this button I want to have the label of dashboard. And on click what we need to do we need to use the navigate and we'll redirect our user to the path of dashboard dot dashboard that we created previously. And also after that, let's have a type of button and variant of light for this button. So after this, I want to have another button and I will use the label of logout and also on click, I will use this logo that we destructured it uh, here from the use of hook. And after the uh, on click, let's have a type of button and the variant of light. So you can see that we created this button and we are using it everywhere. That's so good. So let's format the document. Okay, it is not working because uh, the format is not right. So let's create another division and then continue. So I will create another division for the next uh, uh, situation and I use format document. So you can see that on the right side, I'm using this is authenticated. And if it is true, I will return this division with two buttons. Else I will use another division. So let's uh, complete it. And here we need to use some last names for the right side, like display of flex and also items of center and gap of two. And inside of that, let's have some buttons. So I create a button and for the label, I will use the register and on click, I will use navigate to the path of public does register. And also let's have a type of button and a variant of light for it. Then let's have another button. And for the next button, we use label of login and also we use the on click and on the on click we navigate our user to the path public dot login and also let's have a type of button and variant of like this is it so let's use formatted document that's okay and i think everything is good inside of the header let's have a quick review of it and continue so we imported some of these and then we have some of these and we destructured this from the use uh, art hook and then we have the navigate and we created the helper function of user roles label creator we will use it then inside of this uh, main division of the header we have a left uh, part and a right part so for the left one we have this AI outline home 
and we have some h1s to show some string text to the user and on the right side everything is dynamic let's minimize this so on the right side we will uh, render everything dynamically and we check that if there is authenticated is true we return this division with buttons of the dashboard and button of logout as we uh, render the buttons of register and button of login so i think everything is okay and the header is completed so let's close it and the next one is the sidebar so inside of the layout let's create a new file with name of sidebar.ts6 first let's import the ci user from the react icons and then we use the use out hook and also we import the button and the use navigate and also the path of dashboard and we want to use all of them inside of our sidebar after that let's use our afc to create our component and i don't need this react so let's delete it and let's delete the sidebar okay this is it so inside of the sidebar first let's destructure the user from the use out hook and also let's use the Navigate which equals to use navigate. Let's format the document. So we need to use these And let's create a helper function here with name of const of handle click And this is an arrow function and inside of this handle click We will receive the URL with type of a string and after that we want to use the window dot scroll tool So we want to scroll the uh, window automatically to the top of zero and left of zero and we use the behavior of a smooth So it would be a smoothly scroll to the top and after that, let's use the navigate and we navigate to the URL that we are receiving from the handle key. That's it. So after this, let's use some class names here for the main division, like shrink of zero and also this BG color of the purple and also width of 60 and padding of two. And for the minimum height, we use the calculator of 100 view for height minus 48 pixel. That is used for the our header of our website and after that let's have the flex and flex of column and items of stretch and also gap of a that's it so after that let's have another division and for the class names let's have self of center and also flex and flex of column and items of center let's use the format document well that's good and I use the CI user icon inside this division with some class names like width of 10 and height of 10 and also text of white. And after that, I want to have an H4 with class names of text of white. And inside this H4, I want to return the user that first name and then an a space and user that last name. So we show the uh, CI user icon on the top and then we want to have the user that first name and user that last name. So Let's format the document. This is it. So we have uh, this division and let's have an enter here. So we can say this is a separate division. And after this division, let's have some buttons. So let's create them one by one. The first one would be a button with label of users management. And for the unclick, we handle the click of pad dashboard user management. And also we have the type of button and the variant of secondary. Let's have another button with label of send message and also for the unclick we use the handle click of pad dashboard send message and for the type we use button and for the variant we use secondary. This is it. Let's format the document and go to the next one. The next would be a button with label of inbox and for the unclick we use handle click of pad dashboard inbox and we have the type of button and also the variant of secondary that's it let's create the next one the next one would be a button with label of all messages and for the unclick we use the handle click of pad dashboard dot all messages and also for the type we use the button and for the variant we use the secondary let's go to the next one the next one would be a button with label of all logs and unclick we use the handle click of pad dashboard dot system logs and also let's use a type of button and also a variant of secondary this is it so let's go to the next one next one i want to have a button with label of my logs and on click i will use the handle click of pad dashboard dot my logs and i will use a type of button and also a variant of secondary this is it so let's 
format document and now we have some of these buttons like user management, send message, inbox, all messages, all logs and my log. So after this button, I want to have an HR. So let's create it. So we want to have a horizontal row or horizontal line here and let's continue. And the next button will have the label of owner page and on click we redirect the user to path dashboard owner with type of button and also the variant of secondary so let's format the document that's it and after that let's have a button with label of admin page and on click i will use path dashboard admin i redirect the user to there and I will use a type of button and also a variant of secondary. This is it. And after the admin page, I want to have another button with label of manager page. And on click, I will redirect the user to the path of dashboard.manager. And I use type of button and variant of secondary. This is it. And after that, let's have another button. And for the label, we use user page. And for the on-click, we will direct the user to the path of dashboard.user and we use the type of button and variant of secondary. And this is it. So this is finished. And then we export default the sidebar. So let's use the format document and have a quick overview and continue. So we created this sidebar. We imported some components and some other things from, for example, they use navigate and they use artful. And inside of the component of the sidebar, we destructured the user and also we created this navigate and we created this helper function of handle click and we received this URL and first we scroll the window to the top with the smooth behavior and then we navigate the user to the requested URL. Then we return the body of this uh, component and we have this division and on the top we have another division with the CI user icon and we show the first name and the last name of the log in user and after that we have some different buttons the one for the user management then send message and then inbox and then all message all logs and my logs owner page admin page manager page and user page and we have this hr to separate them so i think everything is okay let's close this sidebar and continue No, we created the header and the sidebar. So we have the header.tsx and the sidebar.tsx. Now we can create the main layout component. So inside the layout, let's add a new file. And you know that we, we can use the index.tsx name. And it would be with the name of the layout automatically. So let's use this index.tsx. And let's minimize this for now. And first, let's import the use output. And also we import the header that we created just right now and after that let's have the outlet and use location from the react router dom and also let's use the sidebar so we use the header and the sidebar inside of our layout and also we are using the user output that we created previously so after this let's use the rafc to create our component and let's delete this react we don't need it but uh, this function automatically creates the component with name of our file and it is index.tsx but we don't need it. So let's change this to the layout. That's it. So this is the layout component that we are using our roads. First, let's uh, destructure the is authenticated from the use out hook. And after that, let's destructure the path name from the use location hook. And let's uh, format the document. That's it. And also let's log the path name. So we can check it later inside of our application. That's it. So after that, let's create a helper function. I create a const of sidebar renderer helper function, which is an arrow function. And inside of this function, I want to check that if the is authenticated is true and the path name, which is the structure from the use location, dot to lowercase dot starts with the slash dashboard. So in this situation, I want to return this uh, sidebar component, else I simply return null. And we don't use else, you know that when we are returning something inside of if, we don't need the else. So inside of this sidebar renderer helper function, we check this uh, condition. And if it is true, we return this sidebar, else we return null. 
this is it so let's format the document and this is the sidebar render helper function and then we have this division so what we need to return so we have the this division and first let's have the header in any situation and format the document so inside of this uh, layout we always have the header and after that i want to use the outlet and we render all roads that are inside of this layout in this outlet so let's create it and i want to have a division with uh, class names of flex and inside of that the first thing is i want to check that if the sidebar is exist so i use this sidebar renderer helper function and after that i use the outlet this is it so let's format the document this is one of the most important components of our website that you are going to create so let's have a quick review of it and continue the first thing is we need to import these and then with this structure that is authenticated from use auto and also the path name from the use location and we will log it to the uh, console so we can check it later then we have this helper function of sidebar renderer so we check that if the user is authenticated and also if the path name dot to lowercase dot starts with slash dashboard is true we return the sidebar that's it so if the user is not authenticated or the path name is not like this we return not so this will render the sidebar dynamically for us and that's it let's continue and in the return section we have uh, one division and on the top we use this header and after that header uh, we want to use this outlet so uh, we have another division with class name of flex and first uh, we use this sidebar render and then we use outlet that's it so this is the index.tsx that will be used as our main layout so let's minimize everything and continue now we have the layout so now we can work on our roads so let's minimize again and go to the uh, roads previously we created these paths and we use them in our layout and in the sidebar and also in the header now we can use these paths we can create our roads let's create it so let's close this path and inside the roads i want to create them so let's add a new file with name of index.tsx that's it so let's minimize it and here first let's import something from react rotterdam so what do we need to create our roads we need the roads component and also the road and the navigate and this is it so after this let's import something from the dot slash path that we just saw it so we need the path of dashboard and also the path of public from dot slash path dot six and after that let's import the art guard component that we created previously and after that let's import something from slash art slash art.utils that we created so we need to uh, use some roles arrays here so we need to have the all access roles and also the manager access roles and the admin access roles and the owner access roles we use them to implement their role based authorization here inside of this file and after that let's import the layout from the components layout that we just created and then we need to import all pages that you want to use them so i will import all of them but uh, you can simply copy paste this uh, line from the github repo let's import all of them so i want to have the admin page and the all message page the dashboard page the inbox page the manager page the my logs page owner page and send message page system logs page update role page and also users page then the user management and then home login and not found and also register page and the unauthorized page so this is all page that we are going to use inside of our router that's it then let's use rafc to create our component and let's delete this react i don't need it and for the name of the component i want to use global router so i create this uh, global router component and i will use it in all of my projects uh, so this is it the const of global router and here what we need to do we need to first let's delete uh, this division so inside this global router we must uh, return a roads component and inside this roads we can have some different roads and each road can have a path 
and an element. This is it. So let's comment it. So this is the uh, syntax of creating different roads inside of our program. But first, before that, I want to have a special road. And for this road, it will receive some children. And for this road, I don't use the path. I just use the element. And for its element, I want to use the layout. So all of the children of this road would be rendered inside of this layout. And let me show you quickly inside the layout. We are using the outlet. So all of the roads would be rendered here inside of this outlet and this sidebar which is on the left side would be always fixed. This is so good and it will help us a lot. So let's use the format document. So we have the global rotor and inside this global rotor we have this roads component and the first thing is a road that has the uh, layout as its element and inside of this road we can uh, have all of our roads. So let's use them first. Let's have some public roads here. So I want to have some uh, roads component for my public roads. And for the first one, instead of path, we can use index. So it would be the s slash. And after that, let's have the element of the home page. And after that, let's have another road with path of path of public dot register. And also for the element, we use the register page. And after that, let's have uh, another road with path of path public dot login. And also we can use the element of login page. And also let's have another uh, road with path of path public dot unauthorized. And then let's have an element with unauthorized page. This is it. So let's format the document. So let's press enter here to separate them. One, two, three, four. This is it. So we have four public roads here and let's continue and after them I want to have some protected roads so let's create them and for the protected roads we want to have a different signature so let's create them so I create a road component and this time again I use an element and for the element I use art guard so this art guard needs to receive the roads props and for the roads for this one I will use all access roads and inside of this road with the element of author with roles of all access roles, I want to return some roles that is inside of this road. So let's create them one by one. The first one will have the path of dashboard and we have the element of dashboard page. And after that, let's have another road with path of send message and also the element of send message page. Then let's have a path of a dashboard inbox with element of inbox page. And after that, let's have the path of my logs with element of my logs page. And then let's have the path of user with element of user page. So you can see that this is the syntax that we can use the art guard. And we want to have different roles, arrays for them. So we created this all access roles. Let me show you that. So inside of the art utils, we previously created this uh, arrays with the owner, admin, and the manager, and the others. And we use them here to implement the role-based uh, authorization. So you can see that, how useful they are. So this is one of them. And after that, let's create next roads. Again, I want to have a road component. And for its element, we use the art guard. And for the art guard, we use the roles of manager access roles. And as the children of this road, we want to return just one road with the path of manager. And also for the element, we use manager page. Well, you can see that it is really so easy and readable. So we created one road with the element of OutGuard of all access. Then we have a road with element of OutGuard with roles of manager access. And this is the syntax. So let's continue. And after this, let's create the next one. And for the next one, we have a road with element of OutGuard again. But for the roles, this time we want to use admin access roles. And inside of this admin access roles, we want to have some different roles. So I, sh I show all of them here. So for the first one, I use the path of user management with the element of user management page, obviously. Then let's have another road with path of update role. And also for the element, let's use the update role page. Then let's have a path of all messages with element of all messages page. And then let's have uh, another road with path of system logs 
and for the element we use the system logs page and then let's have another row with the path of a dashboard dot admin and for the element we want to use the admin page so let's use the format document good so this was the first one the second one the third one and also let's implement the last one and it would be a road with the element of auth guard and for the roles of this auth guard we use owner access road let's uh, create the road of it so for this road we want to have a path of path dashboard dot owner and element of owner page so let's check these roles quickly with owner access roles you can see that this is an array with just owner so this says that only the the owner can have access to this uh, owner access role which is used inside of this so it means that this art guard will protect uh, will protect from the page and it will allow just the owner to have access to this role so this is it and after that let's have this comment so this was for the protected roles and you can see that we are protecting all of these roles inside of our application using Outcard. This is it. So let's continue. And after this odd card, let's uh, create a catch all or 404 road here. I create a new road with the path of path public dot not found. And for the element of it, we use the not found page. And in order to render this for all of the uh, other pages than this uh, page that we are created here, we can use another road with path of a star. That means everything after this path is, and we can use the element of navigate that is coming from there let me show you from react rotterdam so for this navigate we can use a two prop and we can say that you can navigate to the path of public but not found and we use replace so i think everything is okay let's format the document and have a quick overview of it so what we have done here let's have an enter here so First, we imported everything that we wanted to use inside of our rotor, and then we have this const of global rotor, and we returning this roads. And the first thing is this road that use the element of layout. So everything is inside of this road of element of layout, and they will be uh, rendered inside of this road. That's it. So we have some public roads here. Then we have the protected roads, and for them. We use this element of art guard. You can see that they are all inside of these four uh, roads that they have the art guard with roles of all access, manager access, admin access, and owner access. This is it. So uh, please uh, check all of them again. And if you have, uh, have any questions, ask me on the comment. And after these protected roles, we have this uh, 404. So this is it. And how we can use it? Let's go to the app.tsx this is it and uh, let's delete this react we don't need it and here let's delete this app and here i want to use that global rotor so let's use the global rotor and let's delete this because i think i don't need these class names here and let's use the format document so inside of this app we return a division with this global rotor and also after that let's uh, use the toaster component because we need it in the next uh, page so uh, inside of this uh, this toaster must be imported from the react hot toast so uh, let's have a quick overview of everything until now so let's go to the src and main.ts here we are using this odd context provider but uh, we need to have the browser rotor so let's have it here and let's import it so browser rotor yeah it imported dynamically and let's use this here and use the format document so in the main.tsx we are using the browser rotor so this will allows us to use the react rotor down package and inside of that I have this art context provider and then I have this app. So let's close it and open the app.tsx. And here you can see that inside of this app, we are returning a division and then we have this global rotor and the toaster. So let's go to the global rotor, which is inside of the roads uh, index.tsx. So 
this is the global router and everything are rendered inside this global router so we are using this routes and then we use this route with element of layout and everything is inside of this router so i think everything is okay let's minimize everything and now let's check that do we have any error or problem or not so uh, i will use the npm run dev let's check it well our project must be here on the palace for 3000 let's open it well you can see that we have the everything that we created we have this uh, header on the top we have a sidebar but it is not rendered because we are not authenticated or we don't log into the website then we have this register and the login so let's see that do we have this register page yes we have the slash register do we have the login yes we have the slash login let's go back so this is it let's check that do we have access to a slash dashboard a slash dashboard we will be automatically redirected to a slash unauthorized that's so good let's go to the home so you can see that we implemented all roads that we want and now we can use them inside of our project before continuing to the next step let's pray for the matthew perry soul the star of the Friends TV series who died on the age of 54 today. He was known for playing the sarcastic but lovable Chandler Bing character in the Friends TV series. May rest in peace. So let's continue. In next step, we want to implement the home page. So let's do it. But because I want to use an image, let's go to the public and here let's create a new folder named images. And inside of these images, I want to copy an image. You can simply download it from my GitHub repo. And this is it. So I copied this me.jpg and this is an image. You can download it from the GitHub repo and you can find the link of the GitHub repo in the video description. So let's continue. We want to use this image in the home page. So let's open the src and go to the pages and public and home page well this is it and uh, let me talk about the home page inside of this home page we don't have any special functionalities and we just need to implement a beautiful ui so i simply copy paste the codes of the tailwind css classes and the structure here from the github repo and talk about them and you can uh, copy and paste them from my github repo here and this is not important because here we don't have any special functionality so let me copy them here well this is it so let's uh, first open the terminal and see our project clear npm run dev to see it first and then we talk about it and this is it so this is the result of the codes that we copied from the github repo and you can see that it is just a simple beautiful structure that i created using tailwind css classes and this is it here on the right side i have my image and on the left side i have some different elements that we, i talk about them now so let's go back to our codes and let's minimize the terminal and this is it. so we created this page template one let's have a quick overview of it so if i go to the uh, index.css you can see that i have page template one here which is these classes so we are using these classes in our project and you can see that it is reusable so we are using this dot page template one here then we have some divisions and we are using some tailwind css classes that is not important and our focus is just on the functionality of authentication and authorization so this is the home page and i think it's okay we don't want to uh, have some time on it so we just have a division with class name of page template then let's minimize this division inside of that i have another division with two sections this is for the left side and the next one is for the right side and in the right side i have this image which the src is images slash me dot jpeg that i copied into this folder that's it so let's uh, close the home page and close the index.css and close everything and go to the next step
In next step, I want to implement the register page, then the login page. But for my register and my login page, I want to have some input component. So let's create a reusable component for the input and use it. So let's uh, go to the SRC, then go to the components. And instead of components, I have the dashboard, the general, and the layout. So uh, let's close them. So inside of the general, let's create a new file. So the name would be input field.tsx and inside of that I want to import something from the React Book for package which is the control and also the controller. So after this let's create an interface with name of iProps and you know that an interface is an object and for the iProps we are using the control which is a type of control of any and any. So this is a generic type from the React Book for and after this control let's have a label which is the type of a string and also it's optional so we can pass label to it and also let's have an input name with type of a string and also let's have an input type with type of a string and it is optional and also let's have an error with type of a string this is it so after this i props we want to have our component so i simply use r a f c e to create it and let's cut this import react because we don't need it and also let's minimize this iProps because I don't need it anymore then here we can use uh, different props so what do we need here the first thing is the control and after that we need to have the label and then we need to have the input name and also the input type with the default value of text and also we need error so let's minimize the explorer now you can see that I'm exactly using this uh, props which is coming from this interface and this is the shape of it so let's use the format document and continue so let's minimize this and then i want to have a helper function so let's create the const of render top row which equals an arrow function and we check that if the error exists we simply return the a new span with class names of text red of 600 and also font of semi bold and inside of this span we simply return this error else if we have the label we can re simply return a label tag with a class name of font of semi bold and also inside of this label we return the label prop else if we don't have the error and we don't have the label we can simply return null this is it so let's format the document so this is the render top show helper function let's minimize it and go to the next line and i want to create another variable for the class names of this input field so let's create it i say const of dynamic class name equals to we check that if the error exists we can simply return an, a string with border red of 500 and also run of lg else if the error is false we can simply return an, a string with the border of this color and that's it now we can use it so let's delete this uh, input field and here let's have some class names like uh, padding x of 4 and also margin y of 2 and width of 75 percent and this is the division so inside of this division the first thing is we need to render the top row so let's use the render top row function and let's quickly format it this is good so after this render i want to have a controller tag which is coming from let me show you again here from react book 4 and here we can have some different props for it so let's use it the first thing is the name so for the name we can receive it from the props so i simply use the input name that i'm receiving from the props and also we need a control to control this a controller tag and this control is here coming from the props and after that we can have a render so because we want to render another tag here so this uh, render receives an arrow function and it can return anything we want so i want to return an input tag and here i can simply destructure the receiving as the field so i'm receiving the field and here for the input we can destructure this field Oops.
And after that, let's have the autocomplete of of. And also for the type of this, because we can have submit or button, we can receive this type from the input type. And also let's have the class name of this uh, dynamic class name that we created. So let's use this dynamic class name and let's format the document again. And this is it. So what we created in this uh, file, let's have a quick overview of it and continue. So we created the input field. And here we have imported the control and controller, and then we have these props. So for the input field, we can receive the control and the label and input name and input type and the arrow. And this is it. So after that, we have this function, which is render top row. So if you have error, we render the error in the top. Else if we have the label, we render the label. Else we return null. Then we have these dynamic classes that based on the error, we will uh, render the class of this controller. This is in the input that is here then we have this division then we render the top row then we have this controller now everything is ready and our input field component is ready so let's format the document and close it and now we can implement the next functionality which is the uh, register page so let's do it let's go to the src and pages and also let's go to the public and register page. This is it. And here first let's import all of the components we want. So we need to import a star as yop from the yop. And also we need to import use form from the React hook form. And also we need the I register DTO from the types that we created previously. And also we need the input field that we just created. And also we need the yop resolver and the use odd and also the button and we need the toast component from the react hot toast and also let's have the user state from the react and we need the link from the react router dom and also we need the path of public from the routes slash path this is it so we have the register page and now we can use all of the components that we are imported so here first i create an state for the loading and i use loading as set loading equal to a user state with the type of boolean and the initial value of false that's it and after that i will destructure the register from the use out hook and this is it then we need to create an schema for the uh, object of the data that you want to use in the react hook form so let's create it we need to create a new uh, variable named of const of uh, register schema which equals to the yup dot object so we are importing a star as yup from the yup package and we use it is like this so we use the yup dot object and we can create a shape for it here so this shape is a function and it will receive an object here so let's work on this object for now and see what the items do we need to use it here and in this object which is belongs to the shape we can define the shape of it so let's have some keys and some rules for it for example the first one is the first name so we want to have a first name and i want it to be yup.string and also i need it to be the required and for the message of the validation we can use first name is required after the first name i want to have another key with the last name and for the last name also i want to use the yup.string and also the required and you can use any message for the validation you want for example we can say the last name is required is the message for the required validation after last name let's have the username and again we use the yop.stream.required with the username is required that's it and after that i want to have an email so for the email again i use the yop.stream and after that i use the dot required and i use the email is required message and also i can use that email so it will check that it is a valid email structure or not and for the message of it, I can use input text must be a valid email. This is it. And after the email, I want to have a password. So for the password, I want to use the yop.string.required with the message of password is required. And also I want to use the minimum and I will use the minimum of eight. And for the message of this uh, minimum, I can use uh, password must be at least eight characters. 
and after that I can have the address with the yop dot string and that's required of address is required error message and this is it. so you can see that it is really too easy to create an schema for the react hook form using this yop and we will use uh, the yop and also we use the yop resolver that you can see it so let's continue so we created this register schema no I want to use it in the react hook form so let's see how we can use it inside of a react hook form easily so in order to use the react hook form we can simply destructure some of its items so I want to destructure the control and also the handle submit and the form state uh, and I will destructure this form state as the errors and also I want to have the reset and all of these are destructuring from the use form hook that we imported it here from the react hook form this is it so for this hook uh, use form because we are using typescript we can simply pass this i register dto to it so we say that the type of this form is coming from the i register dto and let's continue inside of this uh, use form we can pass an object to it to define everything we want for example the first thing is we can use a resolver to implement the validation of the yop so for the resolver i will use the yop resolver i'm importing yop resolver from the at sign hook form slash resolver slash yop and inside of this yop resolver i use register schema that i defined it here so this is the register schema i'm using it like this so after the resolver we can have the default values for our form and these values can be an object so what do we need to have inside of this object we want to have the first name with initial value of empty string also the last name and the username and also the email and the password and also the address so let's format the document so this is how we use the react hook for inside of this uh, register page we created this schema and we use it like this inside of our form let's continue so after this let's uh, minimize this register schema and also minimize this and continue and in order to process the data and send them to the backend we need to have a function so let's create it i create a const of on submit register form which is an async arrow function so inside of this function i am receiving the data with type of i register dto you will see that where the data is coming this is coming from the form that we will implement it soon so inside of this arrow function which is an async function we receive this data and inside of that i will use the try catch block because we are using an asynchronous function and we may have some errors or promise that reject so inside of the try first let's implement the set loading of true so first we set the loading state to the true then i call the await of the register so this register is coming from the use r that we implemented it previously so inside of this register you know that we need to send some data to it like the first name the last name and the others so let's send them I use the data that first name and also data that last name and data that username and data that email and data that password and data that address and I send all of them to this register and I'm waiting for it and after it I simply call the set loading of false this is it and everything will be handled inside of this register but what if you have any type of error so inside of the error we will go to the catch block and we receive this error but you can see that this error has the type of unknown and this is not good so let's define a type for it and inside of this catch block let's move the page to the top so inside of the catch block i will first use the set loading of false so i set the loading set to the false and after that i will use the const of error equals to our error that we are receiving as a new type so i want to have a new type for it with the data with type of a string and also and a status with type of number this is it so after that i want to destructure some all of them from the er so i say that the structuring the status and also the data from the er that we created it just now and after that i will check that if the status equals to 400 or the status equals to 409 i simply call it toast.error with this data else if the status is not this i simply uh, say the toast that error with this value of an error occurred please contact the admin so this is the 
on submit register form functionality that we need to use. So let's use the format document and minimize this and continue. The next item is this uh, return section. So let's delete this register DTO. Now we have this division. So in the first step, let's create another division here for the uh, left side. And also let's copy paste it and have another for the right side and comment them. So I want to have two different sections inside of this uh, uh, division of the register page. So for the main division, let's have the class name of uh, page template one. So I have the page template one for the register page. And on the left side, I want to have a beautiful structure, but this structure isn't uh, important for us. So I simply copy paste it from the GitHub repo and also you can copy it from the GitHub repo. This uh, left side is not really important. So let's copy it. And this is it. So this is a simple division with some class names and also some text. So let's use the format document and uh, this is the register page. So let's check it until now in the front end. So this is it. Let's refresh the page to be sure about everything. And if I go to the register, so you can see that this is the structure that we are implementing and this is uh, coming from the page template and also from the uh, left side but this left side is not really important you can simply copy paste it and the right side is the important thing for us so let's continue and let's minimize this left side so this was for the left side and let's continue on the right side and on the right side let's create a form tag This is it. So for this form, I want to use the unsubmit and ins uh, inside of this unsubmit, I want to use the handle submit that is coming from the React hook form and this handle submit will receive the unsubmit register form. So let's speak about it quickly. So what is this? When we are using the React hook form, let me show you again. We have this handle submit that we destructure from the use form. And this handle submit will receive another function. So we created this unsubmit register form that will receive this data with type of I register DTO. And inside of this form, we say that on the submit, you can handle the submit with this. So this will be called on the submit. This is it. Let's continue. And after this, I want to have some class names for this form, uh, like flex of one and also minimum height of 600 pixel and height of 80 percent and also bg of this color and also a flex and flex of column and justify center and align in terms of center and rounded of 2x large so this is for the form let's format document to see it better well this is so we have this uh, form tag with unsubmit and class name then let's have an h1 tag with the text of register and also let's have some class name to be more beautiful for example we can use text of 4x large and font of bold and also margin bottom of 2 and text of this color so the first thing is this register and after this uh, register h1 we can have some different input fields so let's create all of them the first one is an input field so you saw that let's go to the input field quickly you can see that we can receive control label input name input type and error so we can uh, use these uh, types and this prop so for the first input i use the control equals to control this control is coming from let me show you we are destructuring it from this uh, react hook for use form hook and it will allow us to add some controllers to this form this is it so we use the control of control and for the label of it we use the first name for the input name we use the first name and for the error we use errors that first name if exists dot message that's it so you can see that it is very too easy so after it let's have another input field again with the control and label and input name and error so the control again is control the next label is last name and the input name is uh, last name and also for the error we use errors that last name dot message after it let's have another input so control is the control and for the label we use username for the input name we use the username and also for the error you can see that using error dot username message after that let's have another input and we'll use control for this control prop 
and for the label of it we use email and for the input name we use email and for the error we use error.email.message and after that let's have another input field and we use the control of the control and also for the label we use the password and also we use the input name of password and the input type of password and for the error we use error.password.message so you can see that I'm using the input type here with type of password but in the previous we didn't have it why because here in the input type we have the default value of text and this uh, input type is optional so this is it and this is the password and after that let's have another one so after the password what do we have here you can see that we have the address so let's have the next one with the control of control for the label we use the address for the input name we use the address for the error we use address dot message if the error exists so this is it let's use the format document so the, these are the inputs that we need to use so let's continue and after this input we need to have some buttons so let's create another division here and for this division i want to have some class names like uh, padding x of 4 and also margin top of 2 and margin bottom of 6 and also with of let me show you this is the 75 percent and after that we can have the flex with gap of 2. i want to have an h1 and for the text of it we say already have an account so if you have an account already let's format the document it's a better idea and after this h1 i want to have a link component so for the link we want to have a two props so i will use the path of public dot login so this is the destination of this link and also let's have some class name for it to be beautiful like the text of this color and also the uh, border of uh, this color and i created these classes before this uh, tutorial so it would not take a long of time from us and you can simply copy paste all of these from my github so on hover i want to have this uh, shadow and also i want to have padding x of 3 and round of 2x large and also the duration of 200 so this is it and for the text of it we can use the login so this is a link inside of this division and let's have an enter here so after this division we can have some uh, buttons so let's create another division for it here and for this division we can have some uh, class names like flex and also justify of center and align items of center and gap of four and margin top of six and instead of that i want to have two buttons so let's create them for the first one i want to have the variant of secondary and the type of button and also the label of reset and on click i will call the reset so where is this reset coming this reset is coming from the react hook form that we destructured it from the use form hook of react hook form and this is the first button after that i want to have another button with variant of primary and the type of submit so this type is important because this button is going to submit our form and for the label of it we use the register and on click i pass an empty function to it because i don't want it to uh, invoke anything on the on call and the submit is enough for us and uh, for the loading of it i will pass the loading which is coming from this uh, loading state so i think everything is okay and we implemented these two buttons in the last section so let's format the document and this is it so i think the register page is completed let's have a quick overview of it and continue so first we Im imported everything then we created the loading state and also we destructured the register from the use art and this register you can see that this register is receiving something and it will return a promise and if we go to the authentication art context and we go to the register so this is the final register that will be called we will call the backend with access in the standard post with the register url and these values and in the success of it we will navigate our user to the path after the register that we created previously so let's close this and our types and close input fields and this is it so after this we created an schema for the object of our uh, form and we have first name last name and the others then we created a use form and we use this use form hook to create a new form instance for our uh, component and we destructure these 
and we pass the resolver to it and we pass the default value up to them then we have this on submit register form and we have a try catch and on the try and on the catch we handle every scenarios that may happen then we have this page template one division here and we have a left side and the right side the left side is not important but on the right side we have a form with an h1 with some input fields and also uh, another button for the login and two buttons for submitting and resetting so let's see the result until now and on, on the home page so if i click on the register well this is you can see that this is the left side and this is the right side and we implemented it so uh, what will be happen if i click uh, on the for example let's uh, write something and uh, let's press reset everything would be deleted that's so good let's add something and something and let's press register well you can see that we have errors so uh, if i delete everything so you can see that we have validation and also if i use something it says that password must be has a character and for the email it must be a valid email so we will test the register functionalities later now let's go and implement the login page and continue then we will test all of them together so let's close the register page and let's close everything go to the src pages public so we implemented the register that's okay now let's go to the login page and let's minimize this first let's import everything we want so we need to import the star as yop from the yop and also we need use form hook and i login dto and input field and again yop resolver and use art and the button and also the toast and use a state and also the link and path of public you can see that it is like the register and also you can simply copy paste these lines from the github it's not a problem you can simply watch me and learn what is this lines of code are going to do so this is all of the import uh, components that we need so let's continue and then we have this login page in first step let's create a new state for it so const of the loading and set loading equals to a new user state with type of boolean and the default value of false then i will destructure the login from the use of so you can see that this time i'm using the login method and that's it so let's scroll a little and continue after this we need to again create a new schema so let's create it and i say the const of login schema again like the register it is yop.object.shape and this shape can accept an object and this object would be the schema for our validation so let's implement it it is easier than the register we just need the username and for the username we use the yop.string.required and for the message of it we say the username is required and also let's have the password with yop.string.required and we use password is required message for it and also we can use a minimum length of eight character and also we can use password must be at least eight characters that's it so let's uh, format the document so you can see that the login schema is easier let's have a quick overview of register schema so there we have first name last name username email password address but here we just have the username and the password and it is easier so let's continue and again let's create our use form so again let's destructure some of them so i want to destructure the control and the handle submit and the form state and i will destructure again the form state to the errors i just need the errors of it and also we can have the reset so all of them are destructuring from the use form and for this use form we can use the type of i login dto because we are using typescript and it uh, will accept an uh, object for its shape so inside of this object we can use the resolver with yop resolver and we will pass the login schema to this resolver and also we can have some default values for it which can be an object and inside this object we just need to have the username with an empty string default value and also a password with again empty string this is it now let's format the document and minimize this and also minimize this schema and continue so again we need to have a handle uh, submit so it would be a const of unsubmit login form which is an async arrow function and 
This time for this async, we will receive the data with type of I login detail. So that was the I register, and this time in login page, we are receiving the I login detail. So let's continue, and as always, because we are working with an uh, async method, we use the try catch plug. It's a good idea to use try catch plug when we are working with an asynchronous function. And first, we set the loading to the true to show the spinner to the user, and then we use the await of the login that we are we are selecting from the use odd. And for this login, what we need to pass, we need the username and the password. So let's send the data that username and also send the data that password to it. And because we are awaiting after finishing of it successfully, we can use set loading of false. That's it. And on the catch block, we are receiving this error. And you can see the type of it is unknown. So first, let's set the loading to the false. And after that, because the type of error is unknown, we need to have a type for it. So Let's uh, have a new variable with name of PR, which equals to error as this new type. And we can say that for this error, I want to have a data with type of a string and also a status with type of number. And then I will check that. Uh, I will first, I will destructure the status from it. And then I will check that if the status equals to 401, I will uh, send the toasted error to the client. And I say that invalid username or password else i will simply toast that error and error occurred please contact the admin so let's uh, format the document and minimize this unsubmit login and continue so after this uh, unsubmit login form we can implement this division let's have a quick look at the register page so you can see that we are working exactly like this register and then we have this uh, division with class name of template one then we have this left side and the right side. So let's copy this class name from here because we are going to use it. So inside of the login page for this division, I want to have this and let's delete this and let's copy these two because I want to again have these comments here and this. So let's close it. We don't need it anymore and use format the document. So in the final return, we are using again a division with class name of page template one. And I want to have a left uh, section and a right section. So again, I will copy the left because it's not important for us. It's just for the showing. So let's copy it here. And you can simply copy it from the GitHub repo. And the find, uh, you can find the link of it in the video description. So this is for the left side. And then we have the right side. And for the right side, again, we want to have a form tag. So for this form, I want to have an unsubmit. And also I want to have some class names. This is it. So for the unsubmit, we can use the handle submit. And we can pass the unsubmit plugin form to it. So on this form on the submit, we'll call this handle submit. And it will pass the data to this unsubmit login form that you saw. So then let's implement the class names of it. And I use flex of one and also minimum height of 600 pixel and height of 80% and also BG of this color. And also I use the flex with flex of column and justify of center and align items of center and also rounded of right of to its large. This is it. So after this, let's create an H1 uh, with the text of login and also let's have some class name for this h1 like text of 4x large and font of bold and also margin bottom of 2 and text of this purple color so let's use the format document and inside of this form for now i just have this uh, h1 and after that i want to have some inputs so let's create them the first one would be an input feed with control of control and for the label of it we use username and for the input name I use username and for the error we check if the error that username exists we use the message of it and we have just the username and the password so for the password I can have another input field and I use the control of control and also for the label I use this password for the input name it is password this input name is exactly let me show you in react book form it's exactly the name of this password and for the input type, we use the password. And for the errors, we use errors.password.password. 
message. So let's format the document. Now we have the two input fields. Let's scroll a little and continue and create the next section. And after these two inputs, let's create another division and have some class names for it. Uh, like padding index of 4 and also margin top of 2 and margin bottom of 6 and width of 75% and also flex with gap of 2 and instead of that I want to have an h1 first so let's have it here and h1 and I will type don't have an icon and after that I want to have a link component for this link we can have a two prop and also we can have some class names so for the two we can use the path of public and we want to use the register and then let's have some class names for it like the text of this color and also the border and border of again this purple color and on hover i want to have this shadow and after this let's have a padding x of three and rounded of two x large and also duration of 200 this is it and instead of that I want to use the register so this would be linked to the register let's format the document and this is it and after this division I want to have some buttons so let's create another division here and we can use some class name for it like flex and justify of center and items of center and also gap of 4 and margin top of 6 and instead of that, I want to have some buttons, so let's create them. The first one would be a button with variant of secondary and the type of button. And also for the label, we use reset. And on click, I will call the reset. And this reset is coming from, let me show you. It is the instruction from our use form hook. So it will call the reset. And after that, let's have another button with variant of primary. And for the type of it, this time we use submit. And for the label, we use login and on click, we pass just an empty function to it. We don't want it to do anything on the click. And for the loading of it, we use the loading state. So let's use the format document. And this was the final division of the login page. And then we have the uh, form tag and division and we export default login page. So let's have a quick overview of it and it is finished. So first we import everything we want. Then we have this loading state and we have the loading sorry the login that is the extraction from use auth then we create a schema for the username and the password of our page then we use that uh, schema in this resolvers for the react hook form and then we use this default values of empty stream then we have this unsubmit login form and on the uh, uh, success we will uh, set the loading just to the false but on the error we send some uh, toast error to the client then we have the return division section we have a left side that I, I copy it and you can simply copy it from the github and then we have the right side we have a form with some inputs and h1 with some buttons so let's see all of them and see what we have in the login page so let's go back to the home and refresh so this is our website and now we are on the home page so you can see that it's a beautiful page so we have this register and also we implemented this login so you can see that now we have the register and the login. Let's test the register and the login and for that we need to start our backend project. So let's start it and continue. So I started the backend project and you can see the swagger. So if you remember, we had this art and the logs and the message and the test controller. So let's see the slash API slash art slash users. And let's use the execute and copy this and open it in a new tab. So we have these users like user 6, user 2 and the others. First, let's check the register method and I will open the terminal and I will go to the network tab to show you that what is going on. So first, uh, let's say this is the user. User, this is just a simple test. Or let's say the user n1 and uh, the user l1. And this is just a simple test. Or you can use user f name or user l name. And for the username, we say user user 
and this is it so let's copy this for the email we say user user at gmail.com for the password you can simply copy this user user three times so one two three and for the address you can use anything for example this it's not important and the, let's call the register and see the result so you can see that the register was successful please log in. so we automatically redirect it to the slash login and if you check the network you can see that we have the register and the request url was slash api slash auth slash register and the response was user created successfully that's so good and this is the payload that we sent to the back end and this is it now let's log in with this user so let's copy this username which was user user and use its password which is again three time of it and let's use the login and see the result where login was successful and we automatically you can see that redirected to the slash dashboard that's so good and it means that the register and the login is working so let's check the login so we send the password and the username to the back end and if we see the uh, response you can see that in the response we are receiving new object and we have a new token which is this and we have the user info with id username last name and the others and the role of it is user that's so good so now you can see that everything is okay and we implemented the slash dashboard this is the sidebar this is the header and we can use this dashboard this dashboard will go to the home the home page of the dashboard so if i go to the home page i cannot see the dashboard but if I press this dashboard button, you can see that I'm going to a slash dashboard. And if I use, uh, and, uh, let's go to the dashboard. If I use the logout, I will be redirected automatically to the homepage. So let's log in again using this. And this time, let's check the auth loading and the auth and the username and the user roles. Now we can see that we don't have anything. The auth is a closed red uh, log. So let's log in. And login was successful. We redirected to the slash dashboard. You can see that now the art is a green open uh, and unlocked icon. And my username is this, and my role is this. And now you can see that I'm here. So let's log out and test one of the other usernames. For example, uh, owner. For example, this username Ahmad is me. So let's log in. And if I use the its password and login so you can see that again i'm here but this time username is mamad and user role is owner let's check an admin for example this user 7 is admin let's log out and login again well this time you can see that i'm here and my username is user 7 and user role is admin and let's have a manager like this user 9 for example is manager so let's log out and login again username password so login was successful and you can see that this is user 9 and the user role is manager so we implemented the user uh, the user register page and the user login page and then we can implement the other pages in this section let's implement the not found page so let's go to the explorer and in the pages and in the public let's open the not found page well this is it so some of our pages are not really important and they has not any special functionality so we don't pay attention to these pages a lot and we are most focused on the pages with authentication and authorization functionalities so let's copy paste this uh, page from our github repo and continue well this is it so you can simply copy paste this uh, content from the github repo this is not an important page for us first let's see the result of it on our website so if we go to somewhere that is not exist for example let's use a random address you can see that we will be automatically redirected to the slash 404 and we have this not found page so this is just a simple division and we have this 404 icon and we have the requested page not found let's take a look at its uh, codes and continue so here in the codes we have this uh, division and we are using the class name of page template one then we have another division and inside of that we are using this icon of tv error 404 and an h1 with these classes and the text of the requested page not found and for the beauty of it we are using the uh, bg of red and also a border of white and we are using ring and ring of red of 600 so this is it 
Again, you can copy this from the GitHub repo. This is not an important page, so let's close it and go to the next section. And in this section, let's implement the unauthorized page. So let's again go here to the public and unauthorized page. And again, let's paste all of the code from the GitHub repo here. This page has not any special functionalities and it is exactly like the 404 or not found page. You can see that we are using this division with template of one. And again, we are using another division with this icon of TV hand stop. And also at h1 bit there, you don't have access to requested page. And again, we are using a BG of red and a border of white and also a ring of red of 600. Let's see it on the front end. So this is for the unauthorized. So let's test it. And here, if I go to somewhere that I'm not authorized, for example, you can see that I'm not logged in the website, so I cannot go to the dashboard. So if I try a slash dashboard, let's test it. Well, we will be automatically redirected to a slash unauthorized. And we can see this beautiful page. So we have this icon. We have this you don't have access to requested page text here. And this is the unauthorized page. So let's go back to our codes and continue. And here let's close the unauthorized page and have a quick overview of the pages here. So we implemented the home page. Yeah. And also the login page. And the not found and the register page and also the unauthorized page. So all of our uh, public pages are implemented. Now let's go to the dashboard. We need to implement the dashboard page, but before that I want to have a reusable component and I will use this reusable component for some of my pages. So let's create it. I want to create a template. Let's close everything and go to the components and here inside of the uh, dashboard I want to create a new folder with name of page access and inside of this page access let's create it so let's add page access template.ts6 here and let's import the react node from the react and also let's import the icon type we need it from the react icons and after that let's create an interface of iprops and for this interface we are going to have some props. So for example, we are receiving a role with type of a string. And also we need to receive an icon with type of this icon top that we are importing from React icons. And also let's have a color with type of a string. And also a children with type of React node. And this children is optional. After this interface, let's implement our component. So I will use RAFCE to create our component. And I delete this import React. I don't need it. Let's minimize this iProps. And here we need to receive some props. And the type of it would be iProps. So let's minimize this explorer and receive all of them. So I receive the role and also the icon. And I rename this icon to this icon. And also let's use the color and also the children. So we are receiving all of these from our iProps and I'm destructuring it. And this is it. So after it, we have this return section. And here, let's delete this page access template. And for this division, let's have a, a class name of page template tree. And after that, I want to have an inline style for it. So let's use an inline style because we are using Tailwind. And this is the way that we are using from the dynamic classes. So I will use the border color of color. And this is it. let's have a format document for it. So that's it. So inside of this division, I want to have a section. So let's create this section. And for it, let's have a class name of week of full and also flex and justify of center and the line items of center and gap of eight. So this is it. And inside of this section, let's create a new division here. And inside of this division, I want to have the icon that I am receiving from the props that's it and I can have a class name of text 6 x large and after that let's have another uh, style for it so I will use the color of this receiving color so let's format the document again so inside of this uh, page template 3 I have this and also then we have a section 
And inside of this section, first, we have a division, and inside of it, we have this icon with class name of text 6x large. And also, we have a style with color of, color for it, and that's it. So, let's scroll a little and continue. And after that, I want to have another division. And again, for this division, I want to have a class name, like a space y of 2, to have some space between them. Then again, I want to have an, a style. So let's use another like this. Let's use an object. And instead of that, again, I use this color equals to the receiving color. That's it. And instead of this division, let's have an h2. And for the h2, we can have the class name of text of 4x large. And what do we need to show inside of this h2? I want to show that this is the role page. And this role is coming from the this role which is coming from the props and that's it and after this h2 let's have another h2 with the class name of text of md and inside of this h2 i want to show that you must have the role this role again is coming from the uh, props and after that i will type access to see this page so this role and this role would be dynamic and they would be come from the props this is it and after this division let's delete this space so the section is finished and then we can have another section and inside of this section i want to render the children of this component so let's use the format document so i created a reusable component here and let's have an enter here so we imported these and we have this i props and in this uh, page access template we will receive the role and the icon and the color and the children and we will show them like this so this is it let's close this page access template and go to the next section and uh, in this section i want to use this page access template inside of the dashboard page so let's go and close everything and go to the game pages and dashboard and dashboard page this is it And first, let's import this page access template that we created just right now. And after that, let's import this icon, VG Globe Americas. And we want to import it from React Icons slash BS. And this is it. After that, we have the dashboard page. And we are returning this dashboard page as an export default. So let's delete this dashboard page. And here for the main division, let's use class name of uh, page template 2. Then inside of that, I want to use my page access template. So let's use it. This is it. And we can pass some children to it. So for this page template access, we can use a color. So I want to use sharp 000, uh, which would be black. And then I want to use this icon. So I will pass the, this icon of BS Globe Americas to it. And after that, let's have a role for it. So for the role, I'm going to use dashboard. That's it. So let's use the format document. So we created this division with this template and then we are using this page access template. We are passing a color and an icon and a role to it. Then we can pass some children to it and let's check it again. Our uh, children would be rendered here in the second section. So I created division here and for this division, I want to use a class named of text 3x large and also a space y of two. And inside of this division, I want to have an H1, and in this H1, I will type dashboard access can be either another H1 with owner and another H1 with admin. Let's have another one with the manager, and also let's have another one with user. So this is it. easy and simple. Let's format the document. So this division is the children that we are passing to this page access template, and this is it. Now I think we can test it. So this is the dashboard page. Let's go to the website and check the result until now. So let's go to the home page. And here, first, let's log in. For example, I use the name of Mamad, which is one of our usernames. And also, let's have its password to log in. Let's check the result where well, this is it. Now you can see that we have this uh, beautiful template. And we are in a slash dashboard. And we are using that page access template component so we are passing this icon and this is dashboard page and so you must have 
dashboard access to see this page and this is the children of it that we are passing so good so we are using the, the uh, color of black for this dashboard and this is it so now you can see that you can send any type of props for it for example i'm sending the color and this icon and this uh, dashboard row to it and it would render everything as what we want so i think the dashboard page is completed let's continue and implement the next sections in this section let's implement the user page so let's close this dashboard page we don't need it anymore and go back to our pages and the dashboard so now we need to implement the user page so let's go to the user page and this is it first let's import again the page access template and then let's import the fi user let's minimize this or you know what instead of minimizing it let's go back to the dashboard page and from here let's copy this class name equals to page template 2 because it's exactly like it let's close this explorer and then let's paste this class name for our main division and let's delete this user page for it we just simply need to return a new uh, page access template and for this page access template component we can have a color again and the color and an icon and row so for the color i use this color and after that i can have this icon of for user and also a role of user so let's uh, format the document so this is our user page and a user can access to this uh, we will implement the next pages and then we uh, test all of them together so this is it let's uh, go to the next page and the next page is manager page so let's open our manager page and minimize it first let's import the required icons and the so let's copy this again because it's like it and in the manager page let's uh, paste it here so we again need the page access template but for the manager page i want to use another icon so i will type another icon of f of user type this is it and again let's close this dashboard and let's uh, copy all of this section because it's like this so let's uh, paste that again here so inside of the manager page again i want to have just a simple division with class name of page template 2 and this time let's delete this and also this and this so for the color i will use this color and also for the icon let's copy this fa user and also for the role i simply use the manager so let's copy the manager from here we have it uh, by the way i really enjoy the copy pasting because it helps me to speed up my works and let's uh, format the document and that's it so we implemented our manager page again like the user page uh, we need to import the page access template and if our user type and again we have a division with class name of page template 2 and again we use page access template with this color and also we use the icon of if a user type and also we use a role of manager and that's it now let's uh, go to the next step and in the next step uh, after the user and the manager it's time to implement the admin page so let's open the admin page and it is here and again inside of this admin page let's copy this and paste them here so again we need to use the page access template but this time instead of the fa user type i want to use another icon of fa user shield this is it and let's copy this section quickly from the manager page and use it here so this is it inside of this admin page we have in the return we use the division with class name of page template 2 let's copy this admin for the role and also let's use this icon again in this uh, page access template and for this let's change it so i want to use 9 3 3 3 E A. This is it. And let's use the format document. So this is the admin page. You can see that the structure are equal. So 
we are just using this division with the page template too so now you can see that it is really a good idea to create reusable things and that thing can be either a component or a tailwind css classes like page template too so this is the admin page and i think it's okay for now let's go to the next step and the next step would be the owner page so let's open the owner page and this is it again let's copy these two sections from here and paste them here in the top of our component so again we need to use the page access template but this time for the owner page i want to use fa user card that's it and let's quickly copy the section again this division so uh, i will paste that division instead of this so i have a division with class name of page template 2 and let's copy this owner and paste it here inside of this role and for the icon let's copy the fa user card this is it and also let's change this color so i want to use 3 b 3 5 4 9 this is it so let's use the format document and that's it easy and simple we implemented four different pages with uh, some reusable components and tailwind css classes let's have a quick overview of it so we have page template 2 and page access template in the user page and also in the manager page and in the admin page and also in the owner page now let's close all of them and minimize everything now let's go and test these four pages and see what is the result of this so now let's check everything and we saw that we created this owner page and admin page and manager page and user page buttons to handle all of the accesses that we want to test so let's uh, first let's see that what is our role so my role is owner but i will log out and i will use a user a simple user like user six so let's log in with this user so as a user so you can see that uh, this is the dashboard page so dashboard access can be one of these owner admin manager and user so everybody has access to the dashboard and let's check the user page well this is the user page you must have user access to see this page so we have the user access because the role is user then we have the manager page where we don't have the, to the access to this requested page and we will be redirected automatically to a slash unauthorized this is so good let's go back to the dashboard so we don't have access to manager let's check the admin we don't have access so good let's go to the owner well we don't have access that's so good everything is uh, calculated by the role of us that's good so let's go back to the dashboard so this was for the user the user only have access to the user the user page let's log out and let's find the manager like for example this is manager user 2 and let's log in with this user and you can see that we have access to dashboard with the manager role so good do we have access to user page yes the manager has access then let's check the manager page well this is manager page and you must have manager access to see this page that's good so we have access to manager page with the role of manager then what the admin don't have access good and also let's check the owner well we don't have access to owner that's so good so let's log out and again let's have another access which is admin so this is admin user one let's log in okay user one one two three for the password so this time our role is admin and we have access to dashboard that's good user page well we have access then manager page good we have access then let's check the admin page well this time we have access to admin page that's good and also let's check the owner page well we don't have access to the uh, owner page with role of admin but we have access to user and manager and admin that's so good let's check the final role which is uh, man uh, the owner and the owner was man man i think yes this is the username of our owner by the way Mamad is the name of me <laughs> and let's use the username of Mamad. my name is in fact my name is muhammad 
But I use this mamad and let's use the password one, two, three times. So this time I'm owner and I must have access to everything. So I have access to dashboard. Yeah. Let's go to the user page. Yes, I have access. And let's go to the manager page. I have access. Let's go to the admin page. Yes, I have access. I'm owner. So I have access to everything. Now let's go to the owner page. And you can see that this is owner page. You must have owner access to see this page. So this is the part of our business logic that you want to implement. We want to have access like this. And all of these accesses is coming from the utils of our art. Let me show you that. So if I go back here to the SRC and to the art, and I think it was in the art of utils, yes. So everything is coming from these four arrays. So you can see that for the all access, we must be owner or admin or manager or user. But for example, for the admin access, we can only be admin or owner. So let's go back to our website. So if I want to have access to the admin page, I must be owner or admin. And because I'm owner, I'm, my role is owner, I have access to this admin. So this is the business logic that we want to use. And this was the test of it. So let's continue and go to the next step. Now let's go and implement the next section. So let's close this out. Now I want to implement a, a spinner component and I want to use it to show the loading in my dashboard page. So let's open the explorer and minimize everything and this time let's go to the SRC and components and sorry general. So inside of the general we previously created an auth spinner here but this time I want to create a general spinner. So let's right click and add a new file with name of spinner.tsx. That's it. And let's use RAFCE to create the component here. And let's delete this React. I don't need it. This is just a simple component. And here, let's delete this spinner. And here, I just want to have some simple class names like margin X of auto and width of 80, and also height of 80, and border of 8, and also border purple of 300. And for the border of top, I use another color, which is purple of 700. And also let's have a rounded of full and also an animate of spin. This is it. Let's use the format document. So this is just a simple division, this spinner. So let's have a quick uh, test of it. So if I go to the, let's say, for example, go to the pages, dashboard and dashboard page. So here inside of this uh, page template, let's uh, comment this for a moment and let's use our spinner to see it. So this spinner is coming from there. Uh, components general spinner and let's see it inside of the dashboard page and let's go to the dashboard so this is it. you can see that this is a simple spinner component that i want to show when i'm using the uh, data loading or when i'm using the post method or the get method let's go back and uncomment uh, the previous sections and delete this and uh, let's use ctrl z so delete this spinner and uncomment this and close this so let's close everything and check it again so in component general spinner we created this spinner component and now we can use it in all of our projects so let's close it and go to the next section and for the next section i want to implement my logs page so let's go to the src and pages and dashboard and now let's go to the my logs page this is it let's minimize this so first we need to import some components so let's do this so i will import the use effect and use a set from the react also i need the ilog dto and axios instance and also my logs url and the toast and also this spin that we just created it in the component general and also, we need to use the moment from moment library because we want to work with the date in this component. So this is it. And inside of this my logs page, let's create our states here. So I will create the first state as my logs and set my logs, which equals the user state. So we are using TypeScript, so we can easily define the type of ilogdto array for it. And for the initial value or the default values, 
you can simply use an empty array this is it then let's have another state for the loading and also set loading so we, we want to show the loading with the spinner component and we say that this is a user state with type of boolean with a default value of false that's it and after that let's create a new uh, function here and I will create a const of get logs which equals to an async arrow function. So what I need to implement, the first thing is I want to use a try catch block because we are using an async method and we are going to call the backend. This is it. And after that, inside the try block, let's use the set loading of true. So we will set the loading state to true. And after that, let's say the const of response equals to await of axios in instance dot get method. So we need to use this get method, but because we are in the type script, we can simply pass the uh, return type to it. So we say that the return type of this method is an i log dto array. And what is the URL of it? It is my logs URL, and we are importing it from the utils global config, and that's it. So after awaiting for this, we can simply uh, destructure the data from the response, and after that, we can use this uh, data to set my log so we say that set my logs of data and also let's use the set loading of false so this is in the try block we will call the backend and we will get our data and we set to the logs and then we set the loading to false but what if we have the any type of error so we can simply uh, show a toast of error with this message of an error happened please contact the admins and after that we can set the loading to the false. This is it. So let's use the format document and we created a get logs. So let's minimize this. And after this get logs, we can simply use a use effect hook here. This is it. And also let's use an empty array for its dependency. And instead of this, we can simply call get logs. This is it. Let's use the format document. So after the component is mounted, this use effect will be called and the get logs would be called and we will have the logs inside of our logs or our my logs state. This is it. So after this uh, use effect, we will check and we say that if the loading is true, what we need to do, we need to return a division and inside of this division, we simply want to return the spinner component. That's it. And for this division, we can simply use the class name of width of full. This is it. So let's format the document. So the first thing is if we are in the loading state, we return a division with class name of width of full. And instead of that, we'll use this spinner, else we return another component. So let's delete this and let's press enter. So for the main division, let's have class name of page template two. So instead of this, I want to have an H1. So let's create it h1 and i will use this uh, my logs text for it so let's use the format document and for this h1 let's have a class name of text of 2x large and also font of bold again format document so what do we need to have here you can use any structure you want so you know that we have some logs and we want to show it to the user you can use cards you can use some divs with flex or with grid or also you can use table i simply use a simple structure here so let's create it and let's scroll top and after this h1 uh, i want to have another division and in this division let's use the class name of page template three and items of stretch so this is page template three let's have a quick look on it so this is page template three and it is on the index.css and we created it previously. So let's continue. And here, inside of this division, we, uh, we will use the class name of page template three and items of stretch. And inside of this division, let's have another division for the top row. So what do we need to use inside of this division? The first thing is let's use some class names for it. So it would be grid. So let's use a grid and grid columns of six. So we will have six columns. And instead of that, I want to have padding of two and also a border of two and border gray of 200 and also rounded of LG. So this is the first row of us. So we can use just simple uh, divisions or simple other uh, elements. I use some span. So let's have an span with the now, then let's have an span with date. And after that, let's have username 
And after that, let's have another span with class name of call span of three. So it will take three column and we will use description. So this is it. And we have one division on the top. After that, let's open a curly brace to use JavaScript. And instead of that, I want to uh, take a look at my log. So we will have uh, an array here, an array of I log DT, and we want to map over it. So let's use my logs that map function. And you know that inside of this map function, we can pass an arrow function to it. So we want to receive the item and index for each one of the logs. And for each one, we want to return a division. Let's scroll a little to see it better. So for this division, I want to have a key of index. So this is important for the React. And after this key, let's have some class names for it, like grid and also grid columns of six. And again, padding of two and border of two, border gray of 200 and also rounded up LG just like the top one. Instead of this division, like the top, let's have some span. So I want to have an span with the value of index plus one because the index starts from the zero, but we want to start from one. This is it. And after that, let's have another span with the value of moment of item that created that because this is a raw data string and using the moment of this raw string dot from now, we will show it better. This is it. So after this span, Let's have another span and instead of that, I will use the item dot username. And after that, let's have another span with the class name of call span of three. And also I use the item dot description. So this is it. And after that, we will export default my logs page. So I think everything is okay. Let's format the document. So we created this functional component and we have some state and we have the get logs method. And then in use effect, we call it to get the data from the back end. Then we have the, uh, this uh, section, we check that if the loading is true, we say please return a division with, with a full, with a spinner. And then let's implement this. So we have a beautiful structure. And instead of using a table or card, I just simply use this structure with grid. So this is the uh, my log space. Let's go to the front end and check it. And here first, let's refresh. So I'm the owner of website and this is my role. So let's go to the my logs and the my logs is here. So if I click on the my logs, you saw the spinner and then we are in the slash dashboard slash my logs. And this is the structure. So you can see it. We have no date, username, description, and we have it. So a few seconds ago, six minutes ago, 21 minutes ago, and the other. So you can see all logs of this user with his username and also a description. So a few seconds ago, the username was Mamad and the description is a new token generated. Then we have six minutes ago, a new token generated. 21 minutes ago, a new login. It's not important what is this, but you saw them on the backend project. The important thing is this is a log and it is coming from the backend and it belongs to this user because when we are going to the my logs, we just can see the logs of the logged in user. So this is, I think it's okay. Let's go back and continue to the next section. In this section, I want to implement the system logs page. So let's, I don't close it because I can, I think I can copy some of these classes. So let's uh, let the my logs page that exists to be open and go to the system logs page, which is this page. And first, let's import the required components inside of it. So I will import the use effect and use the state from the React. And then I need the I log DTO again and the Axios in instance. Then let's use the logs URL. And also let's use the toast. And also I need the spinner and the moment. So this is it. And you know what? Let's go here and check the states. Well, we have my logs again. Everything is the same. So let's copy all of this from here and paste it here. So we have two states of logs and set my logs and that's it. And after that, let's copy the get logs function here and we can change it as what we want. So let's copy it and paste it here. So we have the get logs function, which is an async arrow function. And instead of this try, first we say that Please use the set loading of true for us. Then we say constant response equals to await us axios in instance.get. Again, the type of the return uh, of this uh, axios in instance is ilogdto. 
array, but this time it is not my logs URL and it is logs URL. So let's copy this logs URL and paste it here. And after that, again with the structure of the data, yes, from the response, and we use the set my logs of uh, data. But uh, I think this time this because this is not the uh, my logs and this is all logs, so we can change this. So let's change this to the logs and set logs. It's a better idea, I think. And here instead of my logs, I will use set logs. That's it. And after that, let's use the set loading of false. That's good. Then we have the catch uh, section, and here we say that toast of error of it's okay. Please contact admins and set loading to false. That's it. And let's go here and use this use effect. So let's copy it again. And after this get logs, I again use the use effect, and I say that when the component is mounted, please run the get logs for us. And after that, what do we have? So I think we can use it again. So let's copy this section and go back. And after this use effect, let's paste it. So we have this loading state again, and we check that if the loading state is true, please return a division with class name of with a full. And also let's show the spinner and the division. So let's use a format document. That's good. And let's uh, check the final version, which is this. So in the final, you know what? Again, let's copy this and use it again because we have a lot of them here. So let's copy all of the division here because the structure is the same, just we have a little change in the data. So let's copy it and paste it here and check it. So uh, first thing is we need to change this my log. So let's use the logs here to avoid this error. This is it. Now let's use the format document and now let's check it. So the first thing is we have a division with class name of page template 2, that's good. Then we have the h1 with the, the, again the same class name, but this time it is not my logs. It is the system log. So let's copy this system from here to be sure about character. So this time we have an h1 with system logs. Then we have another division with class name of page template of 3 and also items of a stretch. That's good. Then uh, we are using the same grid. So I think everything is okay. So we are using grid with grid columns of six. And also we are using padding of two and border of two and border gray of 200 and also round of LG. Then we have a span of no and date and username. And then we have again the color span of three of description. That's good. And after that, we have again the logs.map. So we are receiving the item and index and just like the top, we are returning a division with key of index and also a class name of grid with grid columns of six, padding of two, border of two, and border gray of 200, and rounded of LG. Then we can have again the span of index plus one because the index starts from the zero. Then we use a span of uh, a span with value of moment of item that created at dot from now. And then we can use item dot username and an span with class name of color span three with item dot description and that's it so i think everything is okay and uh, let's use the format document so we created two states here but this time instead of my logs i used logs because this is all system logs then we have get logs and use effect and a loading and also we are rendering the final result so let's go to the front end and check the result until now so let's refresh Okay, and let's go back to the uh, system logs, which is all logs here. So we are going to a slash uh, dashboard a slash system logs. And here you can see that here we have access to all user logs. For example, this is the Mahmad. Then we have username three minutes ago, user two, user six, Mahmad, user nine, user seven. You can see all of the logs of the system, user seven, user eight, Johnny. And we have access to everything so we can see all logs of our system but we saw that we can have some role-based authorization so the system log is a protected one let me show you that for example let's use an user so who's user for example user 6 is a simple user and if i log out and log in with a simple user let's check the access so do we have access to the my logs yes every user has access to its logs and we implemented it 
uh, let me show you that if I go to the uh, here inside of the roads index so uh, here we are using this art card uh, for the all access roads here we are using dashboard and send message and inbox and my log so my logs is here instead of all access roads but uh, I think for the admin access we can find the system logs yes system logs need the admin access role so we must be let's check the admin access role the admin is either a uh, role of owner or role of admin so only the owner and the admin can have access to system logs let's test it so because i'm user i can have access to my logs everybody has access to my logs but let's check the all logs and where it is slash unauthorized because we don't have access to the uh, let's go back again here we don't have access to the all logs or the uh, system logs page and this is because we are user now let's test the manager page quickly so this is manager user 2 is a manager let's go here log out and login so user 2 is a manager and his role is manager so do you have access to my logs yes a few seconds ago we have a new login and we have new login and send message and the others but do we have access to all logs? No, we don't have access because we are manager. Now let's test an admin. So this is admin, user one is an admin. Let's log out and log in with admin. Well, do we have access to my logs? Yes, we can see all logs of the user one. And let's check the all logs. Well, this time we have access to system logs. Why? Because we are admin and the admin and the owner can have access. You can see that. We can see all of even the a few seconds ago logs of the user 1 and the user 2 and the user 6 and the others like Mamad and the others because we are admin and we have access no let's log out and check the owner the owner was I think yeah Mamad is an owner which is me so let's log in I am the owner of the system well because I'm owner I have access to my logs yes and I have access to all logs so this is the access of the system logs and now let's uh, continue and go to the next step. Now let's implement the inbox page. So let's open the explorer and go to src and pages and dashboard. And here let's open the inbox page. Well, this is the inbox page. Let's import some components that we need. First, let's close the explorer. And I import the use effect and use a state from the React. Then I need I message DTO and also I need Axios instance and my message URL and also the toast and the spinner component. And also we need the moment and I need two icons of MD input and MD output. And also I need use out hook and I use all of them inside of this component. So after that, Let's create some states here. Before the states, first I destructure the user from the use out because I need this user. Then let's create a message and also a set message and we will create a user state for it with the type of I message DTO array and I will use an uh, empty array for it. So the messages would be an empty array in the initial phase. After that, let's create a const of loading and the set loading which equals the user state with the, the type of boolean and also I use the initial value of false for it and this is it. After that, I will create a const of get my message function which is an asynchronous arrow function to get my message from the backend and instead of that I will use a try catch and in the try first I set the loading to the true to show the spinner to the user and after that I use const of response equals to await of Axios instance dot get and for the type of the response I use I message DTO array and I will send them my message URL to this Axios instance dot get and after that I will destructure the data from this response and I need this data so after that I will use the set message of data and I will set this data to the uh, message state and after that I will set the loading to false so this is in the case of the try and the success but on the catch block, which is the case of failure, I will receive this error. And after that, I will send the toast.error with the message of an error happened. Please contact the admins. And then I use the set loading of false. 
this is it and I will use this get my message in a new use effect so let's minimize this and after this get my message let's create a use effect hook and here I simply call get my message this is it so after mounting the component this get message would be called and that's it so let's continue and after this use effect I will check that if the loading state is true I will simply return a new division and in this division I will use a class name of Vita full and I will use this spinner component that's it so let's format the document so if the loading is true we will return this else we will come to the final return section so let's delete this and here I will use a, a class name of page template 2 and inside of this division I want to use a new h1 and inside of it I will use inbox and we need some class names like text to x large and font of bold so let's use format document so we have this division and first we have this h1 after this let's have a new division here and for this division let's use the class name of page template of 3 and also items stretch then I will use a new, a new division here and I will use class names of grid and also grid columns of 8 and also padding of 2 and border of 2 and also border gray of 200 and rounded up LG so I will using this grid for uh, some sort of tables like the previous section so let's use some spans with the date and also another span with type then I want to have another span with class names of called a span of 4 so this will take four columns and I will use text for it and after that let's have another span for the sender as well as another span for receiver so let's use format document so inside this division I'm using these spans and after these divisions let's open a curly brace to use javascript and here I will use a messages.map and I will map over them so I want to receive the item and I will return a new division with the key of item.id and let's use the format document so this is it we need to map over the messages and we create a new structure with the uh, structure like this so you know what I think we can copy these classes from here so let's copy these class names and check it exactly we need them so for the main division inside of the map after the key I will use again the classes of grid and grid columns of 8, padding of 2, border of 2, border gray of 200, and rounded of LG, exactly like the top. After that, we need to have some spans, so let's use the spans like this. So let's copy all of this again and reuse them here. So let's use the format document, this is it. So for the first one, I want to delete this date and I will open a curly brace and I use moment of item that created at dot from no this is it so for the first one i use the moment of item that created at dot from no and after that instead of this because we have two different types i open a curly brace here and i will check that if the item dot sender username equals to user dot username i will use the md output icon with class names of text to each large with text purple of 500 else I will use MD input with class name of text to x large and text green of 500. So we will use MD output and MD input, and they are coming from React icons slash MD. And this is, let's format the document again. So for the second span, we use this, and this is for the type. After that, we have the text. So let's delete this. And I will use the item.txt. Then we have the sender. So after this we have the item dot sender username and for the final one we can have item dot receiver username and then we have this division and we finished everything then we export default the inbox so let's use the format document this is it so i think it's okay and let's go and check this on the front end so let's log in to our website i use for example my math for the username and its password and login was successful let's go to the inbox for example you can see that for this I have this icon of output 
This is the input and this is the output. So the sender is Mamad. Mamad is the logged in user. So this is an output message. The receiver was user two. And here you can see that this is an input. So uh, the text is Hi Mamad and the sender was user two and the receiver was the Mamad which who is the logged in user. So this is it. This is the inbox page. And let's go back to our VS code. So this was the inbox page and I think it's okay and it's completed. So let's go to the next task. After the inbox page, I want to implement the next page which is related to inbox and it is all messages. Let's find it. This is it. The difference is the input, uh, sorry, the inbox page is accessible by all users but the all message is protected and it is accessed just by the owner and the admins so let's first import the required components and the functions here here we need to import the use effect and the user state and also we need the i message dto and axios instance also we need all message url and toast and a spinner component and also we need moment this is it so Let's go and create uh, our required states here. But because again we are working with the messages, I think we can copy some of the required uh, codes from the inbox page. So let's check it. We don't need the user anymore, but we need these two. So let's copy these two states from the inbox page that we created it right now. So const of message and set message equals to a user state with the type of i message DTO array and we use an uh, empty array for its default values then we can use the lo loading and set loading again we need it and also we need a uh, function to call all of the messages so let's copy this function and use it again so in this time instead of get my message we can use the name of get all message because this is not my message so for the get all message, again, we are using an asynchronous function and on the try, we can use the set loading of true. That's okay. So after that, we can use const of response equals to await of axios instance.get with the return type of i message dto array. And for the uh, URL of it, we can use all message URL because it's different. And let's check it. So in the global config, you can see that the all message URL equals to a slash message, but my message URL equals to a slash message a slash my. This is it. Let's go back to the all message. So we use the all message URL inside of the axios instance.get as the URL. Then we can destructure the data from the response and we use the set message of data. So we store this data in the uh, message state. After that, we can use set loading of false. Then in the catch, Again, we can use the same methods and we use the toast.error of and error happened with please contact admins and set loading of false. Good. Let's copy the next line because we need again the use effect. So let's copy it. And after this, I will use the use effect of this and in this use effect, I will call this function. Let's use format document. So we use this function to get all messages from the server. Then in the use effect, we call it. That's it. Then we need to check the loading. So let's go here and copy this. You can again use this same business logic here. And after this use effect in the all message, I say that if the loading state is true, please return a division with class names of with full. And I use an spinner component in this situation. And uh, I think it's okay. Then let's go to the final one. And here we can use class names of and for this class names, before that, let's check it. I think, yeah, I think it's a good idea to copy all of these and use it. So let's minimize this and copy it. And now let's go back here and instead of this, let's paste it. Good and easy. So let's use the format document and check everything. The first thing is we have a division with class name of page template two. That's okay. Then we have an H1 with text to X large and font bold, but instead of inbox, I think we can use all messages. After that, we can have this division with class name of page template three and item stretch. Then we have a division again with the grid. The classes are good for us. And that's it. After that, we have this date and then we have the type 
and the text and the sender and the receiver but this time we don't want to use the type why because we don't have the input and the output this is the all message so let's uh, delete this type we just need to have the date and the text and the sender and the receiver and that's it so this time we, we have uh, you see you can see that this is a grid with grid columns of eight so we can have eight columns this is four uh, five and uh, six and seven so we can change these two colors span of five and also let's change this so if we take five columns this time that's better then we have the date span and the text span and the sender and a receiver this is it so you can either change this grid to grid columns of seven or a better idea is to use color span of five this is a, the grid related content so let's continue our uh, all message page and then after the sender and receiver the div is finished and we have the message.map again that's okay we have a division with key of item.id that's good again we have the grid and the other classes they are all good and again we have the span with moment of item that created that that from now it will work again then we have a span and uh, we used for the md output and the md input icon but this time we don't need it so let's delete this and we have a span with class name of call span of five with item that takes then we have item that sender username and item that receiver username so i think it's okay let's format the document and let's check the result on the front end and here first let's refresh to be sure about everything so you can see that the user is owner so let's check the all message and you can see that we have access to all messages because we are owner we can see that for example for two months ago this was the text the sender was Mamad and user 2 and the next one was between user 1 and the user 9 user 2 and Mamad, user 6 and user 1 and this logged in user can see all messages of the system because he has owner access let's see the other access for example for the uh, typical users for example user 6 let's log in and see the result well i am a user so if i go to the uh, inbox i can see any sort of message that i am uh, either the sender or a receiver for example here i'm the uh, i'm user 6 so here i'm the sender and here i'm the receiver this is the inbox but if i go to the all message well we will be redirected automatically to a slash unauthorized that's so good then let's check a manager for example user 2 log out and login this is a manager so we have the user role of manager and if i go to inbox well i have access to any uh, type of messages that the sender or the receiver is user 2 and if i check the all messages i don't have access good let's log out and let's find an admin for example this is user one this is an admin if i log in uh, inbox yes i have access to inbox and all messages yes i have access to all messages because i'm an admin and we checked the owner previously so everything is okay and everything is fine so i think everything is okay let's continue and let's close this and also let's minimize everything and go to the next section now i want to create a new page for the sending message but before that i want to create a component for the username combo box so let's create it and i need to go to the src and i want to create a new component so let's go to the components then go to the dashboard and here we need to create a new folder for it so let's create a new folder for the send message and inside of this let's create a new file with name of the username combo box.tsx and here i will use rafce this is it first let's delete this react i just need to import the use state from the react and then i will import the control and the controller from react hook for because we need to use the react hook form inside of this component and i will create an interface of iprobs for this component and for the props what do we need the first thing is we need to receive the usernames as an uh, a string array after that we need to receive a control which is a type of 
control of any and any this generic control is coming from react hook form after that i need to receive a name as the string and also i can have an error which is type of a string and it is optional so this is it and after this we need to receive some props so let's destructure all of them from the i props which are a username and so the control and the name and the error so we receive all of them from the props and destructure them and I will create a new state for the input value and set input value, which is a user state with a default value of an empty string and a type of a string. And after that, let's have another state with the name of show combo box and set show combo box, which equals to user state with type of boolean. And I will use a default value of false for it. So this is it. And after that, I will use a const of render top row which equals to an arrow function and this in this arrow function i want to decide the top row uh, content so i use that if the error exists i can simply return a new span with the class names of text red of 600 and font of semi bold and the value of error so if error exists i will return this span else i will return a new label with the class name of font of semi bold and two this is it and after that Let's create a new let of usernames to show a variable which occurs to if the input value exists, we will use the usernames.filter and we receive the queue and we will check that if the queue includes the input value, else we use usernames. And after that, let's create a const of dynamic class name which occurs to we will check that if the error exists, we will use the uh, values of border red of 500 and rounded of lg else we use border of this color so let's use the format document so what we have done in this uh, three different sections let's have some enter so we create the const of render top row function and we check if the error exists we will return this span else we return this label then we have a username to show and if the input value exists we will filter the usernames with the values that enclose this input value else we return the all username then we created this const of dynamic class names and if we have error we simply return a border of red of 500 that's it then let's continue and work on the final section so if we have a division let's delete this and for the main division let's have some class names of padding x of 4 and also bonding y of 2 and width of 75 percent so this is it after this i want to first uh, render the top row and this render top row would be dynamically rendered from the section this is it so let's use the format document that's it and after this let's have the structure for it so i want to use a controller so what do we need for this controller the first thing is we need to have a name for it so i will receive this from the props I will use name after that I want to receive the control so I'm receiving this control from the props and after that I want to have the render section this render section will render everything for us so inside of that what do we need to have uh, we need to receive the uh, variables of it so we will receive them but I will destructure them and I will receive the feed and I will return fragment instead of it so let's just uh, format the document for it so we have this controller and we have a name and a control and a render for it so inside of this render you can see the structure of it we have the render instead of that we use an arrow function and for the input of this arrow function we are receiving something and we, we can destructure it and we can receive the field from it and then we can return this uh, a fragment and inside of this fragment we can have an input now let's use the format document to see it better well this is it so what do we need for this input for the type i will use a text then i have the autocomplete so i use off for this autocomplete and after that i can have some class names of dynamic class names so i will calculate the class names of this input here and i will use them inside of my input after that let's use the value which equals to input value and then let's use an unchanged so 
On the unchanged, you, can, you know that we can receive an arrow function, and for this arrow function, we will receive the event, and then we use that. If the show combo box is false, we will uh, use the set show combo box to true, and then we use the let value equals to event.target. So we destructure the value from the event.target, then we will set the input value to this value, and after that, we will call the field dot unchanged with this value. So this value would be passed to the React hook for, and after that we check that if the username dot includes the value, we can use the set show combo box of false, and after that we can use an unfocus, and on the unfocus we again use an arrow function and we set the show combo box to true. And this is it, and this is for the input. So uh, let's use the format document. So inside of the render, first we created this input. This is it. And after this input, we want to render the show combo box. Uh, let's open a curly brace and we check that if the show combo box equals to true, and also the usernames to show that length is greater than zero, we need to return a new division. So let's create it. And for this division, let's a class name of relative. And you know that when we want to use an absolute, we use this relative, so this is it. And inside of this, let's use another division. And for this division, let's use class names of absolute and also padding of two and top of zero and also left of zero and right of zero and BG gray of 200. So let's use a format document. Well, it is not working. You can see that the pair here has error. Why? Because we are using show combo box and Username to show that length if we greater than zero, we use this, but we need to check the other case. So we can say that if it is not true, you can use null. So I think now it's okay. Let's use the format document. Well, now we can see it better. So let's minimize this input and work on the next one, which is this section. So we have a division with class name of relative. Inside of that, we have another division. Else we have not. So instead of the second division, we want to map over the user. So let's open a curly brace. And instead of that, I use the usernames to show that map. And instead of that, you know that we can use an arrow function. So for the map function, you know that we receive the item and index always. And then I want to return a division. So for each division, I use a key of index. And also I want to use some class names like padding of one and margin of two, and also BG of white, and rounded of LG, and font of semi bold and cursor of pointer. That's it. Then we need to have an unclick for this division, and I will use an arrow function inside of this unclick, and I will use the set input value of item. Then I want to use set show combo box of false, and then I will call the field dot unchange of item. This is it. And inside of this division, we want to show the item. So this is it, and let's use the format document again. No, I think it's completed. So what we have done, the first thing is we used a render top row. Then we created the controller, and this controller is coming from React hook form. And inside of that, we use the name of and the control, and we receive them from the prop. Then inside the render, we use this field, and we will render first an input. Then after this input, we use this show com combo box and usernames to show that length greater than zero. And if this is true, we render this division as we render now. And inside of this division, we want to show all of the usernames that to, uh, to show array, and we will show all of them to the user, and you will see them uh, soon inside of the front end. So I think everything is okay, and the usernames combo box component is true. So let's go to the next section and use it. In this section, let's go and work on the next page, which is send message page. So let's go to the pages and the dashboard and let's open the send message. So it's here. Let's minimize it. And in first step, let's import the required components and functions. So I import the user state and user effect. And also I need to use the create message URL and user names this URL. And also I need the Axios instance to send 
request to the backend and also we need toast and we need the spinner component and we need the username combo box and also we need yop and also the use form and the yop resolvers and also i send message dto and input field and also we need the button and we need to import the use navigate and also path of dashboard so we need all of them now let's go and create some states and implement our page in first step let's create a new state for the usernames and i use the usernames and set username equals to a user state with the type of string uh, array and i will use a default value of empty array for it then let's create another one with the loading and set loading which equals to a user state with the type of boolean and also default value of false and also after that i want to use the const of navigate equals to use navigate because i want to navigate my user and i want to use it so this is it let's continue and i want to create a new const of send message schema which equals to yap.object.shape and i want to send an object to it so let's use an object and inside this object i say that i have the receiver username which equals to yap that string that required and for the required i can use a message of username is required and also i use dot one of usernames and the message of invalid username so we can check that if the receiver username is one of this uh, usernames array or not and we can send this message for its validation this is it it can help us a lot and after this let's have another field for the text and i use yup dot string dot required with the message of message text is required so let's use the format document so this is the schema that we need to use for the react hook form and after that i want to destructure the use for required components and the functions like the control and also the handle submit and form state and i just want the error so i destructure the errors from the form state then i want to use the reset and I say that all of them are destructuring from the use form. And for this use form, I use the type of I send message DTO. Let's see it. So inside of I send message DTO, we have just the receiver username and the text. So let's close it and go back to the send message page.tsx. And here, inside of this use form, we can pass as an object to it. And for the first one, we use the resolver. And I use the YAP resolver of this send message schema for the resolver. After that, we can use the default values for our form and I can simply use another object with the receiver username with the value of empty string and also a text with value of empty string. So this is for the uh, React Hook form and let's use the format document. Then I create a const of get username list to get the list of the username from the backend and I say this is an asynchronous arrow function and instead of that you know that we always use a try catch block it's a good idea and inside of the try block i use the set loading of true after that i say const of response equals to await of axios instance dot get and for the return type of it i use an string array and i say that your url is usernames list url this is it and this is coming you can see that this is coming from util global config that's good and after that we are receiving a response so i destructure the data from the response and after that i use the set usernames of this data and also i set the loading to false so this is for the try block and on the catch block we will check that if we have any error so i say the toast.error of an error happened please contact the admins and set the loading to false this is it and this is the get users name this so I can uh, simply use a use effect. This is it. I don't need this return. And I say that inside of this use effect, you can use the get users and this function. So let's use the format document. So this would be called this get users and this would be called when the component is mounted and we will receive the list of the usernames and we set it to usernames array so this is it and after this use effect let's create another function i will create a const of on submit send message for which is an asynchronous arrow function and inside of this function i'm going to receiving the submit data from the type of i send message dto 
and inside of this unsubmit send message form again we use the try catch block why because we are going to work with the backend and it's a better idea to use try catch block so what we need to do inside of this try block first i use the set loading of true and after that i use the const of new message with type of i send message dto equals to an object and in this object i want to have receiver username with value of submitted data dot receiver username and also i want to have text with value of submitted data dot text and after this i want to use a weight of axios instance dot post so i will send the, this data to the create message url url and also i use this new message object so inside of this post method this is the url and this is the data that we are sending so after waiting for this we use the set loading of false and then i use a toast that success with the message of your message sent successfully and after that i will use the navigate to the path of dashboard dot inbox this is it so we will redirect our user to the path of dashboard dot inbox and this is it else if you have any type of error we will go into the catch block so i will use the set loading of false and after that i will use the reset this reset is coming here from the react hook form that's it and after the resetting the form we will use the const of error which equals to error as a new type with the data of a string and the status with type of number why we are using this because again this error is unknown and you want to use this data so we create a new type for it and after that we'll check that if the error that status equals to 400 what we need to do we need to use a toast that error of error dot data that is coming from the back end else we can simply use a toast that error with an error occurred please contact admin so we'll cover all type of errors and let's use the format document and i think the unsubmit is completed so let's minimize it and go to the next line and we check that if the loading is true we can simply return a new division with class name of vita full and inside of that we use the spinner so if you are on the loading state we use this spinner else we will go to the main return so let's delete this and here we can use the class name of page template 2 and inside of that let's have an h1 with the value of send message and i want to have some class names for it like text of 2x large and also font of both so let's use format document again so we have a division and h1 what we need to do after this h1 i want to have a new division and for this division we want to use the class names of page template 3 and also i use items of a string and inside of this division let's use a form tag uh, of html and for this form i use the unsubmit and on unsubmit i will use the handle submit with unsubmit send message form so this handle submit will receive the form's data and send them to the this uh, unsubmit send message form function after that let's have a component of usernames combo box and for the usernames i use this usernames state for the control we are using this control for the name we use receiver username and also for the errors we check the errors that receiver usernames dot message so if the errors that receiver username exist you send a message of it to the error and after that let's have another component of input field and use the control for its control and i use the text for its label and use the input name for its text and also the errors that takes that message for its errors and now we have the usernames combo box and input field after this let's use a new division and for this division let's use some class names like the flex and the justify center and also items of center and gap of four and margin top of six and inside this division i just want to have two buttons the first one is a button with variant of secondary and also a type of button and the label of discard and also on click i will navigate my user to the path of dashboard dot inbox and also after that i want to have another button with a variant of primary and i will top use type of submit and i use a label of send and on click i just send an empty function to it i don't i don't want to use anything for it on click and for the loading i will use loading so i think everything is okay and this is finished and this is the send message box so let's use the format document 
and go to the front end and check the result until now to see do we have any error. I'm on the uh, dashboard and I'm on the all message with the name of owner. So I'm an owner. Let's refresh to be sure about everything. And now let's go to the send message. Well, this is our send message and we have a two and a text. So you can see that by clicking on the two, the list would be open and we can see list of the all of the users of our website. So who am I? I'm Mamad and I want to send a new message. Let's say to the Johnny. So I call the Johnny and I say, hi, Johnny. And let's uh, open the uh, network tab here using the inspect. Let's go to the network to see the uh, network sent and the request result. So I selected the Johnny and I'm using the hi Johnny. So let's use net send and your message sent successfully. And I redirected automatically to the slash inbox. And you can see that I used this create and the message saved successfully. Then I'm receiving this uh, mine from the backend. So let's close it and check the result. So uh, I directed automatically to the slash inbox. So you can see that a few seconds ago, I have a new message. I was the sender. So I can see this output icon and the text was hi Johnny and the sender was Mamad and the receiver was Johnny. So let's log in with this Johnny to see do we receive this or not. So I log out and I use the login. So I go to the inbox and here you can see that a few seconds ago I received this hi Johnny from the Mamad. So I know I'm the Johnny. I logged in with this Johnny. So I am the receiver and the sender was Mamad. So the icon is input. And uh, can I, uh, as a Johnny, can I send some message? Let's test. If I go to send message and I use uh, this tool, if I click on it, the list would be automatically open. We created this really useful component here. And for example, I want to send a message to the, let's say user seven, and I say, hello, that's it. So from the journey, I'm sending a message from journey to user seven. Let's use the send and your message sent successfully. So good. And we will redirect it automatically to the inbox. And you can see that. I have this new one, the hello from the journey to the user seven. And this icon is automatically the output because now we are the sender. So this is the send message and you can see that we can send message and in the inbox, we can see the result of all the sent message and the received message. And that's it. In this section, let's create the users management page but for that page we need to have some components so we will first create them the first component is let's go to the src and create the first component inside of src components and dashboard we have the page access and the send message so i create a new folder with name of users management this is it and inside of that i want to create a new file with name of latest user section dot this is it so let's close this explorer for now. Here I will first import the moment from the moment and also I import the IAUT user. I need these two. And after that, I will create an interface for the iProps. And what do we need for the props of this component? We need to have the users list, which is the type of IAUT user array. This is it. And after that, we can create our component. So let's use RAFCE. And after that, let's uh, delete this React. We don't need it. And let's use the format document. So we have this iProps and let's destructure it. So I want to destructure something from this iProps and I want the users list from it. So this is it. And after that, let's create a new uh, function for selecting our users to show to the front end. So I will say const of the selected users equals to this user's list that I'm uh, receiving from the props dot sort. We use the sort of JavaScript and inside of this sort, we use an arrow function and we will receive the A and B for this sort. And we will check that if the A dot created at is less than the B dot created at, we want to return one else. We will return minus one. This is it. Let's format the document. So 
this uh, const of selected user will uh, return the selected users in order of the created ad for us that's it then let's go to the return section and let's delete this and for its main division i want to have some class names of color span one and bg of y and padding of two and rounded of md this is it and after that let's create a new h1 and for this h1 i use the latest users for its text and also i want to have some class names like the text of x large and also font of bold let's format our document and this is it so after this h1 i will open a curly brace because i want to use javascript and inside of that i will use the selected users that slice from 0 to 7 so i will select just an slice of this selected users and after that i will use a map function on this sliced array and for this map you know that we can receive an arrow function and for this arrow function we can simply receive the item and for each item i will return a division with the key of item that id and also i use a class names of bg gray of 100 and padding of 2 and margin y of 4 and also round that md for it and inside of this division i want to have another division and for this division i want to have another class names like the flex and justify of between and items of center and inside this division what do we need to have the first thing is i want to have an s span with the class names of text of large and also font of bold and i will show the item that username inside of this s span and after this s span i want to have another s span with the class names of padding x of 2 and text of sm and also text of white with the bg purple of 500 and also rounded of lg and inside of this s span i want to show the moment of item that created at dot from now and this is it so this these two spans are inside of this division and after this division i want to have an h6 with the item dot first name and an s space to have some space between them and after that i use item dot last name this is it so let's use the format document and i think it's okay so if i press enter here to see it better now you can see that this is the structure that we are mapping over the selected users list on it and okay let's format the document so this last user section is uh, sorry this latest user section is completed let's close it and go to the next section now let's implement one of the most important components that shows us a chart let's create it so let's go to the again to the components and users management and here again i will create a new component with name of user chart section.tsx that's it and let's minimize the explorer for now and here let's import the iot user and roles in on from the types and after that i want to import something from the chart.js as you can see it here so what do we need to have i need to import the chart as chart.js and the category scale and linear scale and point element and line element and tooltip and legend from the chart.js so i use uh, some of them and you can go to the document of the chart.js for more information it's not really important for us and our focus is just on the security after this i want to use the import of line from the react chart.js to use all of them inside of the line that is coming from the react chart.js 2 and after this we need to use the chart.js that register and inside of that we will register this so we will register the category scale and linear scale and point element and line element and also the tooltip and the legend this is it and after this let's create an interface of iprops for our component and inside of this iprops we will define what do we need so we need to have the users list which is the type of I art user so let's use the format document and let's press enter here and also here to separate them this is it after this let's use rafce to create our component and i will delete this react i don't need it and that's it so let's destructure the inputs so i want to destructure from the iprops the users list this is it let's use the format document well this is it now we need to create some labels and some values for our chart so let's create them i want to have a const of chart labels 
with the values of roles in um dot owner and roles in um dot admin and roles in um dot manager and also roles in um dot user. So this is an array of these four. And after that, I want to have the const of chart values. And in the initial phase, we will use this empty array, but we will create all of them right now. So let's use the format document to clean up everything in order to calculate the chart values. It's an easy way. Let me show you that. We can use the const of owners count equals to users list dot filter. And inside this filter, we will receive the queue and we will check that if the queue dot roles dot includes the roles in on that owner. And we will uh, calculate the length of this filtered users list. And after calculating the length of this, which belongs to their owners, we can simply use chart values dot push the owners count. So this is for the first value. And after that, let's go and create the const of admins count, which equals to users list dot filter. Again, we will receive the queue and we check the queue dot roles dot enclose role in on dot admin dot length. With this, we will calculate the length of the admins inside of the users list. And then we use the chart values dot push admin count. Now I think you can guess the next ones. Let's implement them. So after that, we can use the const of managers count, which equals to users list dot filter. And again, we receive the queue and we will say that queue dot roles must enclose the roles in um dot manager and we will calculate the length of it and we use the chart values dot push managers count and after that let's use the const of users const which equals to users list dot filter and we will receive the queue and we calculate the queue dot roles dot enclose the roles in um dot user and the length of it and we use the chart values dot push this users count so you saw that we easily uh, calculated all of the values that we need for our chart so this is it uh, we push uh, four different values into our chart values so now we have the chart labels and the chart values and we can use it inside of our component and now let's create a const of chart options and first let's create these options outside of the component and use it so we use these chart options and uh, the chart options is an object and inside this object I use the responsive equals to true and also we can use the scales for the x and the y so this scale this is an object and inside of this object we can have an x and for this x we can have another object and inside of that you can use the grid and this grid is again an object so you can see that this is a JSON structure and for this grid we can use the display of false so it would be false and after this x, we can have the y. So the previous one was for the x axis. Now we can use y axis. And after that, inside of the y, we can use the ticks and we can use step size. So let's use a format document. So we created the chart options for uh, our chart. And now we can use it on our component. So let's continue. And this was for the chart options. And after the options, let's create the chart data. So I use the const of chart data, which equals an object. And we need to define the label. So I will use this chart labels array that you can see it here. And after that, we need to define the data sets for our chart data. So let's use the data sets and you can pass an array to it. And inside this array, you can have multiple objects. So I want to have an object. And inside of that, I use the label of count. And also for its data, I will use this chart values that you saw it here and we created it. Then we updated it with these four lines. That's it. And after this data, we need to have the border color. So I used the, some colors for the border color and also for the background color. And also for the point border color, I used transparent so we don't see it. And also I used the tension of 0 0.25. This is it. So let's format my document again and now we have the chart options and chart data and now we can simply implement it so let's delete this and for this division let's have some class names of color span of one and on lg we choose color span of three and bg of white and also padding of two and rounded of empty this is it and after that let's have an h1 here 
And for this H1, I want to have class names of text of X large and also font of bold and margin bottom of two. And I will use the user's chart for it. Let's have another format document. Well, now we can use our chart. So let's create it. I will create a line component. This line component, let me show you, is coming from React Charges 2. And we can have some props for it. For example, we can have the options and use the chart options. And we can have the data and we use chart data. So we created this uh, chart options and chart data outside of our return and we use them here. So our code is more readable and more clean. So after the options and the data, let's have some class names for it. For example, BG of white and also padding of two and rounded off MD. And that's it, simple and easy. So this is it, this is the user chart section. So I think it's okay, let's close it and go to the next component. And now let's create the next component. So again, let's go to the uh, components into the SRC. Let me show you again what, uh, where we are now. So we are in the uh, SRC component dashboard, users management. We are working on the users management page. So we have this user management a folder inside of components dashboard. So let's create a new file with name of user count card .tsx. And in this component, I just import the icon type from the uh, React icons. And I want to have an interface of iProps for this component to define my props shape. So what do we need to have inside this component? The first thing is the count with type of number. And after that, I want to have the role with type of string. And also I want to have an icon with type of this icon type that is coming from the React icons. And after that, I want to have a color with type of S3. That's it. So let's use the format document and press an enter here to separate them. And after that, we can create our component. So I will use RAFC again inside this component. So let's delete this React. And now we have this. First, let's destructure all of the uh, props. So I want to destructure from the iProps these values which are the count and also the role and the icon but I rename this icon to a, a big I and then CON because I want to use this as a new component and you will see that soon and after that let's use the color and that's it. So we have all of these and then we have the return section so inside this return section let's delete this and let's use the class names of Tailwind for it. So I use padding X of 4 and padding Y of 6 and rounded of LG and flex and justify of between and align items of center and also text of Y. This is it. And after the class names, I want to use a style for it. Let me show you how I can do this. So for the background color of it, I want to use the color that is coming from the props. This is it. So let's use the format document. So we are uh, using this background color color as this style of this component to have the background that is coming from the props. This is it. Let's have another division. And inside of this division, let's have an H2 with class names of text of 4x large. And we show the count into this. And after that, let's have another H2 with class names of text of X large and show the role. This is it. Let's format it. So we have the main division and inside of that, we can have another division. And after this division, let's have another division to show our icon. And I will open a curly brace inside of it. And also I use icon. So this is the icon that is coming from here, from this alias. And this is the way we use the icon that is coming from our props because it must be the capital in the first of it. So for this icon, we can have some class names like text of white and fill of white and also text of six large. And that's it, simple and easy. So let's use the format document. And I think everything is okay. And we implemented the user count card. Now let's go to the next section. And in this section, we will use this user count card. So let's close this and go to the uh, user's management again. And here, let's create a new component. So I use the name of user count section.tsx. And inside of this, we will use the 
user account card. So let's close this and let's import a user account card from the dot slash user account card. And also let's import the uh, IAT user and roles in all from the types. And after that, let's import some icons that we want to use it. So we need to use the FA user and FA user card and FA user shield and also FA user tie from the React icons slash FA. And this is it. After that, let's create an interface of iProps for the component. So what do we need to, to receive? We need the users list. Again, we type up IAT user. That's it. So let's press and enter inside of this interface line and use the format document. That's it. So now we can use the RFC to create our component. And as always, let's delete this React. We don't need it. Let's destructure the uh, props and object from the iProps and we destructure the users list from it. So now let's see what we need to do. We need to have the count of all of the users types and show them. So let's create all of them here. So I will create a list of owners with uh, default value of zero and also an admins with zero and the managers with zero and the users of zero. So we have four different variables and they are zero, but we will calculate the value of them for no and then we use them. So let's go to the next line. And here I simply use a loop. So I use a user's list dot for each and inside of this for each, you know that we can have an arrow function and we can receive the item. So this item, we will use this item to calculate the owner and the admins and the managers and the users. It's so easy. Just look at me what I'm doing. So I will check that if the item that roles that enclose the roles that enum that owner. So this is an owner and I will add one to the owners. So I will use owners plus plus. Else if the uh, item that roles that enclose the roles enum that admin. Now you can guess that we need to add it to the admin. So I will use admins plus plus and after that we will check that else if the item that roles that include role enum dot manager well you know that it's manager so we can use the managers plus plus and we can use else if the item dot roles that includes roles enum dot user we can use users plus plus that's it easy and simple and you can see that we are using this uh, function and we will uh, calculate all of the values that we need just using one uh, for each loop so let's use the format document now we have these and now we need to create an object for the user's cards data. So let's create it. So I will create a const of user's count data, which is an array. And what do we need to have inside of array? We need to have four different objects for the owners and admins and the managers and users. Let's create it. So for the first object, I use the count is the owners and the role is role enum that owner. And also the icon is for user card. And also for the color, I use this color. And after that, let's have another object again with the count. For the count, we have admins. And again, we have role. And it is role enum dot admin. And we have icon of FA user shield. And also we have the color of this. And after that, let's have another one with the count of managers and role of roles enum dot managers. And also the icon of FA user tie and color of this. And let's have the final one for the count of users and also for the role we use roles enum dot user and also for the icon we use fa user and for the color we use this so this is it you can see that we created the required data outside of our return section and we use it inside of the return it's a better idea so let's continue and let's delete this and uh, let's press enter to create that and let's use uh, some class names like grid and also grid columns of one and on lg i use grid columns of four and i use gap x of four that's it and inside of that let's open a curly brace because i want to use javascript and inside of that i use the users count data dot map so we use this users count data and we map over this array and inside of this map we can receive an arrow function and for this arrow function input we can receive the item and index as always and instead of this, we can return a user count card that we created it just right now. And it's the uh, user count card have some props. So we will use the key of index and also we use the count, which is item.count. And also we use the role of item.role. And also we use icon of 
item that icon and color of item that color that's it easy and simple as you can see so let's use the format document that's it so we created this user account card in previous section and we received the count and role and icon and color and we render them like this and inside of this uh, user account section we use that and we send this data to that uh, component that's it so i think everything is okay now let's close these both uh, components and go to the next section in this section let's go and create the last component that we need which is the users table so inside of the users management again i will create a new file with name of users table section.ts6 and we use this component inside of our page let's implement it and i will import use navigate from the react router dom and i need the iot user and roles enum and also i need button and i need the moment and also i need to import the is authorized for update role and also use art this is it so after this let's create the props for it so i will create an interface of i props with the users list with type of iot user array this is it let's use format document well this after this we can create our component i will use rafce to create it and let's delete this react and continue so in first step let's uh, receive this with type of i props and we receive the users list that's it i need to use the const of user with the name of logged in user and i will destructure this user from the use art and i will use this logged in user name alias for the user and after that i use the const of navigate equals to use navigate because i want this uh, use navigate hook inside of my component then i want to create some dynamic classes so let's create a function for it and i will create a const of roles class name creator which is an arrow function and in this arrow function i will receive the roles which is the type of a string array and inside of this function in first step i will use a letter of class name equals to an string with the padding x of 3 and padding y of 1 and also text of y and rounded off to the x large and an empty space then i want to change and add some different classes to it so this is the reason i'm using this empty space and after this class name let's uh, compile it and we will check that if the roles that includes the roles in that owner we will add this color to the class name as the bg of it and after that we'll check that else if the roles that includes the roles in that admin we will add this color to it so you can see that you are using a pattern and we are adding different classes based on the roles and that's it after that we'll check else if the roles that includes the roles in um, dot manager we use this color and we will add this color to the class name else if the roles that includes the roles in um, dot user we will add this uh, yellow color to the class name that's it and after all of this we can return this class name so let's format the document and inside of the role class name creator you can see that finally we have a dynamic class name and we can use it this is it so let's go and use them so we have the final return section let's delete it and instead of that let's use a class name of bg of white and also padding of two and rounded off md and after this div i want to have an h1 and i paste user table for it and also i can use class names of text of x large and font of bold for it so let's use the format document no this is the user table section final return and instead of that we have a main division and then we have an h1 after this h1 i want to have another structure like the table so again we can use grid let's do this we have done this multiple times in this tutorial so i create a new division here and for this division let's use some class names of grid so we are using grid and we use grid columns of seven so we will have seven columns and i use padding x of two and margin y of one and i use uh, text of lg and also font of semi bold and also i use border and border gray of 300 and also rounded off md and after that let's have a division with the value of no and after that let's have another division with value of username and then let's have first name 
and after that let's have last name then let's have the creation time and after that let's have another division for this one we use class names of flex and justify of center and we use roles this is it and after that let's use the division of operation and that's it so we have one two three four five six seven you can see that we are using grid columns of seven and we have seven division let's use for another document so we have an h1 then we have this division now let's minimize this and after this division we want to show the list of our uh, users inside of the table so i will open a curly brace and inside of that i want to use javascript and instead of that i will use the users list dot map so we want to map over the users list and instead of this map we can use an arrow function and for this arrow function we can receive an user and also an index so for each user i will return a division and instead of this division first we need to use the key of index for the react purpose and after that let's use some class names of grid and also grid columns of seven and padding x of two and height of 12 and also margin by of one and border and also border gray of 200 and also on hover i use bg gray of uh, 200 and also i use rounded off empty and then i want to use a division instead of that and for it i use class names of flex and items of center and i will use index plus one for this so the index starts from zero but here let me show you this is for the no for the first column so we use index plus one and after that let's have another division with the class names of flex and items of center and this is uh, use the font of semi bold and we will use user that username so we will use font of semi bold for the username and after that let's have another division with the class names of flex and also items of center and we use user that first name and after that again let's have the same class names and we use user that last name and after that let's have another division with the class names of again flex and items of center and for this one i want to use the moment of user dot created at dot format so you will use this special format so you, and you can use any type of format or you can use moment of this dot from now but i want to use this format and we use yyyy dash mm dash dd and then we show the hover and the menus to the user and after this let's have another division and for this division let's have some class names of flex and also justify of center and items of center and instead of that i want to have an span with the class name of roles class name creator of user dot roles so this is the reason that we created this role class name creator let me show you this is it it will receive the roles with the type of a string array and you can see that we are passing the user dot roles to this and we will receive the class names and use it inside of this span simple and easy and let's continue so we will use the user dot roles inside of this span and that's it let's continue and after this let's have another division so we have the operation division here and this division is for it so inside of this division we can have a class names of flex and also items of center and for that we can have a button component so we can use a label of update role and also on click we can use the navigate of we need to go to a dynamic role so we use back ticks and we use a slash dashboard a slash update role a slash and we we'll use dollar sign and curly brace to use javascript and we use user dot username so we will go to the slash dashboard slash update role slash this username and after that let's have the type of button and let's have variant of primary and also let's use the disabled so we will check that if the is authorized for update role is not and we will need to pass the login user dot roles of zero and user dot roles of zero uh, and this will check and this let me show you is authorized for update role is inside of the auth.util.js that we created it previously and you can see it here so we need to control the owner cannot change the owner role and the admin cannot change owner role and admin role and this is used for it so this is it and i think everything is okay and after that we have two divisions and then we export default this user table section so let's use the format document and i think everything is okay now let's close this and go to the next section
In this section, we can finally implement the user's management page. That is the most important page of our website and we created some components for it. So let's do this. Let's go to the SRC and the pages, then go to the dashboard and here let's see the user's management page. This is it. Let's first import the required components and functions. We need to import the user fate and user state and also we need the Axios instance and the user's list URL and also we need the IAUT user and we need to import the latest user section and user chart section and user count section and user's table section and also we need to import the toast and the spinner. This is it. so we created these four sections and we use them inside of our user management page. This is it. So we don't need to have any props for this because this is just a simple page. But we need to have some states. So let's create them first and then continue. So I will create the users and set users, which is a user state with type of I at user array. And I use the default value of an empty array for it. And after that, let's have another state for the loading and the set loading, which is the user state with type of Boolean with default value of false. And after that, we need to have a function for calling our backend. So let's create it here. So I define the const of get users list, which is an asynchronous arrow function. And inside this arrow function, I want to have a try catch block. So in the try block, I use the set loading of true. And then I use const of response equals to await of axios instance dot get. And for the return type, we use I at user array. And we pass the URL of users this URL to it. Yeah, that you can see it is a slash odd a slash users. And after this, I use the const of the data, which is the structured from the response. And then I use it and I call set users with this data. And after that, I set the loading to the false. So this is for the try block. And in case of any error, we will be uh, uh, inside of the catch block and we re receive this error. So I will use toast.error with the message of an error happened, please contact the admin and I use set loading of false. This is it. So let's use the format document and after that we need to call this get users. So let's do this and I will create a use effect with an arrow function and I use an empty array for its dependency and inside of this use effect I will call get users list. So this would be called after the component is mounted. This is it. And let's continue. And after that, we need to check the loading state. So we will check if the loading is true. We can simply return a new division with class name of Vita full. And inside of that, I will use our spinner component. So this is it. And again, let's use the format document. But if we are not in the loading state, we will go to the final return section. So let's delete this. And let's use so, uh, class name of page template 2 for the division and after that let's have an h1 with value of users management and also let's use class names of text of 2x large and also font of bold for it no i use the format document so inside of this users management page we use the page template 2 because this is a page then we have this h1 and after that i want to show my different sections so i implement the user count section with users list of users and i pass my users array which is here this state i will pass it to this users count section that's it and after that let's have another division because i want to show uh, two sections inside of this division and i use the class names of grid and grid columns of one and on lg i use grid columns of four and i use gap x of four and inside of this division first i use the users chart section and i will pass the users list with the value of users to it and after this user chart section i use latest users section with the users list of users and this uh, these uh, two components are inside of this division and after this division let's have the users table section with the users list of users so you can see that how simple and easy is this users management table we created all of the component outside of it and we use them here but we will use the users inside of this component and we'll pass it to all of the other components. So let's use the format document and let's check our users management page on the front end. And let's log in and let's use one of our users. So 
Let's check one of our regular users because the user and the manager don't have access. For example, this user six is a regular user, so let's use its username and password. So we logged in as user six and we are a user. Our role is user. So can we access the user's management? No, we don't have access. That's good. Let's log out. Now let's check the manager. So this is the manager, user two. Let's log in with manager role. No, our role is manager and let's check user's management. Well, we don't have access. That's good. Let's log out and check an admin to see do we have access. So this is user one and let's log in. Well, this time our role is admin and yes, you can see that. No, we have access to users, the user's management page, which is a slash dashboard a slash user's management. And here you can see the cards here in the top. We have owner, admin, manager, and users, and the data. So we have one owner, four admin, two manager, and six users. And here you can see the user's chart. And here you can see the latest users with the username and the item that created add with that, uh, uh, with uh, from now, which is six days ago, two months ago, and the others. And we have username, and we have the first name and the last name. And after this, we have these users. Table, well, you can see this is really, I think, uh, good and reusable and useful. So we have no username. Username is bold. And we have first name and last name and creation time. And you can see that we are using this uh, format for it. And for the roles of it, we can see that we have different classes for it. For the user, this is the user. This is admin, manager, user. And you can see the color are different because we are... Uh, calculating them dynamically then we have operations and you can see that we have these buttons of update role but some of them are disabled why let me show you so we are admin and our business logic says that as an admin we cannot change the role of the admins and the owners we can just change the role for the manager and the user so because i'm admin this is a user i can update his role this is admin i cannot and the button is disabled for the updating role for the manager, it is uh, here, I can use it. So if I click on this update role, I will be redirected to the slash update role slash user 9. We didn't implement it and we will implement it in the next section. Let's go back to user management. So if I click on this for update role for the username with this username, we will be on the slash update role slash its username. That's it. But for this, which is admin, the button is disabled. And here, this is admin, it is disabled. And also for the owner, the button is disabled. And also you can see that for the other users and manager, it is enabled. So we implemented our users management and everything is good and everything is working. And the final page is the update role. So when we click, for example, as an admin, uh, and you know what, before that, let's uh, check the owner and uh, see it. So, Let's log out and use the owner. So I think Mamad was the owner. Yeah, Mamad is the owner. Let's log in with him to see the access of the uh, owner on the updating role. So if I with the owner role, if I go to the user's management, everything is the same. But here you can see that I can access the operations of update role for the admin. So I can change the user and the admin and the managers. But again, the owner is disabled and this is a part of my business logic. So if you want to implement it in a different way, you can think about it and implement it in your auth.utils that we calculated everything. So you can see that as the owner, even I can change the role of an admin. And if I click on it, we will be redirected to the update role page, but we didn't implement it yet. So let's go and in the next section, let's implement our update role page. And now let's go and implement the update user role page. So let's open our explorer again. And this time let's go to the SRC and pages and dashboard. And we need to open the update role page. This is it. It is an empty page for now. So let's start and we import the use effect and use state. And also we need the use navigate and use params. And also we need to import the spinner component. And we need the iAuth user and iUpdate role DTO. And also we need the Axios instance 
and we need the update role URL and users this URL and also we need the toast and the use auth hook and also we need to import the allowed roles for update array and is authorized for update role from the auth utils and then we need to import the button component and that's it so let's format the document and we don't need to have any props because this is a simple page and that's it but we need to have some states and also some uh, other functions so let's implement all of them one by one so first let's uh, use the const of the user and this user will be the structure from the use auth but i use the alias of log the user for it and this would be the structure from the use auth and after that let's destructure the user name from the use params and also let's have an a state for the user and set user which is a user state with type of iot user and then let's have another state for the role and set role which is a user state with type of a string and after that let's have another one for the loading and set loading which is a user state with the type of boolean and default value of false and also let's have another state for the post loading and also set post loading which is a user state with type of boolean and value of false and also let's use a const of navigate which is use navigate so we need to navigate our user and also we have two different loadings because we have both get method and post method so we use loading and also we can use post loading so you can see that it is really easy so after this we want to have another uh, function here to get our users from the backend so let's implement it so i create the const of get user by username which is an asynchronous arrow function and instead of that i want to have a try catch block this is it first we uh, set the loading to the true and after that we use the const of response equals to await of axios in instance dot get we want to get the user from the backend so we use the return type of iot user and for the url of it we want to create a dynamic url so i use the back ticks and inside of that i say that i open a dollar sign and curly brace to use javascript and i say first thing is you need to have the users list url and after that let's have a forward slash and then let's have another dollar sign and curly brace and let's use the username so the uh, the backend URL would be users this URL slash our username. This is it. And after this, we can simply destructure the data from the response. Now we can have a simple validation. So we will check that if the is authorized for update role is uh, not and it is false, and we need to pass the logged in user that rolls of zero and data that rolls of zero to it. So if it is not authorized, we can simply use this uh, command we can use the set loading of false then we can use the toast.error of you are not allowed to change role of this user and after that we can automatically navigate our user again to a slash dashboard a slash users management we have this user management let me show you inside of the utils uh, config and i think it is inside of the sorry it's inside of the roads path this is it so you can use path of dashboard dot users management this is it but i'm showing you that you can uh, use either this way or that way there is no difference and this is just an example to show you that you can again use these uh, strings and it is not a problem for us so after this we check that if it is not authorized we will do this else we want to set the user to the data and also we need to set so this data dot rolls of zero and we use the set loading of false this is it so why we are using this because uh, we are disabling the button on the users management page if the user is not allowed to change and update the role but if the user uses that username and go to the uh, page of the user uh, update role he can send this uh, request to the backend so we are avoiding that this is it and after this we can uh, implement the catch block so if we have any error we will go to the catch block and let's implement it so we can set the loading to the false and also we can use the const of error equals to error as a new type with the data and with the status because this error is you can see that it is unknown and after that we can uh, use a const of a status which is error so we destructure the status from the error and we check if the status equals to 404 we can use the toast.error of username not found. Else, 
we can use the toast of error dot and error occurred please contact the admins this is it and after that we can use the navigate to the slash dashboard slash users management so let's format the document and this is for the get users by username and let's minimize it and go to the next function and we can uh, implement another function for the update role which again is an asynchronous arrow function and inside of that because we are working with the backend we can use a try catch block again this is it so we have a get user by username and an update role and in the try block we can check that if the role is not exist or the username is not exist you can simply return else we use the set post loading of true and then we can create a new object with the name of update data with type of i update role dto and it is an object and in this object we have a new role with value of role and also we need to have a username and we can use just this username because the key and the value is equal and this is it and after that we can use the await of axios instance.post we don't uh, have any written it is not important for us so we can simply call await of axios instance.post this is it and also we can uh, use the update role url for the, its url and for its data we can pass update data to it and after this awaiting we can use the set post loading of false so our loading is finished and we use toast.success with the value of role updated successfully so this message would be showed as a toast to us and then we use the navigate to the slash dashboard slash users management so this is for the case of uh, success and if we have any error we will go to the catch block and we receive this error which is unknown in case of any error we can simply use the set post loading of false and then we can use the const of error equals to the error as a new type with the data of a string and the status of number because we said that this error is unknown and we need to cast it to a new type and after that we can destructure the status from the error then we can check this status and we say if this a status is 4 or 3 we can simply use the toasted error of you are not allowed to change role of this user else we can use toasted error of an error occurred please contact the admins and then we can use navigate to slash dashboard slash users management but in any case we have a toast dot error or a toast dot success this is it so let's use the format document so we implemented the get user by username this is it and also we have a, a update role and that's it so let's continue now we need to call that get so i create a use effect and i will pass an arrow function to it and i use a dependency array for it which is empty and then i call get user by username so this uh, get user by username would be called when the component is mounted after that we need to check the loading state so let's uh, check it here and I will check if the loading is true we can simply return a division with class name of vita full and also we return the spinner uh, component else we will go to the final section so let's delete this update role page text that was just a temp and let's use some class names for the main division like padding of 4 and also vita 50 percent and margin x of auto to be in the center and also we use flex and flex of column and gap of 4 and inside of that i want to have another division so let's create it and inside of this division let's create an h1 and now let's format it to be better so this is it and for the uh, inner division let's have some class names like bg of white and also padding of 2 and rounded of md and flex and flex of column and gap of 4 so this is it then we have an h1 and here i want to use the update role and let's have some class names for it like text of 2x large and font of bold this is it so after this h1 i want to have another division so let's create it so i use a division with the class name of border and also border of dashed and border of purple of 300 and rounded of md and inside of that i want to have first h4 with the class names of text of x large and inside of that i will show the username with a new span with the class name of uh, text of 2x large and also font of bold and margin left of 2 and padding x of 2 and padding y of 1 and text of purple of 600 and rounded of md and the value of this username and after that i want to have another h4 
Again, I use the class names of text of XLR and I use the current role with a colon and then I have another span with the class names of again text of 2 XLR and font of bold, margin left of 2, padding X of 2 and padding Y of 1, text purple of 600 and rounded of MD and for its value I use user.rolls of 0. This is it. So we have two uh, H4s inside of this division. So let's have an enter here to show you. So inside of the second division, first I have an H1, then let's have an enter. Then I have this division. So let's minimize this division and let's have enter after that. So uh, we have an H1, then we have a division. Now let's create the next section, which is an H4 with value of new role. And for this H4, we can have class names of text X large and then font of bold. So we want to show the new uh, role. So let's press enter twice to separate it. So you can see that now I have three children. So an H1, a division and H1, H4. So after this, I want to have a new select. So let's implement it. So I implement a new select and I use the value of role for it. And then I use some class names like width of 80. And after that, I want to implement the unchanged. So on the unchanged, you know that we can have an arrow function or an ordinary function. Here I use an arrow function and I will receive the E or the event and I use set row of E dot target dot value. This is it. So after this, inside of the select, we need to have some options. This is an HTML concept. So let's open a curly brace to use JavaScript. And inside of that, I use allowed roles for update array of logged in user dot map so we'll map over this array and then we use the arrow function inside of this map and you know that we can receive the item from the map function and for each item we can return a new option and for this option we can use a key of item and a value of again item and inside of that i use item so everything is our username so we'll use it for all of the key and the value and the input label of this option so this is it then, this is the select uh, element. So let's have enter. So this was the next uh, children of uh, this uh, component. Let's continue and then let's have another uh, division here. And we can use uh, some class names for it, like grid and grid columns of two, and also gap of four and margin top of 12. And inside of that, I just want to have some buttons. So let's implement all of them. For the first one, I use a button with label of cancel and on click, I will navigate to slash dashboard slash users management. And for the type, I use button. And for the variant, I use secondary. And then we can have another button with label of update. And on click, we call the update role function. And for the type, we can use button. And for the variant, we can use primary. But for this one, we can use a loading with the value of post loading. And that's it. Then we export default the update role page. So I think everything is okay. Let's uh, format the document. That's it. And let's minimize this to see the main structure. So in the final section of the uh, component, we have a main division. Then we have this division. And inside of that, we have an H1 and one division and H4, one select and another division for our button. So I think everything is okay. Let's go to the front end and check it. Let's go to the user management and let's refresh to be sure that everything is fresh. So you can see that I'm an owner. So I have access to updating the roles of the users and the admins and the managers. So uh, let's check it. For now, you can see that I have one owner, four admins, two managers and six users. Let's uh, change all of the managers to users for test. So we have two managers. So this is a manager. Let's update its role. So he will come here. So the username is user9. And uh, this is its username and current role of him is manager. So for the new role, you can see that I have access to admin and manager and user. Because I'm owner, I can access to the admin and manager and user. But if I'm the admin, I just have access to the manager and the user and we see that later. So let's change this to a user. So user for the user none, I use user. Let's if I press cancel, I will be redirected to the user's management. That's okay. So Let's update the role of user 9 to a user and check it. So if I press update, well, role updated successfully. Now we have one manager and seven users. And here you can see the chart is updated. 
And here you can see that the user line now is a user. So let's find the next manager. It's the manager is here. So let's update the role of this to a user. Update. Well, now you can see that we have four managers and eight users and the chart is updated. So good. So we don't have any manager for now, but we have four admins. So let's delete all of the admins for test. So I make everyone user. So this is admin. Let's change. Okay. Now you can see that I have one owner, two admins, zero managers and 10 users. And the chart is updated. So good. Uh, let's update these roles. User. Okay. User. So now I have just one owner and 12 users and I have zero manager and zero admin. That's so good. So you can see that it's working and the chart is updated and everyone is user except for me. I'm the owner. So let's create a new admin because I want to have an admin. So let's use one of them. For example, this user, for example, user, user. Let's update the role of him to the admin and update. Okay, now I have one admin, zero manager, and 11 users. Let's log in with this admin. So who is the admin? The user user. Let's copy his username and log out. And let's log in again with user user login. So login was successful. You can see that I'm admin. And do I have access to users management? Yes, because I'm admin. So you can see that this time I cannot update role of this user, which is admin. And I cannot change the role for the owner. But I can change the role for the users and for the manager. So for this Johnny, let's update his role. And if I come here and I choose this, you can see that I have access only to the manager and to the user. And we implemented this inside of our auth util. So you can see that I can change this to a manager. So let's update. Now I have one admin, one manager, and 10 users. And we change the role of this admin. So let's check the logs of this user. So Let's go to the my logs, which belongs to this user user. And here you can see that a minute ago, we have a log of user role updated. And then we have a minute ago, a new login. That's so good. So it seems that everything that we wanted to implement is working. And I think we checked everything. So we checked the user page. Yeah. And we checked the manager page and the admin page. So as admin, we have access to all, but don't have access to owner. That's good. And we checked all of these functionalities and I think everything is okay and our project is done. So this was a project that I wanted to implement because some of you asked in the comments when I created the JWT authentication tutorial. And this is a full stack project and you can use it on your real world projects and all of the codes are available on the GitHub. I hope this project uh, helps you. Let me know your precious opinion in the comments and let me know what you think about this uh, tutorial. Have a good time and goodbye.